Hello everyone! Welcome back to Breaking Down the Bees! I am your host, Raymond McNeil, and joining me this time around, uh, as, it, as it always been this entire time, uh, is uh, the amazing Judgmental Critter, Yay. the Calculating Young Kaiser, How you doing? and the wonderful Twilight Guardian. Hello! Uh, yes, uh, I, I, you know, I realized we kind of started these streams not having like a formal like sign on. I'm just, I just kind of <laughs> falling into my bad fan fiction habit. Um, yeah. The so yes, today <laughs> we are covering once more of the topic of Bumblebee, one of the most, if not the most popular ships in all of the Ruby fandom. Why are we covering this? Well, because a couple of people think that. Bumblebee is, for some reason, a very good ship. Now, while conceptually, I would generally agree with them, implementally, it is far from it. Does anyone want to recap our current findings with Bumblebee? <laughs> There's a whole lot of nothing, and what there is that's not nothing is very problematic and toxic. Yeah. At the also very... confused screaming. A lot the... of confused screaming. <laughs> <laughs> At the very end of Volume 5, we saw the beginning of Rooster Teeth being like, what happens if we really bait this ship? And th uh, we they learned it did well, <laughs> so now we're really in the thick of it. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're about to enter into the arc where they legitimately start trying to ship Bumblebee like, noticeably. Mm -hmm. And there's a scene very early on that's going to indicate that, and we will... We will get to that because it, it it signs off one of our favorite characters. Oh yeah! At least until the books, and then he becomes one of my least favorite characters. Anyway, um, I I was in my in the Dust Queen server. Some people were talking about the books, and it just I I got so many bad Dude, memories. You know what? You know what I should do? I should when I get the live streaming, I should talk. I should go over the books because I haven't read them yet. I have a way to read them. Without giving Rooster Teeth any of my friggin' money. I, I'm torn between... I don't know how people would feel about that. I'm torn between wanting to tell you a spoiler because it's so fucking outrageous and it's abhorrent and it ruins several characters in one go. Or letting you discover that all okay, on your Okay, save own. it, save it, save it. Okay, all right. <laughs> save it, save it, save it. This I, is, that is I will, juicy I will I give need to, I need people to, I who need actually this. watched my read-through, I will tell you what scene I'm referring to. It involves Neptune. That is it. Um, oh dear! Oh, God. Okay, critter, do okay. You know which chapter? I, I can say this critter chapter? like it simply because it. It's no, it, it's the opposite. <laughs> critter, I think it might actually get you to like Neptune, if only for sympathy. Mm, it you're is gonna need a lot of sympathy. Yeah, you like, like, oh, critter, yeah. critter, you need to understand. Not even Neptune it, deserves it, this. I was, I was going to say. I would not have said that if I did not mean it. <laughs> oh my God. It is, okay. is it in that after bad. the fall? Or it's in before? before the it's before the dawn. Dang, I have after the fall. <laughs> after the fall is fine. <laughs> after the fall is actually kind of okay. It's before the dawn that just like character assassinates everyone. Ugh. Okay, Disgusting. Do I need? Do I need to read after? Do I need to read after the? Fall yes, it, that is actually it dawn. is in sequence with before the dawn. Yeah. Damn it! I want you to know, skip to the good part. It <laughs> makes me. It makes me very sad because even though that I might hate characters or hate characters in a show, whether or not I like the show or not, I really just hate across the board character assassination. I, I will fucking 100%. I will go I will go and like yell at people defending characters that I actively hate in shows if they have been character assassinated. I will yeah. go after you. I will protect this character that I hate simply because I hate it so much more. <laughs> also, Adam Zekiel, thank you for Twilight the Twilight will be the terminator of the character assassination. And uh yeah, we we are all ready for more money. <laughs> <laughs> crazy bastard. Yeah. Uh, um <laughs> Anyway, let us not dilly dally. We have a maximum time limit of six hours. I don't know if we'll need it. I hope we won't need it. But dear God, knowing our Martin and our ability to stretch out <laughs> seven minutes into three hours, we might need it. So let's get in. Hey, but that was on purpose. 
that was on partially. No, we we wanted to talk about Ed Eka Seven, and we also wanted to stall so that Kaiser could get there. True. Mm-hmm. True. But I was all this week leading up to this moment, just in my head going, "No, sleep till Volume Seven. <laughs> 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 all right. Well, let's jump into this. Uh, volume Six has a total length of three hours, eighteen minutes, and thirty nine seconds. The amount of Bumblebee on Bumblebee Bumblebee on screen time is one hour thirteen minutes and thirty one seconds for a total of thirty one point oh one percent. I wonder, compared to the prior percentages, I wonder when Bumblebee actually began in production. <laughs> <laughs> so here we go. So of course they are now. Oh come on! <laughs> okay, there we go. Okay, Scott Lords, Scott Lords. Ah. <laughs> right, 13, 17, eh, God, seven. is this Fat Man's footage again? Yes. God, it's so blue. Every time it doesn't look exactly as I remember it, I'm like, what's happening? <laughs> My memories. <laughs> I find it very funny because I'm like, I mostly just watch Fat Man's content, so this would look no different to me. Why is it so <laughs> you watch like... the real show, and it's like, why is it yes. so desaturated? So, first, yeah. first moment out of the gate, they are cooperating together pitch perfectly. Yep. Yes. Yeah. That is, um... Which I... It... That is a choice. <laughs> it's especially weird... Because we'll immediately jump into you don't need to be worried about me talk. Uh, Holy shit! Or the exactly. scene. <laughs> Turtle Duck! Love what you guys do. Finally caught my first live stream. Oh Can't wait God. to see what else you guys have in store for us. Can't wait for Volume 7 of Fruby. Thank you so oh much, God. Turtle Duck. Holy crap! Whoa, did not need to that much. Oh, oh my God! Yes, thanks, man. Woo! Uh, that's a way to start out. I mean, you like, like you don't have to, but if you want to keep donations like that coming, I'm not going to complain. I'm just, I'm just oh putting God. that out there. <laughs> Holy shit, dude! Yeah, just seriously, you know, if you just so happen to have a big allowance this time around, a, a, a two or a two or a five or, or, or was it a toonie? Is that in Canada a toonie? Yeah, a toonie. A toonie or a fiver, man. I I can I, I can roll with that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm flattered. <laughs> flattered and thankful. Uh, but yeah, a lot of this scene is left in because they're somewhere in here fighting together, presumably. Uh, and it just... Yeah. It, it flashes between characters sometimes so sporadically that I can't cut it out. So hopefully we can just actually skim past a lot of parts yeah. like this where... where... Tunnel, right. yay! A tunnel, wait, wait. I just had a realization here. Oh, you you kept this in here because of the white rose thing. Oh no, I did the job. (laughs) For shame, Raven. Yeah, for shame. Cut that. Actually, I might have clipped it (laughs) earlier. Catch that, did you? No, I did. Okay, there we go. I'm calling you out. (laughs) Okay, I see. Okay, but I have a serious question now about the world building because they're all like, "Oh, tunnel." Sure. Okay, you all can easily crouch down lower, very clearly lower than the open turrets. And the turrets can fit in the tunnel just fine. Why is the tunnel an issue? Yeah, I just yeah. watched um, the latest Mission Impossible. And they that one has a sequence where they're on top of a train and it goes through a tunnel that lasts for way longer than any tunnel ever should. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, they had like a whole fight. They had a, a knife fight. Down there, they were running around, jumping and stuff. You could fit under a tunnel. There, there's a, there's a lot of trains have a lot of clearance in tunnels because you'd never know. If you have a shipping train, for example, containers can stack up pretty high. Just point that out mm-hmm. there. Which makes sense, especially makes sense in this world because you got to look after the turf. Oh, this scene. Yeah, this is the first major scene that I think indicates they were pivoting hard into Bumblebee because we are now saying goodbye. Yep. I mean, pretty Hello. much up until current for for F- for Sun. We'll never see him again. <laughs> and yeah. there was never F any the terrible chat. books F written in the about chat him. for Sun people. <laughs> never any <laughs> terrible worry. books involved. Uh-uh. Him. If if Rooster Teeth won't do anything with Sun, I will take him and I will protect him, and he will be in Fractured Fairy Tales, and nothing bad will ever happen to him. Fun fact: Did you well, know that Sun has a sister <laughs> named Star? 
No. Oh, oh was it a star? Weird. Was, it, was it a sister or was it a cousin? Oh God, now I'm blanking on it. It's it's funny oh, because he is also a star. So he's star and yeah. then his sister that, is star. That, that, yeah. that is probably F. F. <laughs> F? Oh. Yeah, F in the chat for son. What happened? Yeah. What, did, did we get taken around for copyright? Was it, Is that what happened? No, it's uh, F's in chat because son no, 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 leaves no. forever. I, I, <laughs> well, I clicked back to my, uh, I clicked back and I saw my stream spooling. I was like, oh, okay. I was panicking there for a minute. Oh, Okay. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Everybody's trying to give their respects it's to Sun. Sun. Raymond's having a heart attack. <laughs> yeah. <in the> heart <laughs> about him. What's happening? <laughs> but yes, uh, so let's get through this scene where it's yeah. this very. You say it like that, it sounds sad. Look, despite the drama and the fighting and the numerous attempts on my life, I had a lot of fun. You're with who you're supposed to be now. Rather um, reinforcing she... that arbitrarily everyone was stuck together at some point. Uh, yeah. And, and it's just like, oh, you're with them now. And you're supposed to be there. It's like, you could come join us. Kind of going yeah, We're going on a quest to save the world. Not... Having your gun chucks around might help save our ratings. It's, it's so really yeah. weird. <laughs> it is. It's really it's weird great. that they just enforce this idea that because you were paired together for a group project in school, that you have to stick together now. You are you are not just casual school friends, but you are Nakama, you are family. A and it's just like, no. Are that's, were, were this a better written show? Which were this a better written show, which I it's hard to imagine, but let me hear me out. Yeah. Um, <laughs> were this a better written show, I would say it's actually directly invoking that. what we discussed, I think, last week about the nature of Japanese high school. It's playing into how in high school you form a lot of your very core social uh, circles and, and uh, it's very, very impactful on your life. Mm -hmm. So I would say that in a better written show, this was a interesting commentary on, or at least an interesting implementation of that, a reflection of that system. Um, this is not a better written show, and I would just say it's them forcing the characters <laughs> together. Yeah, it's it's well, especially yeah, weird because they edge. they ax son in this moment. When it makes no sense, like him and his team could totally have tagged along, but then they also immediately get Maria on their part, like from like a production standpoint. They're yeah. just getting rid of this cool character and his awesome weapon to instead replace him with this different with character. character. <laughs> uh, Adam Zill Who could be removed and would basically change almost nothing about the plot. Yeah, Adam yeah. Zill. Mm -hmm. Imagine in V10, Almost. Sun says to Blake, he only saw her as a good friend, and he knew that she and Yang were meant for one another. If they do that, do that, if they <laughs> do that, I will rage. Like, on, I okay. You want you want to right, listen? I hope they handle it. I hope Raymond, in volume you're ten. Screaming at the inevitable. Well, no, I hope in volume ten because like they, at times they have surprised us with how mature they can be. It's very rare, but they can. I would love it if Sun bees it, it bees like is like, um. <laughs> <laughs> you know, look, I was kind of gunning for you, but it was kind of clear that in Menagerie, things weren't going to, me and you weren't going to work out, that things weren't going in the right direction that I was kind of hoping for. And, you know, I'm happy you're finding someone now. Also, you're toxic as fuck. Get away from me. <laughs> <laughs> I may I have like added that last with, part. With, without, Dude, you, I, that is... I am Raymond, certain that is it's absolutely gonna... never going to happen. It's, it's going to go in that other direction. I yeah. will bet my house. I will bet my freaking house they're going to go in that direction. It's oh. going to be like that thing where Jean was like, I've been waiting forever for that. And Weiss was like, it's about time, yeah, son. Yeah, the yeah, same yeah. Thing. <laughs> Although, I, I am going to say this. Um, I'll ante up a can of Coke, and I'll take that bet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, if I win, I get a house. If you win... You get a can of Coke. Uh, we're good on this. <laughs> no, no, no. That is not the law of equivalent. I, I will. <laughs> how about how about I offer up some Nanaimo bars, some some <laughs> Canadian food. <laughs> you want some vegetarian chicken sandwiches? That's what I have. <laughs> we're 
all in on this, all right? So, 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 all right. So, Twi- Twilight's got got Nanaimo bars. We got a vegetarian chicken sandwich from Critter. You got a Coke can from me, and uh, of course, uh, we've got a house <laughs> being <laughs> antsy. Well, let me change mine. Let me change mine. If no, no, I'm sorry. Mine. These the bets are set in stone. No. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, no. We, we will let you live in the basement. <laughs> you can join all the sketchies. I, they already live in mine, so I'll, don't worry. I'll be able to make room. <laughs> Oh, right in on way of saying sweatshop. Oh, that's a weird way of saying sweatshop. (laughs) Oh, please, please. There's not enough moisture down there for them to sweat. (laughs) Anyway, I don't think I'll ever be able to thank you enough. I'm still, um, you're still working a lot of things out. I know, but you can do it with them. And in the future, who knows? Got a feeling you haven't seen the last of me. We might have literally seen the last of him. <laughs> I mean, with the exception of his cameo in volume eight. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Teddy Bear Paladin! Guys, what is happening right now? I just Dude, wanted to oh say I God. enjoy your work. <laughs> I love analysis and discussion of work, story benefit and grow on this stuff. Some of my favorite stories are the uh, result of someone thinking more about certain details than the original authors. I mean, yeah, God damn, yeah. Um, damn. <laughs> oh, this is also your first super chat on a live stream. Thank you so much. Yeah, I think so. That is amazing. Yeah, thanks. A it lot, was Turtle man. Ducks as well. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Oh my There's god! There's a lot of cool MVPs in chat today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, already. Oh. What are we like five minutes in? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that platonic ass kiss right there. <laughs> that yeah, grandmother that. kissing her grandchild <laughs> style kiss. <laughs> so yes, that is Can I just say, the last substantial scene with some. I'm so yeah. sad. Can I just say that like, okay, like I, I, I said many times before and like I'm pretty sure in my video, I can understand from a dumb a, a dumb writing standpoint not good writing that's different dumb writing standpoint why they would go to forward with sun get i mean go forward with yang being closely tied to blake instead of sun and because number one the cast is already bloated as freaking is and they're not mm-hmm. willing to get rid of juniper for whatever reason so keeping him at <laughs> the story is probably a good idea. And number two, let's say that Blake and Son like our thing, or at least thinking about each other, but they're still separated. They're going. It's going to take like five volumes for them to get the vacuo from this point on. So it's like, eh, if we keep them together, it's gonna lower investment in the pairing. At least how I, that's how I, I I would think it works in their minds. Mm-hmm. But I don't know, man. <laughs> the um, it's a, it's a it's a it's a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation, in my opinion, given the state of the show at this point. But I don't know. It's I even to a late. Well, first of all, actually, I wanted to correct something. Um, I do remember very much. Okay. It was like in volume five or volume six during some of the commentaries given at RTX. When they were asked to look back on some of the problems of their earlier volumes, one of the criticisms they actually brought to heart, they say, was a bloated cast. I remember that distinctly being addressed by Miles and Carrie. Now, we have volume seven through nine. I mean, actually, technically, nine did a really good job of cutting down the cast. Yeah, nine got rid of the whole cast. Yeah, nine nine (laughs) cut it down to five people and and a and two talking animals. Um, so we're 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 they took it to heart. They just didn't know how to do it for seven and eight. But, <laughs> but I, I just I wanted to make sure that they do actually take criticisms to heart. I just think they haven't been listening hard enough. Like, really, what they need on their team is an editor. They need someone to tell them no. They need someone to yeah. be like, guys, this is not going to work out how you think it is. Yes. And I have not heard about anyone in writing positions talk about any kind of editing going on with their scripts. 
Mm-mm. Yeah, no. Um, Absolutely I I wouldn't not. be surprised if what they release out there is basically the first draft of their their final script. That would explain like, yeah. the dialogue. Yeah, mm-hmm. it I would. Mean, given how, um, I mean, given how quickly, given how quickly they make these volumes, at least usually, aside from volume nine, yeah, that's that's pretty apparent. At least like their second draft. This had to be mm-hmm. at least their second draft. You know what might I'm be also... useful for them is, okay, for your first draft, get lazier with it. Like get, mm-hmm. I, 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 you, because if you put enough, if you put too much effort into your first draft, some people don't have the energy to go back and reflect on it. Like, it's like, I put so much work into this. I, I have this mm. very clear idea in my mind. I've run into this before where like, I, you know, you're so set in stone and then you have to go back and rewrite whole chunks of it. Getting mm-hmm. lazy with the first draft yeah. gives you a rough outline and a rough template to work from and then makes you very like fluid within it. And even while you're being lazy, you might think of like something stupid or funny that you take and you're like, wait, no, I can actually turn this into something more serious upon editing and review. The, yeah. Raymond Raymond yeah. is talking about like this grand technique that he has created, and I'm like, use it's the snowflake method. Use the snowflake method. Yeah. No, you, you you build up I, your I story. I never heard. Of it. I, I, I haven't heard the snowflake method in years. Oh my <laughs> god! Yeah, I've never heard of it in general. This is, I think this is the first time I heard of it. Okay, so well, you can only method. use it if you're special. <laughs> the snowflake method is a method of building up your story from a simple premise. So you you can start with a, something as small as a single sentence, and then you edit it, and now it's five paragraphs. And now you edit it, and it's like a chapter length, and you just keep expanding on it. And I remember it's, 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 it's called the snowflake method, because the thing, like, what I remember is you wrote your thing in the middle of the page, and then every time you had an idea, you had like an arrow coming off of it, and you could add more arrows off of that, and so then when you look at it, it looks like a snowflake. Oh, yeah. I haven't done it in so long, though. <laughs> <laughs> I I might actually... I I don't think I've ever heard of that method before, if I'm oh. being honest. Yeah, uh, legitimately. Yeah, um, I think this is the first time I heard of it, yeah. Uh, I only heard of it back in elementary school, so... Well, maybe Raymond, Raymond, um, I told you that you could use my Ginkgo account, and you're just like, yeah, sure, and then you forget about it five minutes later. I... Well, one, I what didn't know massive. the Ginkgo account was... <laughs> was the snowflake method like it, it it's pretty similar and two I, I i was like oh yeah i can use that and then like well if i need to use it i'll use it and then yeah i do forget about it I, <laughs> it just yeah. happens <laughs> Which, but like i didn't I, like, even if i did use it i wouldn't know that was what it was called method wise well yeah but like that that's basically what it is is um because they they basically remade the snowflake method but as a um a ginkgo tree so what they have is that you have a a single panel that is your leaf and then you can branch out from that with the next column. So one leaf can have uh one branch can have like five different leaves on it and then those five leaves can have more like 10, 20. It it can go as as long and as complicated as you want and all these all these different uh Twilight. things can branch off into many other different things. It, it just it baffles me that like you're Twilight, like you, do talk you mind about a showing, lot of these... Give me the, give me this account. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the uh, I, I I might need that for my own story. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. I, quite frankly, I might like because I've been struggling with um my my Sentai project. Um, I might need to actually use that. That would actually probably be very helpful. Oh, I that's yeah. Um, reviewing the bees has yes. made us all evolve as writers. <laughs> yes. I, I, just, I find it impressive how yeah. I went to college. I have a four-year degree in creative writing, and Twilight continually <laughs> introduces me to new things. I've like I've never heard of that before. Interesting, that, like <laughs> smart Canadian-style writing. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> this new, show me the way of moose country. <laughs> the snowflake method now redubbed antler method. <laughs> um now focusing on something that's a little bit less bees focused but this is um a common complaint in our circles for the sketchy huntsman uh jay in particular is very persnickety about it the framing of locations in ruby is awful look mm-hmm. at this room 
yeah. this room <laughs> is so bad. Why is there so much space? People, you don't realize it, but in mass transport, space is a premium. So having mm -hmm. a room that has probably what? Oh yeah, this is like as big as my bedroom. Like I, I bet bigger. I know the answer. Oh, I bet I know the answer. I bet it's for when they're animating. They like overcompensate how big a room should be compared to their model sizes. So when they're modeling it, they they just make it big. Because I do that. I've been doing that. I've noticed that I make something huge in Blender, and I'm like, that's the right size. And then I put the the character in there, and I'm like, oh no, this is a giant's house. Oopsie. <laughs> but it's so <laughs> easy I to love fix. You're looking at this. <laughs> I love how you're looking at this career and be all like, hey, that's that's stupid. That sounds like something that I would do. But yeah, like, you want to say, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, like, what I, what I would just do is like, OK, you take those windows, you shrink them down to like maybe a sixth or a seventh of the size that they currently are, like horizontally. Like you squish them into super vertical to super vertical lines, smack dab in the center and then scooch everything in super tight so you only it have would like be a so little easy to do screen. yeah oh my god it would be so, so easy. easy to do like it's ridiculously easy to do that like critter i i believe is the only one uh the other one out of the four of us who knows how easy it is because she's the only one who talks about actually doing modeling work and i did a whole bunch of modeling when i was in school yeah and i started learning on my own like four months ago so i i, I know some modeling i, I understand the, the the core premises of it um the uh i'm not the greatest i'm not saying i'm like a great freaking modeler for the record. i'm just saying i know how to i haven't i don't practice it but the what i was going to make a point is also i think there's also like a, a space where like there's trunks at the foot of the beds that are really weird and so you need to cut those out mm -hmm. and bring the beds in closer to the wall of course squeeze them in tighter and one thing that just occurred to me is do they know how to play with the frame of their camera? Like, or with the, no. with the, the, the God, like, no. God, cause, no. <laughs> Cause to get a similar shot like this one, you would have all the characters be much closer now. So you wouldn't need it. You, you would, the focal length of your, your, your lens quote unquote should probably be, I don't know if it'd be tighter or for more open. I, I struggle with this. It's a very precise science knowing that sort of thing, but like you could, you have a slider for fuck's sake. You can just slide <laughs> it in a digital program to get it to where it looks right. Mm -hmm. Looking at also, their storyboards, I feel like they just like whoever is working on the like the cinematography slash storyboarding of Ruby just doesn't really get it. They don't really understand the rule of thirds, especially. No. Mm. Um, going going slightly back to the. Uh to the size of the room thing it it should be so small that you should that in order to get to your top bunk you have to parkour up there <laughs> just like spider-man up there you know when you're a kid how you would have a yeah. hallway and you had a room to like press your arms against the walls to to climb up the walls like that yeah you you should be able, you should have to do that with the beds also what train has bunk beds uh, quite some a few do. of them, actually. Do, actually. I haven't been on a train ever. Now, now, so he, I... <laughs> he, here's here's the, the caveat. Is typically speaking, what they have is bunk beds that fold down. So if, you, if you're the only person in there, you can fold them up and have a lot more space to just move around in. Mm -hmm. um, they're not typically right, fixed right. like this. It's not like someone has... like These are like uh, clearly bunk beds that are meant for someone's bedroom, not for a sleeper car, where you would typically yeah. have like you know it actually built into the wall. Well, there. I think that there are some that are a little bit more sturdy than that. It depends on the kind of passenger train, but for sure, this is a room in a building, not a room in a in a train. And mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure that this was right. built by a person who has never been on any kind of transport vehicle before. And while I've never been on a passenger train necessarily. I've been on a ferry. I've been on a ferry frequently to go to Haida Gwaii. And uh right. like it doesn't it doesn't even look like that when it's when you're going on the ferry. Like it's a lot more cramped. But you can hold a lot more people than you can on a train. Uh Adam Zilke. Also we got ten dollar super chat. Yeah, I was gonna say yeah. Where do you think Juniper should have been, or Junior should have been written out to term the cast? In my opinion, you need to explain why they wouldn't come with Ruby in Volume Four, or why they'd be left behind anywhere. I 
when we did Fixing Volume 6, there was genuinely deep debate whether or not we were going to leave Junior in uh, Argus. I think of all the locations to leave them as characters, Argus is the one that you could argue get them left behind. Um, it's the reason why it became like the core focus of Junior as a team, um, as opposed to Team Ruby, which was coming back together. Mm -hmm. Junior, it was whether or not to continue on this journey. And like, quite right. frankly, you could easily tip them one way or the other in terms of like John staying behind to keep his uh, his family safe and Ren and Nora staying behind because they just wanted to be regular huntsmen this whole time. And they all trust Team Ruby to get the job done. Right. But you could do that at Argus. I think that's the cleanest part. And then obviously volume yeah. eight you have everyone falling down, so you could easily just cut John out and put him in vacuo somewhere. Yeah. Um, I, I know that like, it's not can... Ruby uh, proper, can... but yeah, I was thinking about that, too, with the Fractured Fairy Tales. Like, what would I do with the extra cast and stuff? And what I thought was, as I split the girls, I would also have the other team split, and they would go with each other to have different configurations, because my teams aren't set in stone, uh, like like they are in Ruby. So they like the whole point was that the teams would shift around so that you would have better combat experience with different types of people and different methods of fighting with each other. That so these... is a smart decision. <laughs> that, that's yeah. something even Black Clover knows how to do, which is why I tend <laughs> to enjoy that a lot. Yeah, so when the girls have to split up, because they, they are friends, like they are together in a main team simply because they became fast friends with each other. But when it comes to splitting up, other members of other groups go with them on their missions in order to uh, continue to graduate and stuff like that. So they would continue to be relevant on the simple fact that they would be split up and uh, but together at the same time. And as the girls finish what they're doing in other parts of the world, they come back together. The other characters do stay behind in order to, to finish what they, what they started. Philip Schwarz? Ruby was confused about distances and Mistral. Not surprising when you realize Kruby doesn't know either. Yep. <laughs> uh, Keep it fast and loose. Don't ever not try to... Not to mention time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Speaking of time... <laughs> Who we've been sitting space and time. We've been sitting on the opening of the scene for like <laughs> ten minutes, discussing a very legitimate point, I argue. But uh yes. we should probably get on with the scene. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well I will say I it's no. cute how their beds are like the same configuration as their bunk beds from Beacon. But that's the only good thing. <laughs> yeah, it's it's like the vaguest, like, oh, it's in this shape. Well, it actually, it looks way more close to it. I was thinking about it. All furniture have has red. Like, all the couches have red fabric. All the beds have red fabric. It's weird. <laughs> so, okay. Well, we just demonstrate here. Ruby's like, hey, let's all play some cards as a team bonding exercise. Which, you know, I find cute. Whatever, Ruby. Um, Yang goes to get her cards out, and Blake is immediately rushing over to help Yang get her cards out. Like, mm -hmm. we'll finish watching this. Blake, you don't have to do that. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm fine. We're going to be fine. It's just going to be a bit before things are back to normal. But I am glad we're all back together. Gag me with a sp girl's yeah. Let, let, me me standing on. let me at him. Let me at him. <laughs> let me at him. Let me at him. I just let me I at don't him right now. Well, I I I I was hoping okay. that Ruby and Weiss would literally fall from their positions. I think that'd be funny. Anyway, okay. Um, everyone, I, I everyone, love stand how back. Kaiser we're letting him Hang off on. the chain. I, I love how Kaiser was like, oh, I'm, I'm so glad that before the stream starts, Twilight is getting all of her energy out so that she doesn't ha have that during the stream. And yet, and now he's the one that's like, oh, he needs to be off the leash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, nah, listen, okay? I have been waiting for this part because I need to, I need to give the people what they want. Okay, okay? the collar's off. Because I'm you, trying you to can... follow up. 
Yeah. Go off, Kaiser. Try, Go off, okay. King. To follow up on what I was saying prior to uh, in the prior stream, this reaction from Yang. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Zero connector, absolutely right. Why isn't Yang angrier, right? And then not necessarily angry, but much less like, like she's, this is way too quick. This is way too fast. It's, it's literally it's, like I said before, that conversation she had with Weiss in the previous volume, apparently it just houdini her problems away. And it's, it's especially just weird because when they land... In Brunswick Farm, suddenly Yang ha seems to have beef with Blake. So this, them being cool here, is like double dumb. <laughs> double double dumb? Yeah. Double it's double so dumb. <laughs> it, I just don't understand. Like, the problem with this is, is that this makes it even more obvious that they are forcing it in, right? And not only that, it, like I say, say so many times, this makes their conflict prior to this volume so much more petty and small than it actually is okay abandonment issues is not something that is petty or small okay the experiences that both blake and yang had, had with each other is not something that should be banished away with one conversation but nope. guess what if blake had just said the right thing in the scene after this one which we'll get to literally nothing would even there would be no beef between the two at all, it, which is fucking but it stupid. But gets, it gets weirder when you think about what yeah. Blake is trying to do here. Like, I'm trying to think of a yeah. single moment that Blake has reflected on how she treated Yang, and now she's scrambling to be like, oh, oh, let me get that for you, and trying to be like the, 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 like, it's all the indications of someone who's trying to make up for what they do, but they're doing it in like the shallowest way possible. Like they're trying yeah. to be mm -hmm. a personal servant. Yeah. It's like that's not that's not really what the the problem was. Um, it also kind of right. dips into a little bit of ableism, which I know yeah. wasn't what they were wanting to do. You, but like, yeah, the insistence of oh, but let me help you because you have that prosthetic arm now. I don't want you to to be bothered and, by it. And I want to like, make this clear. That would not be a problem if it were actually a part of the character. If it were not yeah. unintentional. <laughs> if it were actually building into Blake and exactly. somehow thinks lesser of Yang like because of this and has guilt tied to that. Like, she is now less because of my actions. If we actually focused on that yeah. and had maybe a conversation, something about that, or had Blake really feel like thinking about it, it could actually go somewhere and be explored. It's, it, it's reminding me of... How uh, apparently the live action uh, oh, the Avatar oh, is taking out Sokka's sexism, oh, even though God, that was a no. major no, early no, part no, of his no, character. No. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it's so bullshit. Like, but but the reason why it worked oh, there is that it was intended. It was directly system. addressed and covered, and it actually led to a character growing from an immature place to a mature one. We are completely robbed of that with Blake and Yang yeah. here. Yep. I this I is, really this hate is like modern writing. This is like the problem with modern writing in yes. a nutshell. They're not yes. willing to let their characters actually be flawed, and most importantly, for the story to call them out on it. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. I absolutely hate this idea that characters need to be perfect at all times. They're not allowed to to have flaws because uh, I I think that because people complain that characters have these bad traits in the first place people in the industry are just like oh well we don't want our characters to be unlikable because that'll mean that we won't get as much money so we should just uh wipe wipe all their flaws away and it's no, just like that's not them good as yeah. marketable like, as ever <laughs> yeah, I, I, I love this when so you like look rude. at some of the most popular characters of all time like you've got Iron Man, who is a complete fucking asshole, even in his you know, in, in his <laughs> debut film. You've got Jack Sparrow, who also complete yep. fucking asshole. That man is a monster when you actually get down to any kind of like social calm. Like he might not kill people outright, though he does kill a lot of people outright that are bad guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but he, just because he does that doesn't mean he's just not an just a walking natural disaster whenever he's in town. Um you you've got yeah. Oh god, I'm I'm I'm, th I'm thinking of okay, so like in He's Alice in Wonderland, 
Alice is so boring. No one like she's never she's no one's favorite character in Alice in Wonderland. But take Jim Henson's Labyrinth. Sarah is whiny, she complains, and then she has to learn and grow, and you see the evolution of her character. So even though it's the same premise of a girl in a strange land having to figure out her way to get back to reality, Sarah holds so much more weight than Alice and ever would. And she's a would. badass by the end of it. She, I, Labyrinth is my favorite movie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it, it's, it's a great, it's a great example of like a flawed character and arguably a weak character in terms of like strength and that kind of stuff ends up being badass and uh, lovable by the end of a story because of the growth they go through and how they handle themselves in crisis situations. Just her standing mm-hmm. up to Jareth is fucking awesome. Like, come on. Yeah. Like, like she sacrifices what? her brother. She was willing to let her brother go. And then after she eats the peach and she wakes up in the dumpster with the trash goblins, <laughs> if this was Sarah from the beginning of the movie, she would have accepted her life as a trash goblin and let Toby, like, be taken. But because she's gone through all this growth with her friends, she doesn't... God, I love that movie. <laughs> <laughs> so I yeah. need to watch that movie, King- but, like... Yeah. We can go to examples of anime that we've watched. Um, Aladdin is yeah. a, a bit of a a bit of a horn dog at, at his young age. A lot of the characters there <laughs> are, uh, are a little bit Imagi? unlikable. Yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah, yeah, Imagi, yeah. Imagi. Uh, Aladdin. You have to be and... very specific which Aladdin you're talking about. Okay, well, let's be clear. <laughs> Aladdin from from Disney's Aladdin is very unlikable as a person because he's a fucking thief. Like I don't care if it's for his own survival. Yeah. Like, like there, 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 there is a line of like he is genuinely violating someone else's rights in life by stealing from them. Like, you, you can't kind of get around right. that. Um, they, they directly said that they had to give him a save the cat moment in order to make him a likable character because thieves aren't yes. likable. So they had to give, they had to give a scene where he gives away the bread that he just stole in order to make him a likable person. Gentle criminal. Um, Gentle criminal yes. is fucking amazing. Gentle and criminal, he, yes. his entire thing is just causing kind of chaos everywhere to for, for the fucking clicks. That was, that's yes. it. Dude, <laughs> he, he is awesome. Thorfinn. Thorfinn. Thorfinn from, uh, actually not even Thorfinn from Villain Saga, even though he's a great example. Freerun. That Freerun is absolutely oh, free not all that more. Freerun is uh, what yeah. I love about the writing of Freerun is that she is genuinely kind of alien. Like the, it, it is very smartly yes. written in that like, just because of time dilation, like she doesn't comprehend time on the same way that humans do. So that's where all the jokes come from. Is like, oh, it'll be here soon, and everyone's like, so does soon mean five minutes, <laughs> five days, or five years? free run what does it mean we don't understand you five thousand years the best part is the audience doesn't understand free run we're also in that same boat as everyone else because it does such a good job of conveying that flawed characters are good flawed characters are vitally important to your storytelling like okay yep Full, full disclosure artificer i can go back to the artificer (laughs) craft is a relatively blank slate character i intended him that way because i was just trying to make a relatively simple story and write it going forward in the sequel i am taking that and the problems that come with the blank slate character and him having to go through his own growth i'm taking that and i'm making it so that his life is a lot more complicated and he's going to have to start making some sacrifices and choices that are not comfortable either to him or anyone around him like it's it's that sort of situation like here's a good example would you ever want to go on an expedition with your abuser no but he has to make that choice because (sighs) politics get in the way and he's not happy about it (laughs) So it's yep. like it, it, he he's forcing someone no one's happy to go politics. along with them with someone that she hates. He doesn't really have much of a choice because he needs both their help. Yep. Uh, another example is Bakugo. And again, Oreka 7, Holland. Yeah, true. 
Dude, everyone in <laughs> <I> guess Seven <laughs> is, is wonderfully flawed. Yeah, I was about to say. Yes, it's wonderfully, pretty wonderfully much, flawed. Pretty Name any, like, real robot anime, much like Eureka Seven. Name any cast from any one of those shows. Every single one of those characters are flawed. Oh, God, Especially yeah. in freaking Gundam. Oh, yeah, I was going to say mm-hmm. G-Witch. G-Witch. Every I mean, for all the one. flaws of G-Witch, it, the cast is it's all relatively well-rounded until, like, the very last... I still need to Five watch episodes. it. I still need to. <laughs> he still needs to watch it. <laughs> I know. No I know. spoilers. Also, we've been putting off this uh, super chat by uh, Teddy Bear Paladin. Yeah. I will say, before the dawn makes Team Ruby's plan to dump mm. all of Atlas and Mantle into vacuo even worse. Assuming Carrie and Miles read the supplementary books if they get around to Volume <laughs> Ten. Yep. Also, mm-hmm. Oscar Borgia. Oh wow, we've. I. Oh god, we've missed. We've missed several. Oscar Borgia. Yeah. Yang should be angry at her oh, and God. not deal with her. Yes, we would. Yep, that's ac- accurate. Adam Zelke is a part one of two. The issue with flawed yep. characters is now you uh, need to have good development for them to get out those flawed traits, and it has to be believable. Um, as to uh, to as well as have them face consequences for their flawed actions while keeping the story from uh, keep, correct. Story going. See how people are divided on Bakugo from I, My Hero Academia. Bakugo at least. Through the anime, I'm still catching up on the manga. Endeavor, especially, yeah. Endeavor and Bakugo are wonderful characters. And they are the ones I'm going to come to the defense of yeah. any minute in terms of writing. Now, here's the thing. I would punch Bakugo and... Well, mm. late game Endeavor, I wouldn't <laughs> punch in the face. Bakugo, I probably would still punch in the face. Okay. Um, <laughs> I would die. I would, I would fucking <laughs> die. But you know what? It'd be worth it. <laughs> You know, just as a small aside, um, I was going to do a My Hero Academia play with some of my OCs, and one of my friends decided that he was going to play Bakugo because he just loves the character so much because he he loves being the bombastic little shit in roleplay. Um, (laughs) And he decided that he was going to pair up Bakugo with my reverse empath character. So anytime he... So her emotions oh, transcribe no. onto him. It's great. Yes. Yes. That's funny. That's so funny. How many that hours can you possibly talk OC about this? For, uh, well, we're about 45 minutes in, and we've made it probably a grand total of one minute into an hour-long video. Oh, God. <laughs> nah, it's, it had to be longer than that. We at least made it out of, like, five minutes. Come on. I don't think so. I think. Uh-uh. Anyway, anyway, point is, rooster teeth are pussies. Let's move on. Yes. <laughs> sure. That's why Blake's a cat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're not getting much from this. It's just everyone See? reacting. It's not yours. Yeah. Grab your weapons. See, and everyone expected the men to be making that joke in this stream, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yep, here we go. We're on the train now. Yay. God, that weapon is so fucking useless. D's death is such yeah. a big moment for Bumblebee's development. <laughs> <laughs> Look, they bond yeah, over people dying around a... them. It's true. They, yeah, they it is do. true. I, li- I told you. They're kink at this point. <laughs> I told you they do. What's the plan, Ruby? Don't let anyone else in. I need a pillow. I, I need to I scream. Love, I, I hate that it. line. I hate it <laughs> so <laughs> much. It's such a trailer bait. I, can I, just say, can I, can I just say that it, it would have been really good if somebody made an effort edit where after she says that line, it cuts and overall Curb Your Enthusiasm's theme plays with everybody die. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's my gag. <laughs> that's my overdue gag. He, yeah, he uses that so much. Hey, it's such a good gag. <laughs> it works. If it's good, you look so good. Another okay. super chat. Okay. Uh, Edward Kenway, the best, uh, um, I was going to say Armored Court, no, um, Assassin's Creed protagonist, spends 90% of his game as a self-serving utter okay. bastard who learns to be better after his own choices and flaws cause the deaths of almost all of his friends. I have not played Black Flag, but I will take your word for it and presume it is better than Ruby. <laughs> a pretty safe presumption. <laughs> we can okay, okay. This, let's be fair. Like, it is, it is Assassin's Creed, so it's not. You know, it's it's kind of it, it's iffy. It's iffy, especially the later you go on. I love yeah, that this has become the evolution of the Twilight meme. 
still a better romance than Twilight. <laughs> this is still a better show than Ruby. <laughs> yeah, yo. Still a better adventure than Ruby. Let's go with that. Yeah. Why are you guys landing? You can fly faster. Are, do Grim get tired? How tall is the mountain? That's a good how, question. How round is the mountain? <laughs> I'm Did glad they we even got have more than organs five organs to get tired models. from. Maybe we wouldn't be able to... Oh man, <laughs> I don't want to think about the I, the I organs. Hate this scene. Grim. I hate this scene. <laughs> it's pretty hateable. <laughs> also, I gotta love, man. My arm got wedged between a train and a tunnel, and I only got a big old bruise from it. I yeah. know. I thought he was gonna lose it. I was like, this is gonna be a thing. Yang's gonna right. have PTSD because she, she's gonna see how he yeah. lost his arm. Uh, but no. <laughs> what we're doing. He still had aura, apparently. R also, why do they suck at Kirby this so much when they rips? likely went to a school to train for this shit? I mean, to be fair, they only trained for like a semester and a half. No, wait, no, no they, got, they meant, got through a full year. I meant Never Dean mind. Dudley. I oh. meant Dean Dudley. That Maybe is Mistral's a... just like really low bar for like actually... graduation. This is, this is actually not to keep drawing comparison <laughs> to My Hero Academia, really but as I'm going through the manga, one thing I very much appreciate <laughs> is that they very they do a very good job of constantly reiterating UA, their hero course is far leagues in a way better than other schools. And while I wish so far, yeah. like my biggest wish is that we had gotten to see other schools. It is proof time and time again that UA1 and uh, UA1B and 1A are both heads above even people who are years ahead of them in their class. So the idea is that like different schools have different quality students coming out of them and different quality students are making it through these different types of trials. It's just interesting right. to me how Ruby has established nothing of the sorts when it comes down to like Okay, which of the four schools is the best Huntsman Academy? I don't know. No idea. Yeah, don't know. You know what's uh, you know what I was thinking of last week? I mean, by I was like, all accounts. Beacon, I, I suppose. Like, how many people are actually yeah. from Vale? Because I was mm -hmm. thinking about it, and like a lot of characters like Russian. traveled from Atlas or Mistral. Ruby Yang. How many people are actually from Vale? <laughs> Ruby Yang. Hmm. Yeah. Ty, I guess. Ruby Yang. I was gonna say John, but John Is also Linda? talks about things they go on Linda? vacation to in Mistral, so maybe not. Well, Argus is in Mistral, Linda. so I was assume that he's from Argus. No, uh, no. Pyrrha's from Argus. No, oh, okay. No, yeah. no, no. John's yeah. sister moved to Argus. I because like I, oh, okay. Otherwise, I would assume they would have met his whole family and his like billions of sisters because his parents are just <laughs> rabbits. I have to assume I have to assume that Glinda is from Vale. Um probably Port and Ublek as well. Ozpin. I guess the, the Ozpin body that we know. Um <laughs> Right. Ty. I was like it's, it's a lot of like I assume Summer. You are. Yeah. That's what I hate about Ruby is that yeah, so summer. 30, 30 to forty percent of watching Ruby is just making assumptions. It really mm -hmm. is. Like actually, I, that reminds me of a joke I was trying to say when Raymond said it would have been great if they did this intentionally. That's a tagline for the show. It would have been great <laughs> if they did everything on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if they meant to do this, it would have been cool. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, you're right. How many people are actually from Vale? Because we don't know. I think was it Yatsuhashi's from Mistral. Velvet is from yeah. Atlas, I think. Yeah. Um. Yes. Coco yes. might be from Vale. Fox mm. is from Vacuo. Actually, oh my god, I think Team Coffee is actually a better spread of the world than Team Ruby is. You would think that would be nice. the other way around. <laughs> um, Funny. Well, there's no defining physical characteristics for any of the different regions or countries, so it's impossible to really it, Yeah, know. Vale is Sorry. vaguely a Merrick Britain. Um, Amera Brit. Yeah. Pan everywhere. Okay, you know, to be fair, we'll, we'll half ground it. It's Canada. Um, <laughs> yeah, see, that's really it. You know, it's half Britain, half America. It's Canada. It makes sense. Um, unless you go to British the French parts. You can ignore the French parts. It's, it's fine. World. And don't, don't, I mean, most people do. Yeah, it's fair. Um, what do you mean? Jean's French? <laughs> oh, God. No, you're right. Shit. <laughs> 
So he does come from Vale. Got it. Uh, and then Mistral is vaguely also Asia nice land. Picture. And then you've got Atlas, which is vaguely Russia. And they say U.S., but that's just because they wanted modern day politics in there. I, I take yeah. it more as like a Russia. Um, <laughs> I, I guess mostly Russia. I, think really? I find yes. it so weird that two of their four kingdoms are in some way based off of America. Uh, like, really? <laughs> yeah. Because they weren't thinking then, about when they made Vail. I mean, well, they weren't. Yeah, they weren't. Like, they just did what they did. No. Mm -hmm. They didn't. They and for some reason they decided to just double right. up because they didn't think, oh, we haven't done America yet. Yes, you have. Um, and then why did, why do these yeah, countries need to be XBs for certain real world countries in the first place? Why don't you actually listen, use listen. your creativity and actually like build a kingdom based off of the world building that you don't do I, because you're fucking lazy? Uh, because we made because groovy. we made our story based off of fucking ketchup markings on a napkin, Twilight. Okay. Okay. Uh, some super chats here. M3D That's talking fine. about flawed that, characters. That... Obligatory Kratos shout out. Kratos is a wonderful flawed character, oh. and the mm -hmm. new God of War has done the new God of War games has done such an amazing job of taking what was a relatively simple character and fleshing out not only his current mindset but actually the mindset of him back in his past. Like, they actually go back into his history, which you don't expect during the... the, the I saw that clip. Yeah, yeah, during the Valhalla stuff. Oh, my God. They cover so much of his history and recontextualize what he did to not only highlight, yeah, you did some horribly shitty things, but you also did some horribly shitty things for the right reason. Like, you were actually properly motivated. Yeah. You made mistakes. You did horrible things. And that cannot not, not be forgotten. But you should not also forget that you did things because it was also the right thing to do. Like, th there is a balance and there is it, there is other elements to your character that you've been completely neglecting because you keep harping on yourself constantly. And I, just, I <laughs> love that. And you've I love changed. That. And you have you changed. changed. You have grown. Yeah. You recognize your flaws and you have grown. It's It's... God, Kratos, you could write whole novels of information on Kratos. And I I have not played a single God of War thing. I've only watched people play through them. But oh my God, the writing in those games is phenomenal. Um, and also Philip Schwartz. Dude. Ruben Yanger from Patch, is it a veiled territory? I think it is presumptively a, ter a veiled territory, yes. Mm -hmm. I, I yeah. just want to say very quickly to defend the ketchup napkin, that is a legitimate form of uh, map world building that people use. But instead of ketchup, people mostly use rice. Yeah. It, uh, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you yeah, spell rice, that, and then you right. draw circles around the rice or map it out, like, where the different coastlines are. It actually makes pretty nice-looking maps. It does, oh. yeah. <laughs> I was just picturing, like, a, like a, a pound of rice being thrown on the ground. Well, yeah, that's, like, that's what you do, basically. <laughs> you just There's so many it. islands. <laughs> um, and, of course, you can edit it. You can, you can <laughs> tweak it. Um, but it is a legitimate form of map right. making. Um, it's just making the geography for you. That's all that does. It's not a problem. Mm -hmm. It's it's what you do with it afterwards. That's the important part. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. I wasn't talking about the map. I, I I wasn't even. I forgot that that's how they made the map for Vale. I was just t saying that like, oh, they made the story out of the fucking napkin, uh, fucking markings or whatever. That was just a general general insult. Okay, but anyways. Time to move on. Yes. Hi, Oscar. Oh, bye, Oscar. You're possessed now. Whoa. What's that? None of your business. Buzz. Are you serious? Why wouldn't you tell us that? I... It doesn't matter right now. <laughs> Can't have any character development right now. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> we just gotta shove it under the rug with everything else, like character development exactly. and <laughs> no risk and no risk. romantic arts. This show is all about characters yep. stopping their action to talk to each other. But in this instance, let's not talk to each other. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, they it's only like stop to talk to each other about like, things that don't turn -based matter. Turn-based combat. Yeah. They, they, <laughs> which is about everything. Um. Which is yeah. Have you heard of turn-based combat? This is turn-based dialogue. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking say that I am a massive fan of the Phoenix Wright series motherfucker and that does it right wait wait hey hey 
That is true. I will give you that. I have played the original trilogy, so I'll give you that one, Raymond. I'll give you that. <laughs> I, yeah, I was going to say, I consider the original Ace Attorney trilogy one of the best written trilogies of all time. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, uh, do we think there was any actual Bumblebee development in that scene? They were simply in the scene together. That's why I absolutely it. not. Oh fuck! Uh, no. <laughs> okay, good. That's why I kind of. I was thinking it, but we did develop, but we did a develop few our friendship. hours earlier. I was thinking to myself, oh, basically every single scene we see is going to be confirming Blake and Yang have some interest in each other. And then I thought to myself, no. Raymond's gonna find those weird ass scenes where they just exist yeah. next to each other. Yes. yes. <laughs> because you're because not you know like a bumblebee hey, yeah, yeah, as you say, like you know this is the reason why I did this is because you fucking know they're gonna be out there and they're gonna be like because they were in the scene together, they're so in love. Look at how they casually look okay. <laughs> into the middle distance yeah. at slightly different <laughs> angles. <laughs> Back in volume two, okay. Weiss used to stand between them. Now they stand next to each other. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So you know we have to cover this. We have like to cover wasp, all of it. You're not thinking like a wasp. <laughs> and that's what annoys me about this. Like we could probably cut down these streams to a fraction of what they were. I mean, probably not. We'd still be talking a lot of bullshit. But you yeah. know that we have to cover all these scenes that don't have jack shit going on. Because someone else will try to bring yeah. it up like it's somehow important. <laughs> At least we can talk over it. Yeah, it's it's great. And if we talk over it, the, the, the copyright shield will do the rest of the work. See, they're, they're back to back. They're fighting back to back, sort of, at, like, at a nice... Oh, uh, even though they were even five, five, five foot times. distance for eight months, but let's not talk about that. When uh, Crow getting his shit rocked by a manticore was such a big point for their development. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One of the five times in the whole series that they actually do teamwork together. Oh, it's so yeah. it's so amazing. It's when in like volume so eight or right seven, now. when Marrow's like, "You guys don't always have to fight next to each other," and then oh, they kill like a seven. single yeah. manticore, <laughs> and they they give him a look like, "See, we're perfect together." It's like, no, yeah, it's like, <laughs> no. What the fuck? I think it's like the last <laughs> time for a long while that Weiss actually uses her like skill sets, and then. The rest is default summoning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, except for partially the Aesop's fight. Except for the Aesop's fight. Right. Yeah. Even then, she was stupid in that fight, too. Um, but maybe if you guys weren't stupid. showing off to have a pretty cool move, then you would have gotten to the Manticore <laughs> earlier. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. I love that train crash because now I know what it, a good train crash really looks like in Fruby. Like I, I want to put the record out there. I was not the one that developed that scene. That was one that was pitched to me by Jay and Coffee, um, and I think oh nice, Quill, like they were the ones that came up with like, man, this train crash should have been really. I didn't have I hadn't had like a firm idea for what that I wanted to do for really this scene. Good scene. So like when they pitched it to me, I'm like. Hell the fuck yes, and I want to make this as exhausting as possible because it should not be like this affair that everyone walks away happy from. Uh, oh, uh, Orion that was a great Lupin. scene, by the way. Orion, oh, thank you, Orion Lupin from another example of a good protagonist that does awful things, Walter White. That's one I have less knowledge yeah. about, but yes, he's a good character. That's a great character. People love. I've him. seen season one of Breaking Bad. He he is absolutely correct. <laughs> um, um, actually, a, a character I want to briefly touch on an example of is from a video game I really love called Tales of the Abyss. The main character, uh, Luke von Fabra. Luke, for literally the first third of the game, is a complete asshole. Like, he's this sheltered, rich kid douchebag who doesn't know anything, who basically just thinks that everything should be handed to him, Right? And he's just thrown into this war-like situation, and he and he lets everything go to his head. Um, but after a certain point in the story, which I'm not gonna spoil, he's gonna do something really stupid that endangers, let's say, the lives of millions of fucking people. And the <laughs> game, even though there are some explanations for that, the game didn't take the bitch route. Where it just covered up all of that shit by saying, oh, it's not your fault because, you know, this, this, and that thing. No, 
this happened because of flaws that are that you have displayed throughout this journey. You need to fix your shit. And guess what? Even after he decided to change, his friends needed a very long time to actually readjust and accept him for who he is and who he has become. Like, that's a huge part of his development. The party gets split during the game because... Um, you can tell I that this is really what Kaiser's going to talk about in his next video. <laughs> <laughs> well, He's actually, giving us a preview. I was going to say, like, I might start taking notes. I'll need that for volume seven and eight. Um, <laughs> oh, man. I, I will just say, um, Lena Inverse. Yeah. Right. Fucking yeah. I you, Le you Lena likes blowing people up a, Luke a lot. She she likes blowing point. people up. She likes uh scamming people out of money. She likes uh beating people up. She she isn't she has a lot of morals, but she also isn't the best of people. Yeah, her her morals stop at do I get what I want? <laughs> yeah. She <laughs> she would be willing to allow an entire village to die if it meant that they weren't going to pay her properly for it. Yeah, and it, and more often than not, she'll save the village and then by the end of it, she'll be eating dinner, or something will mildly perturb her and she'll blow up entire like sections of yep. town just yeah. casually. <laughs> Because that's just the kind of person Lena is. Um, I, I still love how, before we watched Slayers, I was showing you my Besom book for Slayers. And you were like, why is there so much building destruction built into this system? <laughs> and then you watched the series and you're like, oh, I get it now. <laughs> yeah, there, there, was, there was an entire section dedicated to collateral damage. Admittedly, my bigger issue with it was there wasn't like any kind of numbers or computing going behind there. I'm like, how am I yeah. supposed to like, implement this in a rule set but <laughs> to be fair kind of hard to do with lena in first <laughs> yeah it's just like okay that wall and every wall in the next mile radius is just gone now mm -hmm. oh. yeah. Still alive. we're almost done with episode one of volume six. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> also was there any bumblebee during that time nope no nah. so they were back to back fighting Oh wait, did um did Blake and Yang help each other up? Oh my god, they're so in love, guys. Actually, I don't think they did. <laughs> I didn't even pay attention to that. <laughs> yeah, they're not even saying I think Ruby and Yang helped each other up. Yeah, see? Yeah. yeah. For once they remembered yeah, their I'm sisters. Bad. Also, <laughs> where yeah. where does the instrumentation like this go? Because that's a good little song for Maria. The safest kingdom we have at the moment. Mm -hmm. I like the little the, the plucky sound to it. General Ironwood called everyone back. Not everyone. The city of Argus is a ways north of us, and it's the primary trading port between Anima and... This is really the volume where you can tell Vic Mignogna was just half-assing all of his performances. Mm -hmm. It's like, really? I gotta drone out another seven paragraphs worth of in-universe exposition. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here I go. Again, look what you had to... <laughs> You you look what you had to deal with. Come on. Yeah, I don't I don't blame him. The fact that more people aren't phoning it in is actually impressive. Well, of course the main yeah. girls wouldn't phone it in because this is the entire their entire livelihood point. I I, yeah. I feel for Kara. I feel like I feel like she needs more to do and she's been shafted all these different volumes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was watching Justice League crossover, the Ruby Justice League crossover part two yesterday. I that, yeah. Oh, yeah, I, I saw a tweet. Yeah, I literally I'm at the point now where I'm considering just watching a Japanese dub because I cannot stand Ruby's voice anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh my you know, god! <laughs> I thought she was better in Justice League. I thought she was actually better than she has been. Uh, it's just her efforts. Like she's just like sitting there, like like squeaking <gasps> like a dog toy. <gasps> <laughs> next to <gasps> me yeah. and it's especially weird next to superman who's got like a, a really deep man voice oh and god like, i hated the voice next to him <laughs> the justice yeah. league in that film had the worst voices just trust me because it's so so terrible isa is obsessed with watching everything in japanese despite the fact that ruby is an american show he wanted us to watch one episode in japanese so we got to hear all of the voices they are as they are as stereotypical anime as you could possibly imagine you don't even have to imagine like 
what they what they would sound like in Japanese because you know Nora yeah. is the Genki girl, so she has the stereotypical Genki girl voice. Um, Weiss is the is, is the Hime, so she has the stereotypical Hime voice. And Ruby, because she is right. she is the the young one, she has the stereotypical child voice. And Oscar is just played by a woman. Because yeah. <laughs> 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 that's how they do it over there. Yeah, because uh, all all male children are voiced by women in in Jap in Japanese. So yeah, he's yeah, just voiced by a woman, and it's very time. it's very noticeable. Yeah. I and you know what I hate right. so much about it is. Weiss is voiced by the voice of Diana Cavendish from Little Witch Academia, who has she she definitely has the Hime energy, but it's not it's not stereotypical. It's actually a very well refined character, and it, it just pisses me off because I've heard really good performances from her. She's an incredible voice actress, and then she gets into Ruby, and it's suddenly stereotyped up the wazoo. It's like oh, mm -hmm. they, and that's just weird well, because like it completely I defeats characterization. For that. I yep. have to I wonder that too, but yeah. I know they got a lot of like meme actors, and I say that in the sense of like they got the voice of uh Ryuko 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 Matoi. I can't I don't know why I struggle with her name. Ryuko Matoi from um Kill a Kill to voice Nora, I believe. No, Yang. It was Yang. I believe the, they got the voice of Mako yeah. to I, voice Nora. And it's like Oh. It's like, oh, I see why, because one's a hothead, and she has the, <laughs> I'll get you kind of voice, that one. Uh, and then you got, you know, the one that's yeah. oh, super ganky and energetic, and and they try to but replicate those even though those Yang fields. isn't really... Yep. Yeah, which is mm. dumb. <laughs> I, I love it. Case of Yang, anyways. I love it when my characters have no character, so they have to have the stereotypical voices because that is the only thing that they have is a stereotype. I think Adam was also <laughs> voiced by someone who was an interestingly big name at the time. I'm trying to remember who it was. Holy um, shit, they overfilled this was bottle. It, uh, <laughs> was it... Uh, uh, I, need, I need to remember his name. I, I don't remember. Um, Hiroshi Kamiya? Maybe. If it's Hiroshi Kamiya, then I'm gonna, I'm gonna flip. <laughs> Because he's too good for that show. Oh yeah! By the way, the cat that that scene where they were in the house talking. No, I don't think there was any bumblebee there. Did anyone? No. Uh, no. <laughs> oh fuck no. Defenseless. I'm just a little hard of hearing and blind without my eyes that are in desperate need of repair. Okay, I'm starting to see your point. Oh god, that delivery, like. I could see that being funny, but you're you're not it. It's not paced very well. Mm -mm. Um, kind of sounds like a younger woman who is really struggling to do an old lady voice. And that's, <laughs> would, yeah. would you guess? What would you, that, that's actually what it is. <laughs> She's like what thirty years old, playing someone who's like 60, 70. Um, Chris Knight, I think you should play Disco Elysium if you like uh, deeply flawed characters. But one thing I want to touch on is that Adam reminds me of Daisy Fitzroy. From, from Gatsby. Is that is that what I'm? Is that the right Daisy Fitzroy that I'm thinking of? Like the book? I have no idea. <laughs> like the Leonardo DiCaprio like, movie. Like <laughs> <laughs> oh no, Bioshock. Okay. Oh. 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 <laughs> that's that's from. Okay, you're you are invoking Bioshock Infinite. Your cred credentials are revoked. I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, wow. Oh, um, my God. The, the writing in Bioshock Infinite pisses me the fuck off. Like, <laughs> Twy, you know how I get is with time travel. You know how yeah. I get with time Bioshock yeah. Infinite is oh. all about time travel. And look, I know you're much and more forgiving. With him. You're much yeah. more forgiving. I guarantee you it would piss you the fuck off. Just as much as it does me. Okay, it is that well, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know. I've never played it. But I will say... That Raymond treats time travel a a probably scientifically proven to be purely fictional thing, and he treats it as though it is real. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. don't! I have a, I have a good. I, I treat a... logical consistency. That's what I treat. <laughs> no, you don't, because you say <laughs> you don't like any other time travel except for the time travel that you enjoy. 
the time oh travel I enjoy God. is good. We're not opening the this can of worms. The time travel you enjoy is very limited, and you don't like any other type of time travel, despite the fact that it can also be logically consistent, but you don't like it because you don't like it, and therefore We're not opening this conversation. <laughs> I was making a point about Bioshock Infinite being shit, which no one argues with anymore. <laughs> Can we? Oh. Can I at least ask the question? The most important question about this: Is it at least better than Ruby? Everything. Oh fuck! That's actually a hard question. <laughs> actually, because the Bioshock Infinite <laughs> also <laughs> botches the whole race angle, and it actually has black people being discriminated against by white people and a slave class. Oh, and, I heard about that. Yeah, it's actually really awful because, like, uh. Okay, there's a great video on it by um, Matthew Matosis. Excellent video where he covers the ins and outs of oh, why it's so guy. bad. Yeah. Um, and he talks about how, like, in a, in a story that is so hard, focusing so hard on the racism aspect, there's not a single character that's willing to drop the hard R. And it's like, well, it's an M-rated <laughs> game, and these characters are already horribly abusing. Like, what you're showing is, like, some pretty awful shit. But no one says the hard R. Right. It seems kind of weird, especially considering the time period and the characters involved. It's like, that's strange. There's a lot more to it, admittedly, but it's it, it's a, a symptom of how they are afraid to actually say anything it about it, other than right. racism okay. bad, which is so very mm -hmm. basic. There's no depth mm -hmm. to it. Racism bad, okay? You know, racism <laughs> bad, okay? Um, anyway... No. Let's. Oh, it's not the fact that the racism angle, quote unquote, makes sense because since Colombia is a pseudo Confederate state, no, that that the racism being present is fine in terms of storytelling. What I'm saying yeah. is, it's not developed. There is a it's difference. Just, it, yeah, it's just not focused on. It's like Ruby. See, the like, concept is there. It... It's not executed well. If you're gonna tackle a subject like racism, it should make you uncomfortable because. That's the yeah. whole point. And it's, it's fine if stories make you uncomfortable. Certain stories go right. to great lengths to make you squirm and feel bad. And especially if you're doing a story that talks about racism bad, you should make the viewer as uncomfortable as possible to hammer home just what it is that makes the racism bad. And then yeah. you yeah, parallel it with the, the heroes doing the right thing. Shock value. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as long as it's not pure shock value, you should absolutely do that. Yeah. Grim since we uh, Weiss is standing between them again. They, they don't love each other anymore. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Blake, honey. Yes, the, the relic attracts Grim, but do you want to attract more Grim with your fucking negativity, you dumb bitch? <laughs> also, button up your fucking jacket. It's cold. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, can you even button up your jacket? Does it have a zipper or anything? No. Yeah, it looks like that jacket's too small to even... I'm not even going to say anything. I could say... I've said so much about their designs. I don't have it in me anymore. <laughs> I, 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 I love seeing all your little shorts. They're great. You know... Me too. God, if someone took that out of context. <laughs> okay. Okay, officer, this makes complete sense in context, okay? You know... Why, why would there be an scene, officer involved? This scene would look... would make a it, lot more the sense internet. if you the relic know. acted more like a horcrux. And, like, slowly yeah, making everyone angrier and more yeah. comfortable. Yeah, that'd be way better. Yeah. That's... Oh, uh, my also, God, do you think the they stole this? Looks at I kind of wonder. I wouldn't put it past them considering how much they stole in the past. Oh, I could totally see this because this this does. I'm getting flashbacks to the fucking tent scene. Yeah, it's 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 just the tesseract. Oh. Let's be real, <laughs> the tesseract <laughs> in, in the yeah. sphere. <laughs> uh, you mean? You have to no, the, that was the mind stone in the sphere. Oh, whatever. They're all the. Let's be. They're all the same. <laughs> I cannot be asked <laughs> to remember where they all Either came from. I guess anymore. that's fair. In Loki, they're confirmed to become just paperweights at a different. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking Pretty hate. Much. God, I hate Loki so he... much. <laughs> I heard so many bad things about it. I don't want to watch it. 
watch the but second what season. What we should talk about is what we should wa talk about is how so much in love Yang and Blake are with each other right now. <laughs> being, angry at this, being angry at this old man in a child's They're body. They're bonding over their mutual hatred. The relic is yeah. Yeah. More toxicity to feel their romance. Even this is Blake such a weird moment. More like sympathetic to it us, Penny. <laughs> like this is that that one moment where Yang opens her mouth as if she's going to say something, but then Blake interrupts her. That is the only time in the history of the whole fucking show that a character interrupts another character. It's <laughs> so weird. <laughs> yeah. Adam Zekiel, uh, Zilk. Zil Zil Zilke, I still cannot pronounce that fucking name. Zilk. Zilk. He 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 pronounced it for you like a couple of streams ago. He did, and I completely forgot it. <laughs> we already established yeah, it. We... it doesn't remember anything. <laughs> <laughs> I, I definitely I so with names. Names are even worse. Um, I know, but I gotta keep reminding him. Uh, maybe someday it'll sink in. The only parts of the big awesome Adam, backstory type flashback in chat. that were important were the silver eyes. From the God of Light in Salem can't be killed thing. Nothing else in regard uh, is regard is regarded in the story. I disagree with that because Ozpin not being not wanting to hurt Salem, like his relationship with Salem is kind of pretty fucking important. Like it can't he can't get around that that the guy that's been raising them up to be huntsmen that has been leading them on this journey the entire time has been actively hiding one of his core motivations from them is his most how, core motivation like that's... how much are you mixing this up with fixing ruby though um i mean <laughs> I, you're not wrong <laughs> no yeah i was gonna say like like i i'm trying to i'm trying to parse it in my mind but i think even still what we get in the actual core show is still important even if it's poorly told um, i actually rewatched yeah. episode three earlier today because i was editing a video together and i realized my footage for volume six episode three was complete garbage and there was no audio so i had to go back and i recaptured all my audio for it and as i was watching it i was like this is bad <laughs> this whole episode is <laughs> actually way worse than i remembered <laughs> mm. Dude, I, I know a guy who made an entire like diatribe about why that um that entire episode is awful. Mm. His name is Fat Men Falling. <laughs> oh, and I remember. Well, yeah, I also remember Unicorn Wars video, which was very excellent. Yeah, I I remember we had a whole civil war because I thought it was all right at the time. God, it has not aged well at all. It like no. I, it, it aged no, so but... it's like it's like they're like no we can't play with bringing back the dead so w in order to prove that we're gonna make sure you never die and then later we're just gonna bring back the dead because fuck it <laughs> yep they're like we're gonna was... leave humanity but then oh no humanity's gonna be in trouble now that we've left so you need to do this relic thing it's like you made all these decisions <laughs> adam you didn't need to put a five dollar yes. just to pronounce it again Zilky, Zilky. Okay, I will, I will <laughs> endeavor to remember that. Like it's like Silky. His name is very Silky. Oh God, you're right. <laughs> oh my I know God, that was you killing moment. a fly. It sounded like okay. you hyper slapped yourself on the forehead <laughs> to like remember. <laughs> <laughs> Shove the name into your memory. <laughs> also, I'm pretty sure Blake and Yang both had the same thought that they want to bang Jin in this scene. Everyone had that thought in this scene. Maria had that thought in this scene. It's a pleasure to see you again. Oh my, no, in stop. Fact, don't in put fact, that in my In fact, head. Maria is it. the horniest one of them all. <laughs> no. The Jin, the Jins of Magi are hotter. I mean, Yes. <laughs> they actually have nipples for one. <laughs> they, they... Remember when I said that I'm pretty sure it it looks like they just took the concept oh, of is... Paimon. Yeah, they just ripped Paimon straight out of Magi. Yeah. <laughs> Jin looks like, you know when you go to like a bar and they put like dry ice on a fancy drink, but you can't really drink it because the dry ice is like toxic? Jin Don't looks like that. <laughs> Oh, why did you wince? Blake. Okay, first person she calls to is Blake. Ruby. Uh. Ruby? Yes. 
I I love the oh, house. Oh, they're trying to call thing. for each other, guys. What? Oh. See, I that's love how the, the Maki Wiki that the... has that's uh. The... Sorry, I'm sorry. Sorry. I'll let you talk. I was gonna say that's the kind of thing that made the wasps really annoying, but also that's the kind of thing that Rooster Teeth is totally leaning into. Like, yeah, they called out each other's Absolutely. names, and on surface value, it shouldn't be a problem. But Rooster Teeth are making it a problem by leaning into it more. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is in why fairness. Is Maggie really the first to introduce Blue Jeans? Their... No, you understand, periodic Pete. We're talking about the style of Blue Jean <laughs> because there's a difference, a mass difference between. Disney's genie, uh, and Paimon. All right. Yeah. There, there's a few teeny tiny differences depending on how they interpret the the source material of the traditional jinn from uh, Middle Eastern uh, literature and lore. Like slight, oh, wait, slight differences. Very slight. Is her name? Her name is her Paimon. name is Paimon. Yes. Yeah. I thought you were talking about a Digimon. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> No, all of the all of the genies in Magi are named after demons in uh, Judeo Christian mythology. Oh, I was like, I thought we were talking about a different thing. And then you mentioned a Digimon. I got to pay attention. Is it Judeo Christian <laughs> or, or <laughs> is it Judeo Christian or blanket Abrahamic? Uh, sorry, Abrahamic. Okay, but, I, yeah. I was curious. Um, because <laughs> uh, yeah, they're um like it's all based off of the the Book of Solomon. Uh, well, Maggie Solomon, is really cool. Maggie's really Solomon cool. is a character in in the show. He's kind of fucking important. <laughs> he, he's a very important character. <laughs> um, show is, is isn't Shahrazad also in it? Isn't she? Yeah, Shahrazad. She's yeah. she's the, the little important. blonde girl who's uh, over a hundred years old, and she is a very old lady. Right, right. She she is uh, Maggie's answer to the hundred year old lady. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Well, it's established that that isn't her actual body. Yeah. It is a vessel because she's too old to do anything. You can't. For so much you hadn't told us. How could you think that was okay? You know what's an excuse they could have to have Blake and Yang standing next to each other more? Just have them stand in ruby order. Because I remember in, like, volume t one's commentary, oh, yeah. the the ruby girls were doing their commentary, and they were like, it's annoying when they don't, when they almost stand in ruby order, but they don't. And I'm like, yeah, so I expected them to be in order more. But that would naturally put Blake and Yang next to each other, too. You know, I'll yeah. say, I yeah. like this cliffside. Like, um, I, I like this little forested area, like, the spaced out trees. I know it's not very realistic, and it's very flat, but I don't know. I, I have a soft spot for snowy, for snowy white landscapes. So I, I get a nice when I, when I look at these scenes, I get a little bit of oh that's nice. I get a little bit of that, a little cozy. Raymond is saying the background is more interesting than what's going on in the scene. The, the eye is the biggest of cozy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I've ran, I've ranted enough on my own about this scene in general. I'm just tired of it. I'm tired. I'm so I... tired. I feel so bad for Ozpin, honestly. He's gone. How uh, dare you yes. get a divorce? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> honestly. How dare you How get one? You get... Literally the messiest divorce of all time. <laughs> also, why yes. didn't you tell us? Oh we lived in the, like an apartment together in Mistral for a whole volume. Why didn't you ask? <laughs> yeah, like, why did none of them ask? Like, who is it exactly we're fighting? Like... <laughs> You never really talk about the guy. We never really discuss it, but it seems like yeah. you know. It's because you dumbasses never asked any questions. You literally had the options to ask questions, and you chose not to. Uh, Izanagi, let's try this again, late to the VA thing. But yeah, why all the big name seiyus, and for what? A bad show with overly star voices, even for anime. Yeah, oh, that's, was... that's the point. The star power. It's to attract mm -hmm. people in. Like, people forget that... Voice actors are celebrities now, more so mm -hmm. than ever. Um, in fact, it's becoming a bit of a problem oh, yeah. in the voice acting industry. I know that voice actors are now getting chosen for their physical appearances because they're expected to do social media work. 
They're supposed to be very mm-hmm. personable and show up at, at conventions and uh, push stuff. So now not only one of the key strengths of being a voice actor was you didn't have, you could have a face for radio and still be very popular and, and good. I mean, look, I understand that in yeah. some ways, Vic Mignogna can be an attractive guy, but he also looks like he packed like 17 packs a day and he has sunken in eyes that have seen the horrors <laughs> of the beyond. So, I mean, like, but now what you're looking for is a lot of conventionally attractive people, which is starting. Whoa. Yeah, That's the like real reason we, why they started the smear or, campaign uh, against him. Pause. Did anyone did anyone just hear a massive oh ping God. noise? No. No. What the hell was no. that? No. I just, the it's demons. A, no, the, <laughs> the darkness. I just, I just heard like it sounded like a metal bar being hit against a solid glass like like cup or something like that. I wouldn't. Break. Oh, I've heard things like that before during the streams. It's yeah. probably just one of our connections going goofy. That's Usually the, it was Kaiser. Terrified, probably. <laughs> Remember, hey, remember the one that yeah, like this first time. or second stream? A- everyone else heard it too. A- everyone else heard it too. Okay, so it was something that I heard. Um, uh, metal like pipe. my connection keeps kind of dipping in and out, so maybe it's my B. <laughs> Uno- Unova actually got it right. It's like metal pipe sound. It's like it was like that kind of like like yeah. gain <laughs> level. It's the I, I was <laughs> I was surprised for a second because that was when I set down my bottle of water on my on my laptop but that was like an arm's length away from me so i was like he couldn't have heard that and then he said that it was me- um, me- metallic i was like no i can't your laptop is the world's biggest like cup coaster <laughs> <laughs> yes he's an augie i mean <laughs> i meant the stereotypical uh but yeah so much star power to try and get people to watch yes um it's like um vo- with volume nine right, one yeah. thing i consistently saw was Story was weird, uh, this, that, or the other thing, but loved Robbie Damon, <laughs> you know? Yeah, everyone loved <laughs> yeah. the voice acting. Everyone, mm. like, like, and to be fair, a lot of the guest voice actors were good. They, were, they weren't they were giving shit to work with, but they managed yeah. to work. Um, mm-hmm. So, but it is more and more that, it, that a lot of voice actors are expected to be, uh, basically, they're weeding out one of the strengths of voice acting as a profession, and I'm worried about it because if you, yeah. some people are really yeah. good at voice acting and they're just not going to get roles. But aren't because they're exactly, not as you know, pop star looking. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, let's be honest. Chris Sabat is not a looker guys. But what? Wait. Incorrect. Wait, <laughs> wait, am I getting He's mixed not. up? Yeah. I- I'm making sure I'm, I'm, cause I'm thinking, wait, who am I thinking of? Chris okay. Sabat is, is the voice of Chris Sabat. Okay, he he's okay. I'm thinking of yeah, like there was a guy that does the. Did, did he also do the next time on Dragon Ball Z? I don't think he did. He might have something. Not no, not my Dragon Ball that's, Z. Um, that's that's somebody. That's somebody I just know else. that there's know a lot of people that aren't that's conventionally attractive. That like they're not going to. It's going to now be more difficult unless you were oh, grandfathered in. Fair. A lot of people got grandfathered in now and there's yeah. their mainstays. I was about to say there are yeah. a lot of like just actually old people in there like Kirk Thornton or Steve Bloom or Michael McConaughey. Like those yep. people are, are in it. They're yep. in it forever. They're fine. Who, but like, who does he voice? Newer people coming in. Who? Uh, who does he who, voice in Dragon Ball Z? Which one? Sabat. Chris Sabat. Uh, Vegeta. Yeah, I, I thought so. Hashtag not my Vegeta. And Piccolo. And Piccolo. I, I am offended. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up on the Superior Ocean dub. Thank you very much. Mm-mm. It, no. Uh, oh, no. Team no, Jack we, some we, more. Okay. We have, we you have sound, Scott you McNeil sound like on someone side. He's so much better. Kai. You haven't seen... That sounds like someone who hasn't seen Kai. That's all I gotta say. No, no, they 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 sound fucking weird to me. They they do not sound like how I expect these characters to sound. <laughs> okay, that's another that's another stream for another time. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, the voice actors for the Funimation dub were chosen because they sounded as close as they could to the original Ocean dub. So there. It'll be dark before we know it, and every one of you is spewing negativity. Yeah, cr- yeah, Twilight, stop spewing all that hate. <laughs> <laughs> they always say 
Negative emotions attract Grimm, but it only happens like four times in the whole series. Yeah, it's too vague. <laughs> mm -hmm. I hate it. I hate it so much. And I'll be damned if I've lived this long just to die out here in the cold. I mean, you could have just died during the train crash. That's a cool way to go out. <laughs> yeah. Okay, no, that not that train crash, but also, a train crash. Yeah. Remarkably, the they Raymond's made a lame train looking crashed. train crash. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Leon critiques, you're right. The best Dragon Ball Z dub is Dragon Ball Z of Rich. Also, here, <laughs> here, here's my, my uh, penance for including a white rose scene. Congratulations, you got a rose garden scene now, too. Yay! Yeah. Fucking hate it. No. Hate it. <laughs> I wonder Her why. and I stopped Sora the Civil War and bond over Rose Garden. <laughs> Sora Hart. I always wonder why Osborne restored. never asked how to seal away Salem forever. Like, I, I wonder that too. It doesn't look like this is gonna let up. Yeah. Just yeah, yeah they just don't have to ask plans. So many different oh, questions. Wait. Also, it doesn't look like this is gonna let up. That is a very gentle snowfall. It's not like you're in a fucking <laughs> blizzard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. Uh, they act like they don't really have weather. Good. Just... Do you have nothing better to do than to yeah, is Why are they all separated really from Just each other? that good in terms of staying warm. Oh my god, no. Oh my god. Tetherex, no. I forgot how this is they just this is how they discover Brunswick. They hear it. <laughs> they fucking hear it. Oh, is that what that noise was? Yeah. I thought my ears needed to pop. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, at least one good thing. Oh my god. I saw I saw Dedrex newest first so picture for the stream. Oh, oh I haven't no. seen it yet. <laughs> I'm gonna look at it now. It's it's my shorts. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! <laughs> oh god, I'm scared. Oh god, we have three tag. Oh. oh, that's not a good sign. Oh, okay. what? We have three. Right. What? What happened? I, I have three pings. Uh oh. <laughs> I like how they're like denim too. They're <laughs> <laughs> sparkly. Those apple bottom jeans. <laughs> All right. All right. We've been we've been waiting for you, Darren. Rex to bring out a banger and you brought a good He's one been waiting for you. I expect nothing of you, Dedorex. Please continue at your own pace. Oh my god. I, I honestly expected hey, I that you would have... I expected uh, him to make something at some point. I, I honestly expected that he would have done something based off of our very early conversation. Same. Same. <laughs> I, I would have expected that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Uh, maybe he came in late. Maybe. Yeah, possibly. Adam's got another super chat. It says, Ooh. White Rose dies, Phoenix. The age of Rose Garden looms over the horizon. Accept it. <laughs> <laughs> Adam Zelke? <laughs> I, I, I'm, not, I'm not hearting that, that super chat. I've hearted every super chat up until this point. I'm not hearting that one. I'm sorry. You're the first. <laughs> Blisk for fun. 499 pounds any of you guys play bloodborne because of the writers did they took uh none of the cool stuff and put it on the show I was oh hoping my god volume nine took advice um i have not also thanks for the first Dude, super my chat best ever. friend but i was gonna say i have not yeah, played i have really not played bloodborne it. myself it's another thing that i've watched playthroughs of because i don't have a ps4 so i can't play it Sorry. um I wish it came to PC right. so much because it's really freaking cool. The soundtrack is amazing. I wrote Black <laughs> Black Book. If you guys remember that series that I haven't completed, I wrote the <laughs> entire ser the entire series of that to the Bloodborne soundtrack. Um, it's such a good that the lore is also so good. my best friend in Discord, Lone Crit, who is a big Soulsborne fa fan, has been bullying me for me to get Bloodborne for like two years now. And I had to settle for, okay, what if I just get, um, 
a totally legal means of planning de demon souls. And he was all like, okay, that's fine for now. <laughs> <laughs> We we automatically associate with Raymond, so therefore we are Dust Rose. Just just like Demon Ray Souls uh, is a good game, by the way. Just like my can is King of the Daikaris, Raymond is King of the Rudes. <laughs> <laughs> also, that was Blake and Ruby talking for the first time since Volume One. People. Holy shit! Bug. Woo. Tiny ladybug. <laughs> and it wasn't well, anything substantial. That scene's over. Yep. Uh, monochrome! monochrome. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> Bumblebee's monochrome. Oh, they're sitting next to each other. Oh, no. Yep. Oh, yeah. Keep in mind, they haven't mind. said a, like, direct line to each other. Since Blake had her moment trying to grab Yang's bag on the train. Yeah. Yeah. So like over in like three, almost two episodes at this point, they haven't talked to each other. Mm -hmm. We don't have a choice. Almost two episodes, I I should say. Oh, because they had a Yako Ko uh, after the Kawasumi crab. voice winter in the Japanese dub, basically Saber from Fate voicing. The Saber knockoff. That, oh, that wow. Is, yeah. <laughs> okay. Bloodborne that 2 is already sense. out. It's called Lies of P. If this place wasn't I, that's not one to one, man. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard so much about Lies of P. I've seen zero gameplay from it. I have no idea what it looks like. <laughs> it is. If you've seen anything from a Dark Souls game, it is very yeah, similar. Um, not one to one, Ryan. but. It, yeah, I've seen it. Ryan, I I will never not mention my can when I have the opportunity to mention my. I <laughs> I love talking about ha all that insanity. It's so fun. Has he made anything new recently? What's my can? Uh, my can is a rabid, really, Digimon yeah, rabid boy who very much like obsesses over one particular oh. ship i think we've, we've mentioned him for sure on this we we have oh. mentioned him but he he mostly is known for his rabid digimon shipping his rabid teen titans shipping and his rabid hatred oh. for <laughs> pony <laughs> oh, because damn. he he said that the the themes of my little pony which is friendship gave him ptsd because friendship is Real, and he needs to teach the ponies that lesson. He, you, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> this is a man that forwent Wrong. this man forwent Wrong. personal relationships, period. Yes. Because yes. he couldn't land a girlfriend. Oh. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, I was about to say who hurt him, and you answered that question. Never like, like, mind. Moving like, on. I want you to understand. He is the like he he excels the level of incel. He has gone uh -huh. from incel to volcel. Like he, he, he he's, he's jumped. Oh my god. Yeah. Um uh, so this is a Blake and Yang save by uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Finally out of like so yeah. before this, was there any Blake and Yang interaction that stood out? Any development that we saw other than nope. them being in the Blake? rough proximity with each other? Blake perked up and she was like, Me and Yang can go do something. So it seems like they're trying to establish Blake as this hyper obsessive yeah. I want to be Person. next to my crush all times. <laughs> but it's weird because Blake has never been like this before. <laughs> right. Which to an extent I can understand cells. why. That's not necessarily true, but that's a very deep discussion and we don't have the time for that. <laughs> I mean, the whole the whole yes. concept of an, an incel is that they are involuntary celibates and vol cells are voluntary. Yeah, it's it's... It's, it's a right. It, well, that's he, the my can is a special because he's an incel who the, gave the, up uh, on who gave up on it, so he decided to become a vol, but he still has the incel tendency. Oh, uh, also metal claw. But how good are his fix? His fix are either boring <laughs> or fucking insane. God. Like, yeah. like oh, okay, metal claw. I'm going to do you a disservice. I want you to look up a fanfic called Cyborg Davis. <laughs> look it up. Read oh, it. You don't, I mean, you should probably know things about Digimon. Don't bother about it. It's not going to matter. 
No. Um, I, I, I really am waiting for when Raymond finally gets around to doing the recording uh, for Cyborg Davis because he went on like a 10 minute rant. <laughs> I, yeah, I'll he got do, so I mad. I stepped into one of the chap. I think I stepped into one of the chapters during Bad Fan Fiction Night, and I was like, "What?" The oh, this was like fuck? two years ago by this point because yeah. it just takes Raymond that long to get through shit. Yeah, I, I might try and find a secondary yeah, editor to work there. on that stuff because that might just be. If, if I, I've been seriously considering getting a secondary editor to do side stuff like that, but I just don't know well, where to start looking for that. I've been volunteering. I'm right here. You <laughs> have so much on your plate already. I am not weighing you down with more of this what, stuff. But I like editing. <laughs> <laughs> I really like yeah. it. I, I, I find those people crazy. Yeah, editing's fun. E editing is the is the the uh. The stuff that I must do to get things done. <laughs> that is how I look at it. I, I, have, I, I have some fun with two of, I fixed two of your audios for free, and then you didn't do anything with them when I, I sent know, them back to you. I know. Wow. I, you, I haven't <laughs> had time. Wow. And then you're like, well, wow. you didn't do anything else. It's like, well. We brought this up on stream pile. back at the beginning of all this. We don't need to reiterate it. <laughs> I somehow remember that conversation. <laughs> I remember it when it's negative stimuli. Maybe that's why my brain is cracked. I remember negative stimuli. I don't remember positive stimuli anymore. I'm I'm broken. I'm traumatized into memory paralysis. If um, you if you if you pay me gosh. to do the actual editing for everything, then I will do it. The the uh, video and all. M3D random, but any uh link. Click enjoyers present. Uh, yeah, link click enjoyers, please. Uh, I heard please send a, a telegram to M3D. I'm, I'm sure they'll <laughs> respond. And Mr. Spiders 236. Yeah, I heard of that show, but I haven't seen it yet. If you guys have uh, talked about it already, haven't already talked about it, what was the thing that got you guys into Ruby to start with? Um, That's an interesting question. I got into Ruby from the trailers. Um, I was watching Red vs. Blue, and I remember the mm -hmm. red trailer. The red trailer coming out either with season 9 or 10 of Red vs. Blue. I can't remember which. But I remember seeing it and being like immediately just captivated by it and then the white trailer. And then from that, it was just history. I was so e eager to see it. Mm -hmm. I was, I, I the red trailer, that. same. Like, I saw it, and it, like, changed my brain chemistry. Just, I had never thought about action this way before. The music was everything. And it just, I was so already in love with the idea of the show. And then as the more trailers came out, and they fleshed out, like, the technology of the world, I was more entranced, and it just blew me away. I so in my got case, forced is... into it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll I'll talk after Kaiser. Kaiser can go. Okay. I was I was just going to say in my case it's a little more interesting cuz I saw the the first four trailers when they came out as well, but I didn't watch the actual show. I just wasn't interested in it at the time, uh mostly cuz I was so busy trying to catch up on so many anime that I've been just then getting into because that's when i was really getting into the medium and i was like ah this is internet shit i'll come back to it and then fast forward this is like months after volume three ended everyone was losing their minds and somewhere along the way i found fat man's video on volume three and that shit changed my brain chemistry but that <laughs> but wait okay after watching this video, I was like, all right, this seems bad, but let me actually watch the show for myself. And I think this was around the time when volume four was coming out. So I went back, watched the first three volumes, watched his three videos, and I was like, okay, yeah, my this this shit is this shit ain't it, Chief. And the rest is history. What I like though about it is <laughs> it's you can blame bad. Fat Man for keeping me around. It's bad, yeah. but it's special. In how bad and what, what <laughs> yes. kind of bad it is. It's fascinating yes. I want with to, how bad it is. Like I said in my very first video, <clears throat> I want to hold a freaking class just to say, just to show people what to not freaking do, if anything. Yeah. So, like I said, I was forced into watching Ruby. I had a friend who I'm not friends with anymore for, for other reasons, but I, I say that it's partially because of Ruby. For the funsies. 
he <laughs> was like, I need to show you this show that I'm re- back when volume two had first come out. So I said, sure. And I, I watched it with him and I just hated every single second of it. I, because I was, I was going through my first term of animation at the time. So like, and I, I stopped doing my homework in order to watch this with him. So of course I'm an analytical and I'm just like, why, why the fuck does this look so bad? And then at the end of every single episode, made in Poser, and I'm like, Poser? What are you, Poser? Uh-huh. <laughs> what? Twy, you are, you are, you are clipping, like, you, you no are one's peaking, fucking business. You are peaking, you are peaking so hard, you, you turned into Doug Walker. Oh no. Oh no. No, no, no. Dimension. How how dare you? How dare you who quaker to Doug Walker? I'm sorry. I got I got way too i I'm sorry. We we can't hear her. That's a step above Dog Walker at minimum. I mean, it sounded like you ascended. Okay, like you were just like leaving this place. Yeah, you were being dragged out of your seat into the sky. <laughs> It's like you're Broly. You turned into Broly. You got so angry that you got your power level just grew. <laughs> I'm sorry. Poser. <laughs> I, was talking, I was raging about Poser. Oh. <laughs> I'm like, what do you mean, Poser? What do you mean you made this in a program that has nothing to do with animation? That's like cooking your bacon and eggs on a playstation 3 like yes technically do it but that doesn't judge okay what we need you know what we need what we need is like an edit of like you you ever heard heard of a show called dan versus but at the beginning every episode it's all about this guy who is just angry at shit and he gets angry at a specific thing or wants revenge at a specific thing each episode. And he always screams into the sky and says the name of the thing. We <laughs> need an edit of that with freaking Twilight's profile pic over Dan's face and just bit her all like, Pose! <laughs> <laughs> and then the title card of the episode is just Dan Twilight versus Poser. <laughs> oh. But yeah, that's that's our tragic origin stories right there. Um, well, my 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 tragic origin story is that I my friend wanted me to watch volume two, and I'm like, I can't, do it. I can't. It's so bad. Like everything about it is bad. The story is bad. The animation is bad. The characters are bad. I hate everything about this. And he's just like, okay, but let me show you the let me show you the prom episode because it's my favorite episode, and I watch it, and I'm like, I I still hate it. Why, why the prom episode? Like, I love me a prom episode. But that's not the episode you show someone to convince them to watch a show. Yeah, exactly. you show them the red trailer. Like, if you're going to get someone yeah, in the room, yeah. you show them that. Right, it's the perfect show trap. Them, because it's just like them, anime openings, when they look so much better than the actual show. Yeah. Show them Sun versus Torchwick, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. <coughs> sorry. Oh my gosh! Mm, sorry. Don't die. I'm dying. I am dying over here. I just um, told you not to do that. <laughs> yeah, you're breaking Our, your limits. Adam Zelke, your backstories aren't even tragic enough. There isn't even a swing. No. Um. No. Hank, I'm getting there. Okay. Um. So years later, I go. I go into a friends group. Um. Uh, I met a role player, and then he yoinked me into his friends group. And then I was like, oh, no, they all like Ruby. And my this this one person is like, I also dislike Ruby. Watch it, though, so that I have somebody to complain about it with five minutes a day. And so I, I begrudgingly watch it. <laughs> and I'm like, I, I still hate this so much. And then <laughs> I was like, I feel so alone in the world. Why? Why is it <laughs> that I feel like I'm the only one? That that sees this show as bad. I have to look for somebody else that feels the same way I do, and that's how I found. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like yes, a ray of Your sunshine. Your friend is all like, I need to, I need, to, I need, I just don't want. I'm not crazy. I need to. I need. <laughs> yeah, to, I'm I, not I crazy. Say, that was like when I watched Ruby initially. 
Um, I thought it was fine, but I knew that there were things that were wrong. I just couldn't put them to words. Fat Man is really right. what started me down the path of really deep critical deconstruction and trying to understand exactly what went wrong in these stories. And Fat like, Man Black Pill. Uh -huh. Yeah, F Fat but, Man. Fat, Fat Man, Man is, is like the, the catalyst for all four of us thinking about <laughs> Ruby more yeah, critically. Really, he really is. <laughs> no. he, he is this... <laughs> Well, you know, more that he's a he is a, a, a for 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 yeah for Twilight he's more of the justification like like oh I yes. found someone who agrees with me I'm not right. just crazy <laughs> um, uh, yeah. but no I I knew that there were things that weren't great but when he actually broke it down I'm like oh my god this thing is just a mess and that's where like <laughs> yeah. I started following him yeah. I got really excited for his volume two stuff and then volume three oh, came out yeah. and we actually had like we we. When I reached out to him, they go over some scripts. I was like, hey, you want to do a reaction to that final episode of Volume 3? It's like, yeah, sure. And that's how we wound up where we are today. So, <laughs> Like, I, I mean, I had always been rather critical of the shows that I watch. It started, I'm pretty sure that it both started with the two uh, banes of my existence, Digimon Adventure 02 and Unicorn the Balanor. Uh, both both <laughs> properties that I absolutely love, but at the same time, I just there was something niggling in the back of my mind. It's like something is wrong here, and it, and because I was a child, I couldn't put it into words until I became older, and then I was like, yeah, it's just bad writing. Um, and when you look at the when you look at the directors, the massive directors list for O2, you finally see why there were too many cooks <laughs> in the kitchen, and they were all playing chubby bunny with plot points. Um, what an analogy! <laughs> yeah. Chubby bunny? I have never heard that term a lot before in my life. You've never heard of chubby bunny? That it's what? a game where you stuff as many marshmallows into your mouth, and oh you the yeah, marshmallow no. in your mouth, you say chubby bunny. I, uh, I think I've heard a different variation, but I can't remember what it is. I just I've never played it, so I never it didn't stick in my brain. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's Fat but Man yeah, is no, the Morpheus. I, no, he's he's the Fat Man is the unintentional uh, freaking uh, Samuel L. Jackson. He's Nick the, Fury, the, the Nick Fury. Yeah, yeah exactly. He is a Nick Fury of, of the Ruby, Ruby critics. Yeah. Uh, he gets yeah. the Avengers together. He, now he brought us together. Just being clear, yeah. the scenes between them yelling for each other in the white void to now other than them standing next to each other was there really anything of note oh and of course uh her being excited to be like oh me and yang can do something no nothing no god yeah. no literally okay. nothing yeah, let's get on with oh the did scene, you see then. the new art oh there's more art mm -hmm. yeah it's you <laughs> oh god oh yeah <laughs> It's weird. This is the halfway point of volume six. No art for you. <laughs> no, it's, it's not even close. It's not is even it not? close to vol the halfway point. No, yeah, no, we're, we're not even this, like episode because we're we're four, in. I think because you gotta remember this is compiled with volumes four and five. Yeah, I was just trying to remember how many episodes yeah. are in volume six. Yeah. Also, Dederex, you've missed a golden opportunity 13. to put me in an organization jacket. Just putting that out there. <laughs> No heart for you. <laughs> or I guess uh, I also, uh, Ryan, oh, I, I don't watch good. a bridge series. I'm sorry. Yeah, I I might weirdly enough put sort of online abridged on our list because I genuinely think that's really good. But I don't. I, it's it's really kind of a weird good. ad. Um. Anyway. Also, Ruby. Uh, Ruby Volume Six has thirteen episodes. Okay. I can never remember any. I, I'm so bad with numbers. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I had to check because I have Maybe the fucking episodes downloaded. Yeah. Maybe. Hey, are you okay? Yeah. I mean, no. But I don't know. I'm just tired. Yeah. I, I, you know, that's a decent interaction hey, right there. I found something. Mm -hmm. It's crazy it yeah. takes this long for them to get to this point, though. Yeah. Yeah. And also, that whole thing on the train earlier just feels so weird. Oh like my god. She was like, we're fine. And now it's like, no, obviously we're not fine. <laughs> oh, did can I we, include can we... her seeing Adam? Right. Yeah, you did. Okay. 
we didn't can we about can we talk about how Blake like casually walks but in a slightly faster pace to show that she's like in a panic? <laughs> <laughs> the um what I get is like Blake does that moment of ah oh, and it's like all of a sudden Blake is up in arms, even though she's not all that hurried about it. It's like I I I would not think that we're in immediate danger of anything necessarily like if we haven't heard it or seen anything Blake uh, in fact if Yang was acting with this level of surprise I would be like oh maybe there's something dangerous that we hasn't seen us yet I should not say anything and just investigate I don't know it just seems like a weird overreaction but it's not the worst mm. a lot of Blake's interactions with Yang feel overdone especially in this volume I still get flashes from It's them. weird. It kind of ruins oh, her yeah. character. <laughs> it makes yeah. her so, seem which is like, clingy and obsessive, which is bad because those are traits that which... Adam had. <laughs> mm -hmm. I no, told granted, you. Granted, I can understand Toxic. how partially that's kind of the point, but if they had addressed it, yeah. which they barely do, I, which I, we'll get to that when we I, get further in the scene. I do like that Blake is, oh, sorry, Yang is actually telling blake like yeah i i see things i'm i sometimes go back to that night it's like that she's being honest with her feelings this is a healthy development here mm -hmm. Do you think yang in here? this yeah. yang's half is great it's just writing wise i'm confused yeah. with blake i'm confused by the choices these made still get flashes from that night well do you think really still that out there? confused you think adam it? is still out there i don't know Maybe they Anyone? overplayed it a little, but... Back to the White Fang, there would have been serious consequences. But he never really liked people telling him what to do. That's not really reassuring. Mm -hmm. um, Adam Zelke, right. honestly, talking about Ruby is sometimes awkward for me, considering one of the big Christmas points is a character with my name. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> I guess I have a little bit easier. People only mistake me for Roman. That 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 surprisingly actually happens. Mostly with coffee, honestly. Yes, I am naming names. In my case, it... God, if yeah, I have to be compared to a Ruby name, character, I'd my die. My first name is not like would I? I would know. I would not live. Kaiser, your first name anymore. is Young. <laughs> 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 buddy, buddy, Raymond. I love anyway. you, man. But no. Adam's no. Strong, but his real power also, the, the trick to not be associated with a Ruby character is to have more dimension. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and there's only one of us here that's a stick figure. <laughs> <laughs> one of my bodies <laughs> this is one of my spares okay he used to get in my head make me feel small but now i see he just wanted to pull me down to his size uh you, you know hey, i'm calling bullshit i'm not because we never saw it and if we ever see him again i promise i'll be there you can say literally anything about somebody who isn't you. there and we're, we're we're good we're good we're good and then i'll protect you what what forget it let's just great scene it. honestly yeah. i do love yeah. all of that i perfect <laughs> this scene, I, I think it's yeah legitimately good and i this scene is good and what I like is like Yang is still flawed. Like she she's she's opening up. Good, good, good. Blake is trying to reassure her, though she's not doing the greatest of jobs. She's like being like reassuring and being like, look, we'll take care of this together. Good, good, good. And then I'll protect you. That pisses off Yang. <laughs> Yang, however, is not in the mindset to be like, no, that's that's not what I'm asking for here. That's no, that 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 is not kosher not not on the level um it's it, it is a far cry from the yang who was like snapping at yeah. ruby and weiss like don't tell me to calm down like this yang she's not blowing up she's not yelling her eyes aren't going red she just coldly but walks away yeah, and that speaks to, yeah, she, way more volumes <laughs> and, and she's still not willing to to explain yeah. herself this 
even though this is a scene that ends negatively, I think is a healthy development in their relationship. We'll get it's just to too it. bad that it comes out of nowhere. Yeah, in a way. It, yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know if I, I, I don't know I if I agree with that. Say- I, I, well, I don't agree with you not agreeing with me. <laughs> <laughs> I, it, it came, okay. The, um, okay. What do you, all right. What, what I think is, what do you think is like artificial? Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Go I was going to, the only artificial element I would see in this is Yang having her trauma moment there, but we've already established that it's not unreasonable for people with PTSD to have that. And because that triggered, it's where this whole conversation spun from. It was them talking about her having these moments, these flashes, this trauma. It's them talking about these things that they went through and her trying to be like, look, I have these things. I still get them. And I'm still worried about all these things. I still have these doubts in my mind. Like, that's where the whole conversation spins from. I don't see anything unnatural yeah. about that the other only, than the random the... nature of the flashes, which we can't really predict. It's... It's the fact the that Yang thing, is other... not a, a consistent character that I mostly have a problem. Like I said, it mm. comes out of nowhere. She okay. was. So you're saying she... so you're saying she wasn't as mad at her back in the train scene. Yeah, like mm-hmm. there, yeah. she okay, she was sense. very wild and and explosive with her anger, um, and she still is, except for when it comes to Blake for unknown reasons. And you could chalk that up to, well, it's, she's making a special exception because she's You don't see that. And so it just comes off more as inconsistency right. with her character than anything specific that's to fair. Blake's character and her feelings. That's that that's right. a, that's a fair. But as far as like the flaw, anything like um, what was it con- seriously contrived in this scene alone, just isolated from everything else, it's pretty much fine yeah the, the scene in isolation is good but the problem is, is that it's not in isolation it's- yeah mm-hmm. well yeah that's that's <laughs> yeah. where i was like that is what i had meant from the start was like in, in mm-hmm. isolation the scene is incredibly good like for ruby especially this is really good Fair but enough. when you yeah. start adding things like, to it especially like later especially yeah. later when it's like oh, oh we got yeah. like I mean, let's just pull the bandaid off now. There's no resolution to this this little conflict that happens. Like, it's a healthy no. moment, but it's no, only it's healthy not. if there's actual follow up and growth from it. And yep. uh, new newsflash: we're yeah. not going to get that. We're not going to get that Sorry. at all. I'm gonna I'm gonna put my <laughs> microphone further away from my mouth so that hopefully I don't. Touch. I'm sorry. <laughs> Carry everyone. Oh, I never caught that mission accomplished line. I bet she... Barbara's delivery has gotten better oh, time. Have. Has gotten what? It's it has gotten, and goes, it, it does come and go. Okay, that's that's probably better. Why why do you have this Arabian Nights ass? Oh, uh, because Maria. Background? Maria. <laughs> why? Maria, Maria has like that. that Wait, isn't she thing. supposed to be like? She's Mexican, she's not coded, Middle Eastern. Yeah. Yeah. But she has, the, her music is coded yeah. with that stringy instrument, like a mandolin. Uh, it's, it's, it's the weird. melody. Melody. Okay. So they're sitting next to each other at a fireplace. Thank you, silly Billy. Th- thank you for saying that I'm right. <laughs> so I'm yeah. for now. We should be able to leave by morning. That's good. Hello. Oh, please Dragon tell Ball me you kept the entire crow being drunk thing. <laughs> I <laughs> I think I did because then they Actually, poked their heads out around. and there's no commentary on it and I think that's worth analysis. Are you okay? <laughs> okay. Sure. There's more time to talk over it. Yeah. I guess so. Yeah. Because why mm-hmm. not? Mm-hmm. I mean, it's oh, also um, it's an okay scene. Also, the it Brunswick is a good scene. the Brunswick arc yeah. just has solid things in it. Sorry. It really yeah. does. As is sad. Night. Night just <laughs> it's a diary. Oh, go ahead, Claire. Go ahead. I was gonna say it's sad that Brunswick does a lot of good things, and then the rest of the volume completely fumbles all those good things it was trying to do. Sounds like it worked, at least for a spell. Grim. Also, can I just say, Zero Connect graduated from university today. Congratulations, buddy. Oh, congrats, Zero. Congratulations. You fucking earned that. 
Always thinking of new skis. I, I Look love at you no. being more productive than us. <laughs> oh my god, I'm getting, I'm getting... We're gonna head out early tomorrow. I'm an animal. <laughs> Do art. The thing you'll catch me doing is letting some kid tell me also, what to do. Also, uh, wait. Get in bed. They, they should have extended that more. Like, bed. Brush your teeth. <laughs> Sorry, I, I'm, I'm looking at the new art. Oh, you actually did add! <laughs> Daxi Norm. <laughs> yeah. Daxi Norm. <laughs> yeah, just Twilight ascending as she just keeps screaming. <laughs> you, you know what I love about that is that Twilight kind of has like Lena of inverse energy to her in that, <laughs> which is just perfect. Yes. Oh, <laughs> uh, he he fixed uh he fixed your your yeah yeah no, that's what I was saying Daxi Norm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll have to show these at the end of the stream. They're great. You you need to show the ones from last week yes. too. Yep. We just didn't have time. Gonna scroll past us talking about Digimon. <laughs> also, uh, Digimon's a lot more fun to talk about. <laughs> it's true. Yep. <laughs> oh, the one time Blake has ever oh, spoken to an Oscar. Actually, Tamers. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What's Blake and Oscar? I do shipping? like using that frame. <laughs> you guys got the bike ready? Um, I don't know. Oh, that's, that's maybe, question, maybe actually. Belladonna Garden. I guess. Toxic Cat Garden. Cat also, Garden. I <laughs> Tomato <laughs> Garden. <laughs> they are both part I, of Nightshade. Yeah, I, that's why I said Toxic Garden because uh, Belladonna no. is Nightshade. Yeah, but I think Tomato Garden is funnier because. No, oh. It's completely unrelated <laughs> to anything. <laughs> but it's red, and that would be associated with Ruby. So bad luck, aren't you? Oh, well, well, get it? Because he gun. is. <laughs> I still have no idea how the fuck they determined that with the semblance. I'm starting to think the universe just doesn't want us getting to Atlas. It's just a they, flat tire. They don't. I'm sure there's a spare. <laughs> it's not just that. It's everything. Storms, crashes, monsters. I'm so tired. Me too. It feels like we're always having to fight to get by. Yeah. Ugh, you barely but did You would be less oh, tired if you did ha if you had winter, winter clothes. Just... It's a deadly nightshade. I looked it up. Ah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Uh... Last night I. So okay, that's close. It's, it's hilarious because <laughs> when I think of Blake, like, I think of one of the most oh, least so deadly ass. characters in this show. <laughs> that's that's why I made her an assassin <laughs> in Fractured Fairy Tales. I'm go I'm legitimately the only reason why I'm keeping her last name in Fractured Fairy Tales. Osbin hid the relics next to giant doors under enormous schools. But how long would it take Salem to find a lamp in the middle of nowhere? Yes, I would Blake. totally let Rika beat up Blake, and I I believe that ten year old sure. could. But yes, <laughs> she would. Throw it down the well wait, who, wait, who? Rika from Digimon, third season. Might not even happen in our lifetime. Oh, Ricky, okay, yeah, yeah. if you've watched the but Japanese. be done with it now. I don't know why they changed her name from. I guess because Rika is more common than Riki. Ruki, Ruki not Riki. Uh, you were cutting out. <laughs> oh, why? <laughs> why am I cutting off so much? I am really tired I, <laughs> that's me all the time <laughs> yeah, yeah it, it is the first I'll time still, I'll, I'll still be your editor though <laughs> <laughs> oh my I'm, God. I'm fighting you for that editor position <laughs> <laughs> this is me like this is me like during the middle portion of the Bumblebee video editing process because <laughs> I'm all like ah oh, god damn it okay I gotta talk about volume seven and eight when there's barely anything happening actually no that's when I was in my I hit my stride I think it was during like volume five and six the five and six hey, sections where I was like okay. oh shit you just said you're it is where they're the it's most take boring <laughs> now let's go yeah What's wrong with you? We can't just leave. We have to go down there. We have to get the lamp back. Oh, what was I thinking? All we have to do is fix this trailer. Hey, farm boy, 
Check the shed I do despair. like that the, the two silver-eyed warriors are the ones that have the most, uh, resistance. like the least, um, oh, yeah, the most resist to resistance. It. Go down together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it is, it is good writing Fine. in that sense. I mean, and I yeah. generally, uh, people are probably being like, "Oh, and Fruby, you had them also being similar resistance." I always took that more as just a natural. It's not something to do with silver eyes. It has something to do more so with just personality. Um, mm. But it just lined up that way. It's why those two were so resilient. Is because Ruby is always one that's like mm. she just always seems kind of repellent to evil. I don't know how to describe it that way. It's it's kind of a weak description. Pure simple soul. <laughs> simple soul. I don't know. Uh, she she has a very just and like single focused mind on like doing the right thing. So there's something like that is motivating. Yeah. She's always very motivated. That might be it. Like they're both very Which, motivated characters. Right? Yeah. Everyone else sort of has like these very positively motivated. Yeah. As and especially to, since yeah. she, compared to the other characters, she has substantially less baggage, at least at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Bliss says less. Crow semblance bends reality. What the fuck? That is fair. Uh, train, uh, train dude. Yeah. Uh, Compost King is a really funny shipping name for John and Oscar. That is funny. Um, <laughs> uh, the ship between Oscar and Blake is also called Catnip, Farm Cat, and Barn Cat. Oh. Those aren't bad names. Actually. I should thought Catnip. God damn it. Catnip <laughs> is way better. <laughs> it's because everyone falls asleep when Oscar is on screen. Anyway. <laughs> True. Oscar, fix a Why do you gotta do my boy like that? <laughs> Where are you going? Where do you think? Look, if you I get on me for headcanoning and Ruby stuff, I can <laughs> not just throw it right back at you about Oscar. No, I I at least acknowledge it from the very beginning. Like that's all. I acknowledge my faults thing. too. No, you don't. <laughs> you still think Kyrie is a good character. He can't remember his faults. I want Kyrie <laughs> to be a good character. I will. Wait, 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 wait. Celtic, what? <laughs> Oh, I got you in trouble. <laughs> we have a, me, me and Twy have gone we are long discussions. We are talking about this later, mister. <laughs> <laughs> when did you get in the Kingdom Hearts, good sir? I'm, 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 I'm positing you on this. What do you mean? He's always been into Kingdom Hearts. He, in made, a, he made a video about re the do you mean? Oh, come on. Where is it? Oh. Turn off your life. Ruby brings out the best in them. <laughs> <laughs> short the short summary: she had a she oh, had a well established one. character in Kingdom Hearts one, and then the rest of the series has no, prolonged shit on her. She she was literally not there for ninety five percent of the story. She was memorable for it. She had it. No, no, I disagree. There was a, I said there was I, a I more memorable <laughs> moments in like Kingdom Hearts 2, if anything. Rather, like the only things that I significantly remember about one was in Destiny Islands. Like in the I first remember she was scene. a bitch to Riku right? and in then... the first half, the first part of the story that she was in. A little bit. And then in the, and then in, uh, what was it? During Ruby. when. I forget. Sister so, moment. Yeah, I was gonna say sister what moment. I, yeah, I was just sitting here watching the apathy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I haven't played Kingdom Hearts, so I was just like in the background. You three are babbling. Also, and I, I want to like, say I like this cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> Twilight's characterization of my characterization of Kyrie is not that she's a good character. She had a good start, I thought, and I thought the rest of the series tripped and fell with her. Okay, that's my opinion on it. Okay. <laughs> I want her to be a good character, that. and I have ideas for how she could be an even better character, but it, she is not well utilized Everyone at all. And I want to love her more than I end up doing. Uh, I gave up on Kyrie when okay, Kingdom Hearts 3 came out, and they did fucking... God damn, don't, don't get me started on what they did in Kingdom Hearts 3. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'm so angry about it. I want to strangle Nomura. <laughs> Why didn't he allow her... We all do. Get in line, Hearts buddy. Three. I've been waiting for that shit for almost ten goddamn years. I don't care if she became friends with Axel. I care if she's doing shit. What's her personality like? Yeah. I like this cartoon. Her interest. <laughs> it is a cartoon. 
<laughs> God, this is such Rant a good episode. Raven and Critters, the one in the corner being all like, no, funny cartoon. Critter. She's like, yeah, apathy, woo! <laughs> What what I like yeah, to do is I like to uh, kidnap show. people and I show them I show them me playing Kingdom Hearts. If you if you ever want me to be like, I feel like that's, can we can we fix Kingdom, Kingdom Hearts, Hearts in the future? That's what the main idea is is to kidnap people yeah. and make them watch Kingdom Hearts. Can we can we do a fix Kingdom Hearts in the future? Yeah. I have been tempted. I have been oh, tempted, a... but I feel like that's an even more dangerous route than going down with Ruby. Because Kingdom yeah, Hearts has, is, is legitimately true. good for the majority of it. So that's, an, like, Ruby Ruby has great concepts. Yeah. Kingdom Hearts has some really great oh, wow. execution. Um, Absolutely. Well, like, the thing, the thing about Kingdom Hearts about is that if you are going to do a fixing, then it would probably just be, like, a, a spot edit more than, like, actual fixing. Right. Oh, yeah. Well, Kingdom Hearts 3 might have more significant shit, because, like, I would want to give, like, oh, yeah, Kyrie absolutely. major scenes uh, yeah. in the actual series. Although I have seen... Well, no, 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 no. I... What I would rather do... I could keep Kingdom Hearts 3 the way that it is, but like I said, I want to have a game in between in Kingdom Hearts 3 that's Kyrie. Also, by the way, we've been... Chris has been watching. Have we missed any significant Bumblebee things? No, but it's been such a good episode. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> We're here arguing about Kingdom Hearts. Trinus is here quietly chilling in the corner. Like, this is heated debate and conversation. Yeah. She's on the couch. Everyone else is behind the couch. <laughs> she's, just like, she's like calmly yeah, there. Good. She has like her, her like legs and arms folded very politely, just like smiling, just like bouncing on her, bouncing there watching the episode. This is a very cute image in my head. Yeah. Philip yeah. Schwartz. I, I'm a Patronum. You fool! I've been flash blinded! <laughs> <laughs> I need to edit in flashbang oh going God. off. I, I would love That's my headcanon for Expecto Patronum now. It's like, yeah, wait, what, what's your Patronus? Oh, it's a flashbang. <laughs> Expecto Patronum. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Dementors won't know what fucking hit him. I'm sorry. I, I love Kingdom Hearts almost as much as I love Demon, but I can't have the opportunity to stop thinking about it. Which is fair. If if anything, one of the ones I would change the most is probably, in, at least in terms of the story, would probably ch be Dream Drop Distance as well. I would change some things there. Oh, Why not God. have Kyrie go in with them or yeah. be involved in that's Sora's one rescue? First, that's one of the first changes. Lo uh, sorry, not long. Cry. That's one of my first changes, Raymond. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I talk about this sometimes with my best friend, Lone Crit, sometimes. Or, no! Uh, you do. Sorry. <laughs> as far as I have it. <laughs> but, yeah, no, it's, uh... Oh, God. <laughs> uh... Sorry, just the fun of habit joke. So I, really guy... I disagree with you, silly Billy. Um, I don't think that Birth by Sleep does... More harm than good? Um, no. Yeah, Birth by Sleep is actually, like... I have issues with the pacing of Birth by Sleep. Admittedly, it has been probably decades at this rate since I've played it, or a, at least a decade, because my PSP my got... Level, my PSP got stolen. I can't be the oh blame. <laughs> Who steals a PSP? My sister's <laughs> friend, apparently. <laughs> to be fair, she, this is she, before the 3DS was a thing. Yeah. Uh, but, Critter, you gotta keep that in mind. Yeah. Mm. It. But, like, I, I only got to play through it once, sadly, and I have had to watch through uh, other times now. Um, and it's, I have issues with a lot Get of the on, world on, designs, and they feel very empty. Um, like, I've, that's my major criticism, and I understand, like, there's limitations on the PSP, but we can get into it. I have issues with Birth by Sleep, yeah. but a lot of the story and a lot of the core of the story is just great. So that you know what the Tara is a little bit of a lunkhead. I wish you were I've as seen... much a lunkhead. Yeah. Well, that's, you know, that's you know what the funny thing. Part is. of the problem. I, I, oh. I, I like. Oh no! I can't see anymore. Uh, what? Shit. Oh, Twilight's I... blind. Twilight's <laughs> 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 blind. Oh I'm fuck. <laughs> Wait. The flashbang was too effective. Oh, oh my god, she got flashbanged. Yeah. <laughs> no, my uh, something hit a button on my remote control, so now I'm 
not on the TV channel that I'm. Uh, oh no! <laughs> all right. Well, while you go into the spiel that I know you've been building to, I'm going to use the restroom. I'll be right back. <laughs> okay. Um. Oh gosh. Uh. No, I I would say for. First bathroom break great in the stream, as... everyone. <laughs> Tara is great as he is. I think that there needs to be a little bit more. Interesting. Like he he's a dodo. He he is a dodo. When when the people finally come, they don't have a concept of danger, so they they just <laughs> they they couldn't do anything. <laughs> it's the same with him. He's he's you. too trusting of a man. He he held Xehanort in high esteem, and that led to his downfall. You know what nice. the funny thing is? I've seen I I I, I watched through a whole bunch of. Uh, fixing rewrites for uh kingdom hearts at one point and i think the ones that people tend to change the most or more uh, or more often more more uh divided on what to change and what not to change is birth by sleep that's what i've noticed that's like among the ones that like people have been trying to change the most because everybody has different feelings about um yeah see this uh, is this is why i actually not, don't I really this is why I don't really watch rewrites for shows or games and stuff that I actually enjoy. I only that I enjoy or have not watched at all because I have very strong opinions about the things that I enjoy, and I usually tend to not agree mm. with the majority of fandom. I am very, um, I am very black sheep like that. <laughs> okay. So usually that's that's you why I have to do it myself. Fandom. Yeah. Uh so like usually if I if I have an idea or something, it's not going I'm not going to agree with the majority of people, so I have to do it myself if I want. Twilight is a hipster confirmed. Uh <laughs> and, uh, True. Fine, I'll do it myself then. <laughs> <laughs> no, but to, to, to kind of put a cap on it, I have considered doing a um a fixing of Kingdom Hearts, but I don't I don't even know where to begin because, like, the span of this series it's, has been insane. Yeah, there are so many I different would, directions. Like, I would me likely and go to Periodic war with Pete, I, like, oh, there's the that first too. time that me and die. Periodic <laughs> Pete met was. Oh, God. I would kill him. <laughs> <laughs> no mercy. It's the Kyrie show now. It's the Kyrie. It's Kyrie. Only Kyrie. She's the main character. God damn it. Yeah. Man. <laughs> <laughs> and she still doesn't have a personality oh. that you like. No! <laughs> <laughs> the worst. Oh, anyway, one of the first interactions me and Periodic Pete had were about how we would fix Kingdom Hearts because he made a couple videos on it at one point, and that's how we met. Uh, and we were, all, and the, I think the thing that we were the most stuck on story wise was just the conclusion. And okay, why is Ansem. I for, it had something to do with Ansem. I forgot exactly what it Everything was. Everything has to... Wait, wait, wait which I Ansem? Remember. Debbie clarified. Yeah, which Ansem? Ansem. Fucking Seeker of Darkness. <laughs> okay, or, or all right. Who, um, <laughs> all right. Or who, uh, freaking, or who freaking Pete calls him Billy Richards because he's voiced by uh, fucking Billy Zims and Billy Zane. Uh, Richard Apker. Billy Zane. Who Billy is, Zane, sorry. Who is by far the best voice actor for Ansem, and I am just angered that they never managed to get him back for the role. Because yeah. I loved his performance. It's and so weird. Richard yeah. Epcar is is fine, but he sounds more like Saturday morning cartoon villainy with his performance, which I, I kind of felt like there was an extra level of depth to the original Ansem that just hasn't it's, it's... been touched. Um Oh, Sora, uh, Sora Heart. I'm a big fan of Kingdom Hearts. Just check my username, and it's the first game I ever finished by myself. But there's there are problems. I won't deny it. I'm of the I'm of the rare opinion that I think Kingdom Hearts One is the best one, probably, um, for a number of different reasons. I know I'm I'm kind of black sheep in that way. Kind of that's my hipster <laughs> hipster stance. Um, well, not too not too black sheep. I'd yeah, I know. No. I, I know it's it's not opinion. like the most, most black people... sheep opinion. Most people say that purely because of nostalgia. I think that he's black sheep in the way that he he isn't only using nostalgia, but nostalgia yeah. plays a big yeah, factor. Yeah, I, why I, he I'm not denying that that nostalgia definitely plays a massive role in it. But I think there's a nature to the storytelling, a nature to the gameplay as well that 
they took a different direction in Kingdom Hearts 2 that I'm not the biggest of fans of. So it's it's it might more or less be a preference thing. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely it's probably color coded my opinion of different games in the franchise. Um, though, if you want my favorite, my favorite story in the franchise, three, five, eight over two days, three, five, eight over two days. Yeah. Yeah, 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 that's an easy one. That's <laughs> easy one, yeah. I, I, I don't think anyone disagrees with but that. But I will say, like, it's one of the worst games in terms of gameplay, but one of the best stories. I, I'm, I, uh, you know, I have that's actually how played... I'm black sheep in terms of that. I, 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 I have gonna... played a bit of Kingdom Hearts 1. I didn't finish it. I don't know how far I got. The gameplay was bad. But my Ooh. favorite thing about it was uh, in the beginning... Sora's like all sad and whatever, and then Donald and Goofy help him like get his emotions back in order. And I'm like, oh, that makes sense because they're oh, both yeah. fathers. They would know yeah. how to handle well, a kid who's like Donald going through father? the trenches. Or is he just he parents the the, he's the uncle? The, no, he's an uncle. He's he, an he, uncle. he he raises Huey, Dewey, and Louie. Yeah, he's, he's a father. Yeah, yeah and I I, I was like that. I was like that makes sense. So good. I, they, they know how to handle kids. I, I, we need to see Max. <laughs> we need to see Max in fucking yeah, Kingdom Hearts. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. We do. I we love really do. seeing these AU like <laughs> fan art of Sora and Max just God, hanging out. It's God, I, such a fun thing. I would love. I would have loved like a spinoff with Kyrie, like you were describing Twilight, like you wanted to do, yeah. like where she teamed up with Max and Scrooge. Can you imagine yeah. what that would be? I saw oh, fan art of I... Max and Webby. Being someone's partner, <laughs> maybe Kyrie. I don't know. <laughs> um, but yeah, I was gonna say. Um, uh, also, I, I was gonna say before we go off on any more tangents because we're I'm, I'm kind of bringing back to Ruby. But I just want my final say: there will be a fighting words on Kingdom Hearts three five eight over two days uh, mechanics because I actually really like a lot of what was there. <laughs> Lord of the um, Skies. We're, that's all I have to say. Fat Man and I Your are going through. Valid. Dream Drop Distance now, but after I showed him 358, he he was like, this is my favorite story. Like, I, like, he he said pretty early on that the the titled games are the most boring part of That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, I can see that for one, I don't know about two. In oh, case. no, I'm, a, I'm, I'm the opposite. I think one is the strongest written of the, of the main three. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I would disagree with that. I'll have that. to look back <laughs> on it. Actually, hmm. You might actually may... I don't know. I, 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 I should clarify, there is an element to there that. that's really hard to, like, crystallize. I, I would try to describe. There's there's quite literally, I think... Well, not quite literally, but there's a, there's a magic to the writing of Kingdom Hearts 1. I can't quite put my finger on. I, well, well, we can discuss it later. We, let's, this it's freaking a, rabbit a, hole. We gotta keep going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we gotta keep going, guys. Yay, back to the apathy. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry, See, Critter. This is what happens when you don't care about Kingdom Hearts, everybody. <laughs> I just patiently sitting here staring at, at Ruby and Blake flying on the ground. I'm like, all right, we'll get back to it. <laughs> also, I am... Can I say I'm disappointed by Maria's vision so here? Hard. It's so boring. Yeah. Like, yeah. They, could, they could have done more like, with, like, scan there'd be, lines. like, more scanning... Aspect. Yeah, yeah. Do you yeah. think, I'm, do you think the reason why they made her eyes black and white is Atlas thing? I've heard um, because she needs to get her eyes tuned up with Pietro. Like part of the thing that's goofed up with them is her like color balances all oh, yeah. fucked up. <laughs> but like that's not even it. Like the is beautiful. I think it is more so. Like I we should see like. You know, in all those games have like a detective vision. It should be kind of like that, where it's like outlining yeah. everything in like a very Norman right... Jaden in um, Heavy Rain <laughs> with his sunglasses. <laughs> Something like that, yeah. Oh my! Don't remind me of that fucking game. Norman Jaden. <laughs> no. no. Somebody wants us to break down Lancaster. I wonder if these streams are just going to become shipping streams, just in general. <laughs> <laughs> Dude. Make it close to like Kingdom Hearts here. one day. Uh, maybe, maybe that might actually be on the topic. We can probably do that. Uh, that's still that's a lot of content to go through, though. Oh uh, yeah, it is. That is a lot of content. We're back in the house. I'll I'll have my my Union Cross video finished by then, hopefully. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? All six hours. Are, are of you it. sure you still oh, want to edit for Raymond? I feel like we might have missed something. <laughs> did, 
<laughs> okay, there we go. Yep, they're they're holding hands. Yep. Yeah, yeah, there we go. They're holding hands. <laughs> yeah. On she, she, reminder. She reminder. She didn't. The, the last time that we saw them interacting, Yang was actively pulling away from Blake. Actively. But now. Out of anger to, yeah, and exactly. spite. <laughs> out of anger and frustration. Right. And now she is willingly dragging Blake behind her. Like. No one else. Not her sister. Not yeah. Weiss, who is also so, there. Who is her friend. <laughs> that would be interesting yeah. if, if Yang not had dragged uncle. Weiss out. Not her uncle, who was fucking sloshed yeah. and kind of unable to function properly. Not the old lady. Not Definitely old not lady. Oscar, who is always excluded from important scenes in Ruby. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's so be, stupid. Be, like, does Oscar problem, is not a character. A, a he is a flesh issue. bag for Ospin to live in. Which is God why I it. need to but, take him out of this story and I need to protect him. <laughs> okay, Rose you can do that for Oscar. <laughs> I'll do that for Kyrie and we'll just pass each other on the way. We're all happy with this. <laughs> <laughs> you only like Kyrie because she has a character design. I think she actually has a spunky personality that can be tapped into. <laughs> I doubt it. <laughs> I don't worry, Raymond. I actually agree with you there. I think there was a bit male bi male bias. What <laughs> I like goofy. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't get me started on goofy motherfucker fake dying on us in Kingdom Hearts two. <laughs> like anyone was going to fucking fall for that one. Doesn't Donald cast like super uh, fire solar flare or something he, like that? He, he, he casts yeah. fucking Save Zeta flare. flare. It's like in Final Fantasy, it's like the new <laughs> tactical yeah. nuke option. They drain <laughs> so up Donald's yeah. alley, though. Yeah. <laughs> it is. Yeah. And, and hey, the fact that Goofy Donald screamed after him not there. to do it implies he's <laughs> done it before. <laughs> 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 But at least Donald actually died there and was only saved due to time travel. <laughs> oh, no, no. don't, don't get, don't get us started on that. <laughs> there, there are... Kingdom Hearts time travel. Oh God. Oh go, no, that. Raymond, Raymond is hard from talking about time travel anymore. <laughs> Allow him to talk about time travel. Okay. All right. Do we need a separate jar for time travel? <laughs> Right the white, uh, I don't know. Is Kingdom Hearts going to bring that up? <laughs> Manga Kyrie needs to happen more. Agreed. This these streams just become you three arguing about Kingdom Hearts, and I'm in the background just watching. Ruby. <laughs> no one was angry or. Well, you got plenty of watch because it's just Blake and Yang in the same no scene together. Angry. <laughs> Which another issue I have with their relationship is it's more so to do with their individual characters where it's just they don't have significant interactions with anyone else, at least not mm -hmm. consistently. So it makes it makes things ironically, it makes things way less special and way more forced to the fact that they are putting special attention to yeah. Blake and Yang as a pairing in general. No. It has a sort mm -hmm. of opposite effect of like overexposing uh, character interacting with everybody and just arbitrarily choosing that, okay, this one is the one. I, uh, I've like, mentioned it... Find that right balance. I've mentioned it on a stream before. I don't remember if it was one of these. But, like, in Friends, one of my favorite friendships is Chandler's friendship with Rachel. They never date each other, they never even think about dating each other, but because they live in proximity to each other and are best friends, it makes their interactions so much more interesting and more fleshed out as people. Yeah. <laughs> I watched maybe ten whole episodes of Friends. You talked about Kingdom Hearts for like 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't talk about friends. <laughs> I, 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 I was going to say, I have friends. some you know familiarity. My sister owns the entire, or she that. did own the entire collection of friends on VHS. No, sorry, on DVD. What am I saying? Non VHS. Fuck, we didn't have room for that. Uh, <laughs> guys, like, I had room for it. I just thought you were just laying low. Eventually, we came to accept that you were probably... Never said that you couldn't talk about friends. I'm saying that I um, can't be in the conversation No, we with can't you talk about friends because my can was invoked. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> that 
That is God true. Damn it. I wish Yang moved more while driving. <laughs> yeah. Like she's so still back there. <laughs> they don't. They're not very good at doing motorcycle driving. I don't think because it involves a lot of leaning and a lot of balancing that you just or vehicle. They're very small but important movements for keeping that kind of vehicle. Steady. You think those men have ever touched a motorcycle? Or anything other than a car? Do you think Ruby uses a lot of vocab because in these seasons? Because I don't think so. I don't know, honestly. That's a good question. They feel very stilted for mocap. On honestly, I kind of disagree with all of you guys because that the garbage. <laughs> I like it better when they just hey, I have never, I never... the animators doing their jobs and don't shortcut it with mocap. It's actually really impressive. If you ever seen, yeah, it gives a. If you ever seen the um, behind the scenes for Devil May Cry oh, Five, it's amazing what they do when they're just storyboarding. Like they do like oh, moving yeah, storyboards. I've seen those. It's so cool because you can tell they hand animate it all, but they're doing these references from like, like doing these little action figures right. and characters like flinging themselves through the air. It's wonderful. Yeah, it's so fucking funny, but it's actually really cool at the same time. You can tell that everyone loved what they, they were doing. Especially when they juxtapose it. Those edits. Yeah. It, it, I'll repeat yeah. it, but we don't get the same value. It between the actual scenes. We, we, I don't get that same feeling from, from Ruby's animation team. I don't get that energy. No. No. I mean, oh, I wonder why. <laughs> Gee, I wonder <laughs> why. Ruby always screams, doing it the fastest, easiest, cheapest way possible. Yep. Especially when they move to the Maya engine. Which is such a shame. And it really oh, shows that so they don't know how to employees. use the Maya engine very well. And, like, you could hire people that know how to use Maya and not just have nah, people that, that already work money. at your company just be promoted to managerial positions don't know what they're doing. <laughs> but they're buddies with okay, the people in power. Drag, I wanna... <sighs> Nepotism also, at its worst. I want to drag college students... I want to I want to drag art students that just came fresh out of college. Yeah. So I don't have to pay them as much. Also, yeah. I want to ask: Is it look military people? Is it normal for in a day with modern weapons and equipment to have people posted standing stock still on a wall anymore? Like, is that, <laughs> is, that is that really necessary? Especially when you have them lined up, what like twenty feet apart? What the fuck is especially this? because Atlas has turrets. They have Alice cameras. Has knights and robots. <laughs> like, these are people in uniform. We get a closer shot in just I... a minute here. See, those are people in uniform. Those aren't robots. That's dumb. That is yeah. so They're fucking so dumb. They're so small, too. <laughs> Can you... I can't see anything. Is nope. that, that just a black dot? Oh, oh, is that a person? That's a, oh, that's a person. Man. That's not a person, is it? What? That's a person, <laughs> I what thought those were light. There was like flags or lights. <laughs> Why I thought those were like no, flags or lights. No, that's a pillar. That's not people? a person. No, <laughs> Raymond, you're getting your keywords fuck? mixed up. <laughs> <laughs> now you can see oh, it's a Leon white silhouette with a gun. A question gun. for you, Twilight. What? You, where, where are you seeing the black uh, gun? Oh my god! Uh, also, Twilight. Uh, um, Leon critiques asks Twilight, "What do you think is the best animated volume of Ruby?" Um. <laughs> Technically, because I yeah, I don't I don't know. Um, I I would have to think about. Well, that While she thinks about you. that, Metal Claw, the egg container is just for donations. Like I, I I don't exactly know how that thing works, but like when people donate, it drops things into it to catch it. Raymond lays an egg. Please don't give me that fucking image. <laughs> don't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm uh, surprised you barely thought of it. Um, I'd probably have to say tech on a technical level. I would say um one of the later volumes. Because like as as much as people like to talk about the fight scenes in the early volume, they are very rushed, and they they have so many problems to them that I can't really say that I enjoy. Like they're, it the fights sometimes feel like keys dangled in front of my face. 
bead is what is being used to entertain me rather than actual yeah you did they do over overuse speed in in all volumes of ruby yeah it's a lot bigger than i thought it would be so that's why i'm no, when people usually praise the fight scenes like, i'm like but eight. why though someone clip that yang <laughs> that, that that yang line out of context uh it's like it's oh, bigger than saying? i thought it would be oh it's like you could <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you know, some some fan troll or something has has used that. I mean, some probably some porn artists too. You? No, I haven't used it for anything. Real what winners. Your whole mind is always war. constantly in the gutter. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I built oh a home god. there. It's comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> there's a couch. There's a TV. <laughs> and I keep it clean too. It's his nest. The gutter is his nest. <laughs> but yeah, I, I will say the fan, like I said in my video, the fan artists are the real winners of this whole Bumblebee debate. Yeah, because they're, they're just making the bag. Oh my God, new new Dedrex art. Oh, you oh. y'all are gonna love this one. <laughs> it's a sarg. <laughs> it's us arguing behind the couch with Critter just watching Ruby. <laughs> Yay. Well, are, are, wait, are we on the couch and is she behind the couch watching Ruby? I can't. She's behind the couch watching Ruby. Oh. Uh, I, I love how he's making me barrel and all the starts now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love how, how Raymond has, like, both of his freaking wings pointed at us. I thought, I thought that the the gap between the top of his head and the bottom of his wing was mouth. <laughs> <laughs> he just becomes an angry blob. <laughs> and to keep trade between the two nations steady. This exposition dump is one of the worst moments in the whole show. It's so it dumb. It adds nothing. I, I hate it. Looking for a ship. I don't even so remember this where part. Where have you guys been staying? Uh... There you are. Is that? Okay. What a coincidence. Interesting point. Why did they not know where they were going? To, like. You were going to Argus. Yeah. Where were you guys going to stay anyway? Yeah. Why are we acting embarrassed that he's staying at his sister's house? Yeah, why is this... Like, what's embarrassing about this? <laughs> like, Oh, because goofy family drama herder. Isn't that funny? <laughs> no. <His> girl. <laughs> Train dude, I wasn't referring to Train dude, no. <laughs> what? No, dude. Yeah, first rule, don't, don't, not in crazy, man. Not in crazy. <laughs> <laughs> No. <laughs> oh. Hey, Sam. Why are you surprised to see her? Like, oh, oh hi, wait. it's been so long. Like, why are you... This is such a dumb scene. Oh, God. Oh. Nami na Namons? I'm, I'm a minute behind, still catching up, but uh, Yang held Ren. That's a ship moment. <laughs> true, yeah. buddy, true. <laughs> I, I I hate these faces. I hate them so much. They haunt my every nightmares. time. Every time Ruby tries to be an anime, it oh looks so God. ugly. It does. Ruby it really wants does. to be anything yeah, but itself. It I think that's part oh, of the problem. That... I guess mm -hmm. to be like Pretty thing. much. And then you'll see artwork like these, like like pictures in universe is always like art, and it never looks the same, and it's yeah. so weird. <laughs> no. The problem, the yeah. problem with Ruby never wanting to be itself is that it's baked into the concept, so it never wanted to be itself from the out, which is really strange. Mm -hmm. Yeah, basically, like it's just a hodgepodge of different things, so it's becoming even more fake. I, John yeah. putting the sandwich together with his fucking gauntlets on. 
Because <laughs> <laughs> they don't have a model oh, was... without. Oh, what the fuck? Like I mentioned, I was watching the part two of the Justice League crossover. Cyborg's arm is a cannon the whole time. Like he's standing, he's sitting in front of a keyboard, typing with one hand. Because they... <laughs> his arm's just a cannon. And I'm like, you're Ruby. You're supposed to be the people who transform weapons. You can't give him another hand. <laughs> That is oh embarrassing. I never caught that. Holy that shit. That is. Holy shit. And I, yeah, I, I forgot about that. I liked Holy the second shit. movie. I generally, like, I, I. Oh, I, I hated those movies. Oh, okay. I, I, hated I should put those it. Movies I liked shit. it as a Ruby content. Let's put it in that, that framing, all right? It wasn't. The first one I hated more. Um, the first one's only redeeming quality was that. Uh, uh, the Green Lantern, Jessica, is that her name? Yeah. She she was cute. Uh, that, Jessica that was Cruz, it. yeah. That was that was literally the only re- that and her oh. her and John's dynamic was uh, was actually kind of cute. And if Good she were think John wasn't in the second one at all, so they could have yeah. expanded that more. <laughs> yeah. My my whole thing was like if they could somehow uh, like just yeah. make Jessica quote unquote canon, I could legitimately see myself shipping John and Jessica and like they're them going forward into being like John moving on from I mean, fucking at least Kira. Just, yeah, and it would actually make John's I mean, uh, obsession with, with Kira make a lot more sense because they're working on him moving on and getting past that by by getting together with somebody else. Yeah, and, it, yeah. and whether or not he is going to actually hey, like let let himself move on or if he's going to ruin a relationship because he can't let go of the past. And hey, Jean is over like is is practically like fifty now, time wise. So Jessica's yeah. the only one. Yeah, legitimately, that could actually work out. <laughs> why? Why do they have to make all of the adult models so ugly? Though? I know. Oh I know. <laughs> like the young models weren't anything really anything great, but they they looked okay. Right, and and just you know, and was I think Jessica and Flash? I actually really liked their models. But then everyone else, like, I mean, they're adults. It's just so, so. Yeah, weird. like, freaking, it's like the difference. Batman looks so, so frumpy. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> it's like the difference between uh, early Dragon Ball Z, where Goku is, like, a strong man, but he still looks relatively human. And then, like, Dragon Ball Z, where they all yeah. look like they're balloon. Yeah. <laughs> Trap. <laughs> become like three times the size of their heads <laughs> yeah jesus well that was a fumble i guess what the fuck happened there uh, uh-oh oh, there i am not a baby that's oh, yeah. good old internet <laughs> good old internet baby. Uh, isn't technology great it's so good i'm sure everything's still going on the stream we haven't hit, hit anything all right, I'll be right back. I need. The only arc living here? Yep. She's gone forever. <laughs> Sean and yep. I are the only two living away from home. I guess he just. Oh God, I wish we got a little bit more on the sisters at some point. That'd be like a fun thing to explore, but we can't because we have so much plot to get through now. It's especially weird with how often they get brought up. Like they've been brought up since Volume Two. Yeah. I thought they were gonna really be something. <laughs> Yeah, like maybe we like every volume we get a new arc sibling. Like yeah, that just became a fun, fun thing to get. Course. Well, it, it also comes back to like I think Ruby ironically got not even ironically like got really deep into its plot really too quickly, and this is going to be a mm-hmm. hey, spoiler for my criticisms of My Hero Academia. That's going to be a criticism against it too. Um, I would have loved to see much more slice of life or like more like contained arcs early on. That could also that grow the characters and the world around them, and then we get into the overarching thoughts that uh, that actually start to have massive impacts on the world. Mm-hmm. I would have loved it if the Arc Sisters basically acted like like Nurse Joys, basically, where every time they're going to a new place and they need somewhere to rest, there's the Arc Sister that happens to live there. <laughs> <laughs> Where they have like the same personality or something related? No, like they're all. They, there's one thing they all have in common is they love Jean and think he's a big dumb baby. 
but they're like homes. They they are kind and are like hospitality driven, but they're all different personalities. And that would be like how you would remember which town they've stumbled into, they, they, which they, arc sister was there. They, they, <laughs> like, it was like the joke in the Digimon movie where Yoli has all these stuff that can take them to America <laughs> in all these different locations. <laughs> God damn that. For those of you who don't know, the Digimon movie, which compiles the first three OVAs, is better than the first three OVAs in the original Japanese, and I will die on that fucking hill. <laughs> I I had Raymond watch the first three movies in Japanese. Then me. you will die in pieces, anyways. Yeah. Uh, I like uh, Zap, um, Zapper also, and Terra oh, because they feel very normal. Like I could see those two living in the real world. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Also, I will say I agree with you, Raymond, with that same criticism of MHA. They should have. They they did. I feel that I also um went into the plot mode a little too, way too quickly. Yeah, I I, I genuinely I get especially. pissed at these like high school anime or storylines that don't wait until after the first year for shit to go down. Like they have no patience with the 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 core concept. Yeah. They have no. They have no ability to feel like the core concept of, hey, it's a super X school or whatever. It's a, it's a school that does for whatever. They have no confidence yeah. that it can carry it on its own, even though Deku's journey, it, it, that's getting off. Like, Ruby should have been the same way. And it's one reason yeah. I love Evermorrow. Evermorrow, yeah. which I am very happy to be now voicing in. Um, but like yeah. one thing I adore about it is that it is taking that concept of like, well, it's more of an episodic story of the volume type deal and it's like carrying that forward i, need I love to, that energy. Uh, yeah you i've seen a couple episodes of evermore and it's pretty cool so far my yeah. mha can't have slow arcs because they were afraid of boring people with slow non-action starts twilight weren't you the one that told me that people didn't like the gentle criminal arc yeah those yeah, people uh, are one hundred percent wrong. Don't like. <laughs> yeah, like I <laughs> on on one well, hand, like I do agree that I wish that there was a little bit more spreading out of stuff in the early and not immediately get there. On at, on the other hand, I do understand why they want to get it out there right away because you're afraid that nobody is going to be interested in picking up the manga, so you have to. It's it's like the first chapter novel right. have to make the first chapter incredibly good and have a gripping hook and stuff um just so that people don't put your book down yeah but they, it's, they, it's they, like that i, I, under, I understand that but like there are ways to do that and one thing that is interesting yeah. in my deep dive is learning that hori horikoshi is not unaware of his flaws so it's it's very yeah. interesting to see that uh yeah. dragon paul z is someone who is out of the loop what is the pitch for evermore basically end of volume two they actually catch well, they understand that it's they they realize that it's Cinder and um, her lackeys that have actually uh, caused that. Cinder, so yeah. they're on the run. They're actually they're no longer at the school. They're on the run. Uh, the Vital Festival goes off without a hitch. Effectively, Pyrrha wins, um, gets together with John, and basically it's just their second yep. year at Beacon now. Um, <laughs> It's, Which it, can I just say the the dialogue between the characters is in the, in Evermorrow is so much better. I was all like, "Oh my god, this and is I'm unarmed to boot. Whatever shall I, I do?" <laughs> Amazing oh, right. what actual writing talent can do. Roman comes in yet? Uh, I haven't seen uh, the episode where Roman comes in. Uh, yet. I need to watch that one. I was about to say, unfortunately, that's a really bad way to fucking talk about it because uh <laughs> i was just, unfortunately it was a different actor before there was another actor before me that did roman tortrick for episode five um who had that sadly drop out because he just life got in the way he had another kid um so he's, he's basically maybe he'll be able to oh, come back okay. as someone else to him. oh <laughs> he actually he, he he as i understand yeah. it he is going to maintain his role as ospin he just couldn't do both it and roman nice um, so he, he's still on i just uh it, I, I, I he's really good. He, he he was good. He was good. Um, I actually tried to replicate his voice as well, just in case they wanted to keep consistency. Uh, they ultimately went with my impersonation of Gray. So, mm -hmm. uh, um, right. we got new art. Good. I oh god! Not like it, Raven. With the white oh god! Team Cardinal. I'm scared. Is it the egg? Oh what? I'm <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where the super chats go. <laughs> uh, I don't need a thank you, man. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and I know that the more frustrated I get, the more amusing it is. Ah. Uh. Catch 22. Sparty asks, would you agree, oh Kaiser, God. that Jujutsu Kaisen is oh. guilty of that? We'll, we'll hold that. I wanted to get this. Adam Zelke is Evermore. Uh, Adam, yeah, Zelke okay. is, is Evermore a fanfic. If so, where can I read it? It sounds like it, it is a YouTube AU. Um, you can find it on YouTube. It has six episodes so yep. far. Seven's in production. Yeah. Now, please answer your, the, the question. Um, uh, okay. The briefly answer, because I know we've been in so many tangents already. Um, I would say that Jujutsu Kaisen is guilty of that, is somewhat guilty of that, a little bit, but it's a lot more forgivable because the story from the very beginning was much more fast paced in general. Honestly, how fast it is um, and how quickly it gotten into the main plot only harms about, I would like to say, three key things in the story. Which, compared to how how it is in most other shonen, especially compared to My Hero Academia, that's really good. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> like, only yeah. a couple of characters and moments are harmed because of, of the pacing of the story, or how fast the story got to the main plot and shit. Um, in my opinion. But maybe it might change if I go back to beginning and see where things lie, but that's my stance I, on That's that. why, like, I always encourage focus on the smaller arcs and make them feel better punchy like that's really the the, the build up yes. you could have had like in my hero academia or in ruby you could have had one-off villains at any one time that like you fuck know yeah. merlot you know what's, fuck do you know that's one that i feel that. like really does that like it just small arcs no plot whatsoever boruto I loved it. There's no plot whatsoever. They just kind of float like, from I'm, one I'm, I'm not saying I know nothing, nothing yeah, I know, about I, Boruto. I know nothing about it other than they, they ruined Naruto himself. I've heard story. nothing. Uh, but See, I, I tried watching I've Naruto, and it was bad, like dude. way too much filler, so I found it boring. So then I watched Boruto instead, and I had a great time with it. <laughs> I, I, I was going to say, though, I'm not saying oh, have no... like 90% filler. No, I, I would say, I'm not saying have no plot. What I'm saying is you can pace out that plot over several different arcs. Like, yeah. you can have the League of Villains attack at the end of Season 1, and it actually caps out pretty well. And I know I'm thinking mm -hmm. in terms of seasons, but it's a good right. first arc for the story is League of Villains, you have them, and then they have to go back, replan everything, and rebuild. You can do all that over a period of time. Yeah. Uh, then you get different villains taking the forefront. Like, um, a good example, Overhaul. Overhaul being in the forefront for a little while. Yeah, Overhaul was a great villain. Was a great villain, and his interaction with the League could have happened so I... later after his arc, uh, his initial arc, which could have been about anything really. And then later you could get the Airy arc, like that sort of thing. Right. I would um, I would say the difference Honestly, between I, Naruto I like filler. Ways... I would say the difference between Naruto filler and Boruto filler is with Boruto filler, they're still, like, talking to each other. Like, they're just kind of doing random things, but with each other still. With Naruto filler, it's like, OMG, we're gonna fight you, Orochimaru, and then they do that for four more episodes without getting anything done and not saying anything substantial. <laughs> just, just waiting on Naruto. Kai. Okay. But look, we have Waishni with no. us, and we finally <laughs> get home safely. God, this is so. Well, it's so weird. Like, yeah. why yeah. we just oh, had the apathy oh. arc? Yeah, you are these... sending extra other guys. No one panic. <laughs> <laughs> why are oh these my God. <laughs> cartoony dudes <laughs> in the show? With our commanding officer, we will fetch her at once. <laughs> these are the. What are these twins called? In in Furby uh, we, we renamed them Dean Dudley, but like that's not what they are here. They're um I think they're just called boots. I forget their name. <laughs> Leatherheads or something. Hey, no, like a like a, a nutcracker really reference or something? If she's your something. First Celtic thinks the butchering of the Digimon OVAs are better than the OG. Now critter likes Boruto. Jeez Louise. 
That butchering of the OVAs saved the fucking OVAs. The third OVA especially is awful. Hurricane, yeah, hurricane touchdown. It's so bad. Awful. It is awful. It, it's awful. <laughs> and no, I'm the first full of oh bad God. takes. <laughs> the, the first two movies are yeah. good on their own, but it's mainly, and this is what this is what they said, uh, when when they made the Digimon movie in English. It's mostly the third movie that they did do it because it was terrible. Yes. All, 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 you, all I gotta say is, chat, you can rely on me because I'm almost, I'm always right about my takes. No, you're not. <laughs> it's a part of this programming. <laughs> it's programming made by faulty humans. Yes. <laughs> uh, Jonah Williams, I love Dean Dudley and Fruby. They're I so am made, I was made to exceed you. I, I, I very much appreciate it. Uh, oh, okay. we, we, we love Tweedledee and Tweedledum. They're great. Uh, Adam Zelke, remember when everyone wanted yeah. Winter to be at uh, the Atlas official in Argus? Yeah, we're that would have not been a bad idea, honestly. That would have made sense. Yeah, I'm like one of the few people who likes Cordovan, and even I think we didn't need her. <laughs> yeah. Nice to see you again as well. I I like these interactions. There are some, but it's like the show doesn't take her seriously enough after this point. Mm -hmm. It's also such a forced right. conflict uh, between them. According to the transcript for Dead End, the two guards are called Nabuck Guard yeah. 1 and Nabuck Guard 2. Okay. So do they even have anything related to fairy tales? I thought that What does Nabuck really... mean? I thought that was a shoe-related thing. Because she's the lady in the shoe. Yeah. Maybe Atlas just wanted to get you as far from the kingdom as possible. You're just like the rest of these August. It's you know what, you it's what, one I, of those really bad so fairy weird. tale references I, where I you love, won't get the reference. I love <clears throat> that oh. this is a thing that they float as Maria being like a smart ass, but legitimately it's possible. But then later the creators came out and said, Yeah, no, she was positioned there because no one could stand her. It's like, what the fuck, guys? Take away the ambiguity, take away the yeah, joke. What the fuck? Like, I uh, I looked it up. Yeah. The buck is a type of leather used for making shoes. Okay, so it's a reference to shoes. <laughs> okay. Also, yeah, and another thing about Cordova that I'm not really into, like, at least in retrospect, because from the outset, you would probably see that, like, okay, she's like an example of Atlas soldiers or officials being pretty fanatical or something like that. Um, but after that point, we barely get to explore that when we actually get to Atlas. Mm -hmm. So it's like, eh. Oh, sorry, Ryan Carson. I just didn't see it. it just In happens. fact. Do you guys seriously have to do that? Yeah. Yang. Yang. They're trying to be funny. All right. It's more than you've been this last, what, three volumes. Yeah. Uh. Oh. Metal Claw asks, how is Cordo related to the lady in the shoe? Her mech has giant feet, and that's her in her giant shoe. Well, the ba the base <laughs> and the base the is said to look like a boot, but we never get a good enough look at it to like see that. Uh, I think we do. I think we actually get a glimpse of it that it does look like a boot, but I also remember it was just really stupid because like the entire internal of it is just the fucking mech. It's one reason <laughs> we changed what we did in Fruby, where we actually made the mech three stories tall still, but... Like the the base was massive, like an actual military base. This base is actually yeah. incredibly fucking small from a military's mm -hmm. perspective. Which was a really good change. Um, never uh, exactly why I say that it's a really bad uh, reference because it it takes a lot of bullshit in order to make the reference work. Uh, never if you need someone like me to explain. If if so, if you need someone like me to explain what the references are, you didn't do a good enough job with the references in the show. Yep. <laughs> no. <laughs> if Mishni has truly come to her senses and wishes to return to her family, then of course the Atlas military will. I wish characters had more interesting color palettes with their hair and eyes. Like back of the day, mm. everyone used to have crazy colors, and now it's like, eh, oh, look, gray hair, brown eyes, brown Cordova hair, is being racist, brown eyes. and <laughs> Dude. Blake is sad, and now Yang has the slightly angry eyes, but not like the red angry eyes. Like, wow, you're really doing a good defense right. here of your 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 waifu here. That is true. 
And like, <laughs> th this points, and like, Weiss is the one who defends Blake from Cordovan's okay, racism. Well, your face looks At least we're not at the part yet where Blake actively cowers behind Yang anytime someone's kind of angry at her. <laughs> oh yeah. I hate it like, so much. Even though the racism of the Faunus is a huge part of Blake's character, Yang never gets to participate in it mm -hmm. at all, except for Ice Queen. She, she's the victim. Which she is, really is the bad. big sad, and she needs the big strong yellow chick in order to fight all of her battles for her. The only thing Yang has Except ever when someone's said- racist. <laughs> the only thing Yang has ever said in regards to racism or the Faunus is in volume one, when Weiss was like, all those Faunus know how to do is lie, cheat, and steal. And Yang's response was, that's not entirely true. <laughs> oh, she said it. Yeah. She said it twice. She's like, it must be hard to be a fawn. And then she said, <laughs> the see, two times, guys, she's talked about racism so much. It's love. Philip Schwartz with his 10th super chat on a live stream. Cordo, Atlas, fuck yeah. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Coming down to say the motherfucker day, yeah. And then Ruby steps in and ruins that. If we ever get a Stark prequel, Ironwood is I want to, under now. <laughs> I want to see young, hot Cordovan. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> in the background, like, somewhere. she needs a fucking pompadour. I don't know how you would give her in that design, but just give her a fucking pompadour. Wait, I could see it. <laughs> oh my god! Wait, didn't Yang use a laser pointer? Yang did, in fact, use a laser pointer and was horribly racist. Yes, that is true. Mm -hmm. Really. Okay, y'all have some crazy minds about Cordovan that need to get checked out. <laughs> it's like, well, Maria's real tiny and old, and she was a super cutie when she was younger. Surely Cordovan's the same way, right? Do you know how much people ship Cordovan and uh, Maria? Like, yes, I'm right here. Oh, I, I, <laughs> I mean, like, the Jilted X's story writes itself. It's literally, it's like right there for you. That is true. Yeah. Like, how else would Why they know? How else would you? This is uh, this might actually tie back into Bumblebee, honestly. Like, Cordovan no, oh, sorry, Maria knows that chewing on on nuts. Take that out of context if you want. Um, chewing on nuts <laughs> annoys the fuck out of Cordovan. How do you think Maria knows that? That's a very <laughs> intimate detail for someone to know. And so, oh like, between God. those two, between those two, and then you get Saffron and Terra, and now you have Ruby, sorry, not Ruby, Blake and Yang. This is yeah, the lesbian wish. volume. I, I wish it were Ruby and Blake. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not denying that. But the, but you, this is the lesbian volume. We have More than a three groups of lesbians, and they are and really that's... pushing for Bumblebee in it. <laughs> And that's why I want young Cordovan, because then we could have pretty girls all around. <laughs> Yay! Yeah. I will say, I, one thing to appreciate about Cordovan is she is old and she is short. That is something mm -hmm. that, like, that combination of things, even though it's played up for a joke, which I don't think, I think in the initial joke is fine, but the more they try and play up that she has a short man complex is a completely different thing. Like, I, I, I like our interpretation yeah. of her because she is a fucking legitimate threat. And it's like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yes. that's something you don't really expect from someone who's, you know, three foot and nothing. Yeah. Well, it's, the, small one. Change, it's right. the smallest ones that's that what, are That's the probably angriest. my favorite change of the volume. That's probably my favorite change in the fixing for that. Plan, I mean, in, in the, that volume fixing, sorry. Look, none of this is great, we know. Just making Cordovan actually matter and actually a threat. What? He's in your head, isn't he? Are you sure about oh, that? Oh, fuck, fuck off, John. <laughs> fuck off, John. Fuck off, John. Can we even trust him? But it's time for Miles Luna to be a moody, broody voice actor. I, I hate how good his delivery is, though. Miles is a legitimately a good voice it actor. It was good, yeah. He I, is. Yeah, he is. But it's I just annoying don't... that it's John. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Don't don't hate the voice actor. Especially hate the when he's going to... 
Especially when, because of him, we're not going to get the scene that we should have yeah. gotten for for Blake and Yang. Killjoy. The thing between Cordova and Maria is that she was bringing in contraband that was a type of nut. So she was eating the same type of nuts despite Cord Cordovan. Ah, yes, because she would know that Cordovan can intimately detail, can figure out what kind of nut it is purely from her chewing over a radio. No, oh son. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry. Those two are... It, it, if not romantic, they have had an, somehow an intimate friendship or an intimate past of some sort together. You can't escape that. Um, Adam Zelke. A lot of people say Ruby is bad for stealing the airship, but honestly, I've seen other protags do stuff just as bad, and it isn't that bad. It, it, look, no, justification-wise no. is part of the problem. They don't try yeah, any yeah. other options. Yeah, they didn't try any no. other options. Like Usually yeah, when characters do stuff like that, options. it's... There's nothing left for them to try. They legit had no choice. Yeah. Like, they, like, they, 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 no example, one floated the idea of let's uh, just get on a boat, sail up to Atlas to, to Mantle, and trudge our way over to Atlas. Why? Or can't have Weiss go on or her own most, like Cordo offers. Yeah, and then have her. There's send so back, many or things. Have yeah, Weiss that's a good throw. Weiss goes back and and is like, hey, I'll go get Ironwood. I I can get in contact with them. It'll take me a little while, but you know, within a week or two. You guys will have your road right out of here. And why is, why is and that, shit, it falls apart. It, it would, that could have set up that could have set up even, what's going no. wrong with Atlas right now because it's like they're waiting and Weiss hasn't sh hasn't contacted them, so they have to find their way over and they they find that Weiss is in a bad position because of what's going on in Atlas. Mm hmm. Right. Which would have been good, and we've actually shown some growth on Weiss's part, but no, we had to keep the team together for, even though the fate of the world hangs in the fucking balance. <laughs> and also, they're weary about going to Atlas, even though they're going to them for help. It's like, oh man, now we're in Atlas, this sucks. It's like, you stole an airship to go to Atlas. This is your only plan. <laughs> you, you know what I love about this, though, is we were talking so much about Ruby right now. You know what we're not discussing? Bumblebee. <laughs> there has not they been really a single seem... look. They are so far apart here; like they might as well not even be married. They, they really do vanish yeah, after the like... Brunswick Farm thing. Huh? Yeah, is yeah. Gonna be okay? Yeah. Oh, they're looking at each other when she asks a question. Uh, it's oh, but so... now they're looking at Nora. They're looking at her from behind too. Holy shit! I mean, so... I, I, yeah, relatable. relatable. <laughs> it's, it's so just... weird. How much of the show is characters sitting around talking, but they're never actually talking to each other? Yeah. Yeah. I I find it especially interesting how bad the relationship is since we're supposed to be focusing on the relationship, while also Raymond and I are watching F Seven, which is a romance show disguised as a mecha show. Yes. And it's <laughs> it's superb. Yeah. I, I think yeah, I've only had skipped one over the scene that Jean pseudo major complaint, from, and really it's a us. minor complaint because I do justify it. It's just the way they just the, the way they introduce it is very uh, floopy. I don't have Which a better one? word for it. Um, Which one? Norb. Floopy. <laughs> Norb. Norb. You remember, I have oh Norb. Norb. Yeah. But but Norb, they they've referenced Norb like back in the first. Oh, it, it's episodes, not Norb's introduction. It's it's the what he pulls off when he first appears, and I'm like, oh oh, oh that's right. Yeah. Yes. Which uh, I, I, his... I found very disorienting for the level of grounding the show had. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Adam Zelke, but I Ruby, need to rewatch. But Celtic Rebecca Ruby, seven, we can't so. break up team friendship. They promised they'd stick together. She might be taken by her evil dad. It's like, just, just As if have she can't Weiss ask go for inside. Willow. Yeah, go inside. Ask, have Weiss go inside the boot. Say, I'm going to contact my family now and contact Winter. Well, winter is technically can't. family. I, I mean, think. Winter, do not they, Willow. Do not they winter. have yeah, open communications sorry. with Atlas? They should. Well, they, well because oh. the CCT's network is down. It's weird. I don't know. Also, Weiss is like 19 here. Her dad doesn't, like, he doesn't own her. Yeah. She could, she left once. She could do it again. <laughs> yeah, and like I said, like we said, she can immediately contact doesn't Winter. Matter. And they could pick up Team Ruby in a day. Doesn't matter, because they still have to land the aircraft on military ground. So... She would interact yeah. with Winter before she has to 
deal with Jock at all. Yeah, the minute you're with Izzy, there's going down there. You're there. Yeah, limits left. of Atlas. You're contacting Winter and being like, we need to speak. I need to speak with Ironwood ASAP. This is important. Um, it has yeah. to do with Ozpin. Yeah, and it's like, because, and you can just, and if you have to, you could just show her the relic and say, I have something Ironwood wants. That right too. Here. Oh my God. You're just like, like, okay. Just whip yeah. out and, a and giant you know bee summon and fly you know, over. That could be an entire conversation they have. You know, Weiss being like, I not only did I just get away from Atlas, I just got back to you guys after being mm -hmm. kidnapped by a bunch of bandits. Like, like I don't want to leave yeah. you guys anymore. I don't I don't want to abandon you. And Ruby's like, someone needs to do this, and you're the only one that can. This is something that only you can do. And if we're ever going to make it to Atlas to make sure everything's all right. We need someone to do this. And like that whole conversation yeah, could lead to any number of different explorations about who's willing to do what for the friendship and for the story. Also, I just realized that Yang's like leg tassel things are st stick straight right now. <laughs> they are so starched. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> oh Silly Billy from Critters Podcast. I wish they actually bring back Yang destroying Mercury's leg on live television as a consequence when talking about oh, talking with Cordo. Yep. Yeah. That would be interesting. I mean, bringing up y Yang's mishap with that in general would be good, but you know, mm -hmm. but, uh, uh, freaking this show eats waste opportunities for fucking breakfast, lunch, and a midnight snack. We all know this. Yep. But most importantly, most importantly, I agree with you, Raymond, because that would have been a great point where a character would have to address their flaws, in which case Weiss um, is... Or, well, not necessarily a flaw, but a hang up about, like, you know, her deep, deep discomfort, understandable discomfort about going back to her home and ultimately through conversing naturally with her teammates, pushing her forward, because this is a team show, everybody, she would learn that some things are bigger than the problems that they have. Or and they need to push them to the side to do the right thing. Or, yeah, it you, could, you, you would that's arrive just at one the direction. team being yeah. like, it's not worth it. We love you too much to put you through that. We'll find another route. Like, there, there are two outcomes to that conversation. Well, at least and they be both a conversation. The yeah. yeah and both at would least be have giving, a conversation. It would be giving the characters agency rather than just, oh, we need to do this thing because yes. Ozpin told us to go to Argus. It would be. It would be Weiss's decision to do Adam that. Adam Zelke, but do yeah. you want to spend the rest of the volume without everyone's apparent best girl, Weiss? Like, that's... I mean... Sacrifices uh, can be made for yeah, take I, I was going to say, like... There's a sacrifice that I am willing to make. I, I was going to say, like, <laughs> sometimes overexposure to a good character for a bad reason makes it a bad ruins character. Them. It ruins them. Absolutely ruins them. Like I, there are I, so I many will, characters I will that go, are ruined because I of that. I adore writing Roman Torchwick and fixing Ruby. It is a struggle not to overexpose him and not to have overly quip him. There are several, several instances where we just had to keep reining him back because he can just keep on going. He can like there's there's a point yeah, where characters come to life and they can just keep doing it, and you have to reel them in so the story can actually progress. Yeah. Yeah, so they don't get flanderdized, basically. Yeah. Like, that's a problem that happens with... Oh, my God. I don't even know. With, uh... God, there's one character. Arguably Sasuke from Naruto, in some ways. Arguably. Oh, um, there's, there's of some course, I would need to look I'm back at it. Characters re reverse in the second yeah. season. Um... Okay, uh... Oh, Athrin from Gundam Sea Destiny? I, I have <laughs> not seen Destiny, so I only know that by reputation. Um, Austin isn't Arthrin? Isn't that his name, Arthrin? Like it's like it's like a, a weird Arthur. Arthrin. Arthrin. Interesting. No, because Arthrin. like Arth, the R is, yeah, the R isn't even in the front of the A. It's after the H, which is weird. Okay. There's only like one R in his name. I I'm. I don't know sure. why I pronounce it that way. Then that might that might just be a weird quirk of mine. Um, the. I'm trying to think of a show where that happens that isn't, of course, Ruby. One really bad one off the top of my head, which is not a good example, is Infinite Stratos. But that's a bad anime to begin with. Oh, my God. 
I um, mean, yeah, that's a. I was about to say, what, what hope did you have in that fucking show? <laughs> um, Wait, oh, I, w- I was gone for a second. What, what example for what? In, in it, for for characters that basically where where the entire cast basically regressed in the second uh, season, uh, and uh, I, I remember that happened in Infinite Stratos. It's why I dropped Infinite Stratos. Um, I, mean, I should have honestly dropped it earlier. Oh, it's a I really bad freaking show. Um. <laughs> It, I wish I it, 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 it is if you want to see like the stock standard like harem show, it's 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 that one, Infinite Strikes. Yeah. Uh, um honestly, you know what? In retrospect, I'm glad I watched it when I did, because that's when I just got exposed to the harem genre. And back when I was like 14, I thought it was the funniest shit in the universe. <laughs> <laughs> I mean Rosario I, Vampire. <laughs> that was my first harem. <laughs> oh, pure yeah Lucky same that yo fine. that's one of the ones i watched yeah my first harem i mean i don't know if it qualifies was uh oh my goddess oh yeah oh my goddess um and i know my friend is still angry that was one of the tenshi muyo there are not more seasons of that i think technically speaking tenshi muyo was probably my first exposure but i was so young at the time when i saw it i don't yeah. think it registered really on my brain i'm um, not i'm not really sure you know? if um Oh my goddess really Qualifies. can be considered a yeah because um Bell Dandy is has always been the the one and only like end game like it's very clear like the other girls they I, the other sisters yeah but that's how a lot that way, but that's that is also how a lot of harem anime yeah. end up spinning out too is like you kind of have the obvious option for the harem yeah, that, like, like sort of online yeah um, like sword you have a line. main girl that you kind of know they're going to wind up with it's very rare that it's obfuscated like um a good example of this i know it gets praised is uh quintessential quintessential quintuplets is um is a technically a harem anime but it it ends up with there is one girl and you're not really sure who it's ultimately going to be it does a really good job of shaking up a lot of the traditional um formula um oh my god i think is it nisei koi Nisekoi is another one where shit just got reverted back to basics. Fuck mm. that anime, man. I don't know how that got popular. <laughs> like, like, okay, they, I was like, about to say, I heard nothing but bad things about that show. The first season was all right, but the second season immediately reverts back to the exact same shenanigans. There was no growth in characters. They just kept adding more, more romantic oh, interests in the second season and it's like guys you already have a cast of like five romantic interests that need to be fleshed out still what the fuck are you doing i can't really think of any anime that are are bad like that because if an anime is bad then i immediately just (laughs) i think the only the only exception to that is naruto and that's because by that point i'd been with it for so long i just said I am going to stick with it until the ending, and I know how the ending is going to happen. And I've known about it for like three years of exactly how the ending happened. And the ending happened, and I'm like, good. Now I can just wipe my hands clean of Naruto and never touch anything surrounding it ever again. And then the Boruto Nation. <laughs> this attacked. cost fallacy won't sink itself. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Anyway. Well, that's, that's why I don't know anything about Boruto, because <laughs> that I will wipe my hands clean of it. And I meant it. But yeah, uh, so Ruby. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, Blake, look, Blake and Yang are yeah, standing so next to each other, sort of. Not really. In the God, loosest all definition these episodes of the world. Are so they have poisonous. nothing but air in between them. No, look. no, you. Don't worry. We aren't going to Atlas without him. We? When was this ever Sorry, we won't be established staying. to be? No, you're not. It, 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 like th- oh, three minutes God. before this scene happens, <laughs> Saffron mentions maybe staying. Also, yeah. I love how he has a key to the house when everyone's outside. God, your outfit <laughs> is so <laughs> ugly. I mean, it's not the worst in the world, but it's just I like it. really. I don't mind it. I think that he should have gotten the bandages because they don't serve any purpose. Mm-hmm. They, they only serve a purpose in the character design that he was ripped from. <laughs> oh, what was he ripped from? Oh, it was like a Brandon Sanderson novel, I think. Um, oh. 
If anyone can get me, there was a character that it was very clear Oscar was based upon, if not ripped from. I thought that that was um the um the lightning thief. No. Percy Jackson. No? Yeah, Percy Jackson. These past few days, it was a character from Percy Jackson or something. No, it was. I don't know how much. No, it's somebody different. I forget exactly who. But I did some thinking. Oh, wow. Real wet piece of Look cardboard ass this character. <laughs> whatever time I have left. <laughs> <laughs> Look at all this Blake and Yang interaction right now. <laughs> yeah, they're sitting on opposite sides of the room. God, I miss no, random listen, Mercury that's, kicks. That's... <laughs> oh fuck this scene fuck this scene oh my god kill me now kill me now kill me now i fucking glad you kids worked out uh whatever but the fact is we're not a single step closer to atlas actually i think i have an idea but it's sort of a no going back kind of idea. Well, and the stupidest Ruby. idea is that they will insist on having every single character standing around in a scene, and you just see the screen filled with these bodies just standing still, yeah. contributing nothing to the conversation. That's definitely worse. How do you get on the airfield? That. Part I haven't quite figured out yet, but I was okay, Leo stop. Valdez, Just stop. allegedly. Yeah. Look, if this thing goes south, it's not something we can just fight our way out of. This is the Atlas. Now Atlas here's Atlas. Crow being completely reasonable. For your sake. But how dare he imply their first ideas aren't perfect? They're perfect the first time. They're Team Ruby. <laughs> <laughs> You, you know, you know, I, I wish I can say I understand why, but no. <laughs> so what a horrible way to end the crow drinking arc. You know what doesn't help people who are suffering with alcohol abuse? Getting mad at them and telling them that they're big, stinky, smelly. Yep. What a also, terrible yeah, thing to do. If you guys <laughs> look in the chat, even though everyone else in the group. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's who I I don't know any of these characters, so I for I some reason either. I assumed that it was like Percy Jackson character. I think that somebody had yeah, mentioned yeah, Percy is... Jackson in the so I got the but is that a one, Brandon's character? Bad... I don't know. But one bad thing about this scene that not a whole lot of people mention is that prior to Ruby shitting on crow right here literally the entire group was looking at john john when he initially made the plan like he was fucking crazy and yet crow is the fucking problem here yeah, yeah. it's it's fucking <laughs> okay all right man so here we go they're driving okay. together as part of this operation this conversation never happened don't worry this isn't the first time i've disabled atlas security never happened um why are you saying this on the phone? If yeah. th is there even an FBI in this world? If there was, you would be caught immediately. Yeah. Get ready. Big bedroom eyes. Big old fuck me eyes oh in the God, scene. This one. <laughs> See, that's that's the kind of conflict moving moving around the goalposts that I fucking hate. It's like. Oh, um, I'm going to criticize you I, thing because you are not skilled in it. I mean, never mind. You're perfect. Play queen. I hate it. You are so perfect much. just the are. Look at me to all oh, these looks. Like the last time you guys talked to each other, you were yelling about yeah. you know yeah. being protected or not. Where, and now it's like where? go. I have, go I have take a suspicion. Do you attack. think they didn't tackle I mean there is oh, the obvious go. answer of they weren't experienced enough. But do you think the other explanation is they time. were trying to be subtle? No. No. Okay. Rooster teeth and subtlety. You know what? You know the what? <laughs> they don't know her. But here's the thing. Here's no wait, 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 wait. Wait. 
them not knowing how to be subtle is not is different from them trying to be subtle. Remember that. They it, probably it, are and we're just too stupid to do it right. Like like they are that's I, I would assume that their thing is like they imply they either talked off screen or they worked through the issues. Like I feel like that could be a thing they try to oh leverage in their own defense. But like this is the most important part right here is them having that little conversation getting off the bike. Yes. That there right there is the opportunity to have the important conversation. And they didn't. They didn't mm-hmm. have the important conversation. Right. They didn't exactly. talk about any of this. They didn't they didn't oh, actually yeah, come because... to terms with any of this. But they had yeah, to use all that screen uh, like, time on doing, you know, Jean's statue and on the Jean get, dunking on Crow for yeah, being drunk. <laughs> literally, literally, that scene was like three minutes. You could either cut that scene in half or erase it entirely because it's basically pointless and give that to Blake and Yang so they can talk things out. Or actually cool idea you can have that scene be parallel to jean and and go through similar like dialogue beats that reflect the, each character's struggles a little bit and so you can have them crescendo at the same time smart writing where is that i don't know her is, is do you smoke it i don't fucking know <laughs> you know i talked to i talked to this about uh i talked about this with raymond when we were watching at Eka seven I, I keep harping about the, the great romance in that show. Ruby yeah. it takes 30 hours to watch. Ereka 7 takes 19 hours. It is it is a full 50 mm-hmm. season, 50 episode season of an anime. And, and Ruby exceeds they, that. And the thing is, not only do they deliver on one romance, like Ruby is basically claiming, oh man, we did this amazing romance. Like a lot of fans are playing it. You, Eureka uh, 7 delivers on one, two, three, four romances simultaneously, effortlessly. Like, of I, of all the yes. complaints I've ever had with Eureka 7, none of it was lever, levered towards any, any of the romances. Because you have Eureka and, and Renton, who are a very uh, good young couple, who have some similarities to Blake and Yang, but not that many, not, not, not as many. Then you have Holland and Talho. Right. And the background, Holland and mm-hmm. Diana, who has passed away. Um, mm-hmm. And that one actually pretty heavily, I think, could reflect Yang and Blake. And that's done really well, where these characters obviously talk together and they try to work through their things. And they have times where they don't talk together. And it's clearly a frustration for everyone involved. It's The, the back and forth there is really intriguing. Uh, you have... Um, Matthew and uh, um, I'm blanking on her name um, Hilda Hilda, who are just a healthy damned couple They're, there's a little bit of bossiness a, uh, a little bit of whippedness uh, from <laughs> between the two but otherwise healthy and then you get, you get you get a little Charles and Ray who are so fucking like the, every time they look at each other it is animated in such a way that you can tell these two adore one another and will and do end up dying for one another. It is, yep. it is. Raymond cried. I didn't cry, but I got close. I I'm got not fucking close. I was so because um, I knew it was coming. Yeah. Well, also you got Damien and Anemone. Right, a Damien and Anemone who are kind of an oddball. Oh, I don't I know where their romance them. is going. Yeah. And we just got introduced to Norb and Sakuya being a... Right, Norb and Sakuya. Yeah. Um, and, the, and then we the have two Renton's doctors. three fangirls. <laughs> the <laughs> Renton's three fangirls. <laughs> no, you're right, you're right, the two doctors. Um, yeah, the, the divorce couple. You are. So you get like a nice spread of different relationships and romances and infatuations all across the board and it really explores like the there's such an underlying theme of love and romance to the story that's really thoroughly explored that almost nothing of that gets hit with Bumblebee because these characters aren't talking through their problems they aren't actually discussing mm-hmm. them this is not a like if this is the the ultimate start to their relationship it's not it's not healthy yeah. And not and only are they not Raymond. talking about their problems, we're not doing anything else yeah. substantial with the show instead of doing that. Like, it'd be one thing if there's, like, so much other crap going on that 
they just you couldn't think of a possible time where they could stop to talk to each other. But instead, we're just standing around churning out boring exposition and still not developing this interesting romance they're trying to develop. And that's the the amazing thing about Eureka Seven is that yeah, yeah we're we're dealing with all of these interpersonal relationships and romances and all that kind of stuff on top of the literal war that these characters are fighting every single day and having to deal with funds and repairs to their ships and their mechs and also um the the war with the military and all that kind of um you got you got uh mm. racism against a certain religious group, mm. and you have the the fallout of all that stuff that going on there there's so much that is going on in Ereka 7 on top of all of these romances that it's also juggling and it does that in less time than ruby does <laughs> yeah it's and it's, i think that says a lot the only especially thing, given the fact that like the only m thing, a lot of like mecha shows tend to be hit or miss with their ro romances from my experiences yeah. anyways well i was going to say like the only thing that I could possibly say in Ruby's favor, and this is not, this is a very complicated one. I want to be very clear. It's not like cut and dry. Ruby is strictly better. Is that I have a better okay. sense of place in Ruby. Like we have a world map. We know where everyone is. And I imagine if I comb through Eureka 7, I would know more about where people are and where everyone lines up. But a lot of locations outside of the cities are interesting but even then it feels like there's a lot of sameness in a lot of the locations there's not as much variance to it but in they, lore they that live makes on, sense that's why i'm they like, live on a gun smoke like planet yeah uh that that is mostly just a uh, wasteland with a couple of pockets of forested area Enough for them Hell. to yes. yeah yeah <laughs> sign really me cool. up. I want yeah. a home there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, it, it is. A, there are some very beautiful um, lo locations. Actually, my favorite one so far has been it's that. So uh, fucking beautiful. Th there is an episode where they just like go to this guy who's like farming, like in his own like this town that was destroyed oh my by God, pile Dead bunkers. Rex. Um, yeah, and the pile bunkers create this basically this forest of them going out for miles and it's just such a striking visual image of these artificial like i kept joking they look like flamingos because they're like little curved noses at the top of them like where the nail head is um but it, it just it, it's a very distinct mm -hmm. image in my mind even though that's probably the other weakest element of the story i i i not weakest it's hard to put in the mind because he's not a bad character but he's just sort of a weird character when you look at how everyone else is like believably flawed, and you have this one kind of perfect guy come along. It's yeah, uh, it's kind of a was, weird he, circumstance. He was meant to be the ideal. Yeah. Um, like he he was meant to be a tool to teach Renton what it means to be in a relationship. The the whole for better or for worst. Like he's showing the for worst part of that phrase. Oh my God, hot Cordovan. Mm. Yeah, hot, hot, hot Cordovan. <laughs> yeah, hot Cordo with the pompadour. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> above and beyond expectations. <laughs> yeah, doing the Lord's work. <laughs> All right. Jesus well, Christ. we've gotten that vented, and I imagine we're going to have a lot more to talk about in just a few minutes. Yeah. Here. Yeah. What's going on? It's so weird. Yang's part of this big plan was to just sit on her ass and not do anything. Just wait. <laughs> That'd be the ride back home for Blake. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm... So I want to just ask, is there any symbolism between for Blake's blade getting broken here? Mm, I think you can make an argument for different kinds of symbolism. Like, when I first watched the episode, I was reminded of cinder snapping pira's spear when she died and so i was like are we gonna kill blake here or are we gonna seriously injure her um i don't know <laughs> if there's any symbolism beyond that that wasn't what immediately jumped out to me when i watched it the symbolism is that he declawed her and she is now a defenseless little kitty cat that needs to have her master saver oh, 
<laughs> oh, well, with the racial connotation. Oh, oh God. God. Oh, no. Oh. Okay. Oh. I, that's the first thing I thought. What the fuck? Uh, I, I, I was going to say, like, uh, oh, it, I thought it was a symbolism See, that Adam is... broke Blake. And when in volume seven, she gets that yellow stripe. Oh, Yang yeah. fixes her. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, meant, I meant, like, Put some back. I know well, what you meant. I can't, even, I can't even say, like, owner because that also has. The- Slavery connotation. <laughs> I meant like the the human likes cat. Look, Twilight, cat girls make things Twilight complicated. Twilight trying to not be racist challenge <laughs> impossible. You taught me this, American. <laughs> I learned it I, from you. I wish like her upgrading her weapon was cooler. Like honestly, I wish they all upgraded their weapons more everyone... and more regularly. Yeah, I was about to say. Yeah, I thought that was going to be a thing too, but also I understand how hard it is when they have, like, it's not easy really coming up with complicated weapon ideas. Uh, So I'm not saying they shouldn't have fucking tried because they probably should have. At least do something different visually. Oh, yeah. Because I was thinking about how, I was thinking about how in Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, there's a point where Alphonse loses his, like, ribbon on the top of his helmet. And I was like, I feel like that was only there to show that he is advanced as a character, but he can't actually physically change much, so this is the best they could do. And I'm like, changing your weapon color-wise is us, or like, changing the design, but not necessarily what it does, would be an easy way to do that. Blake goes into her Barbie phase, everything is just now hot pink. Yes! (laughs) Yes! Yes. (laughs) I'm here for it! Oh no, but that would make her more like Mimi. Gross, get her away. <laughs> <laughs> Mimi wears more oh, than just gosh. pink. She wears mostly pink. That's She's fair. mostly known as the pink girl. There's a couple of uh, super chats we've missed. Oh, wow. One there? from yeah. Adam Zelke. Oh, I wish I Adam had it, fought I, all I, all I tried to make that post. I, I had to post things into the chat, so I, it covered up my, my chat. Damn it. All right. <laughs> uh, so the first one is from Adam Zelke. I wish Adam had fought all of Team Ruby. He is a good step up from Roman. One was just a guy with no semblance. Adam is just a guy with a semblance. Just one step up from Roman. It's not bad. I mean, that's, I love doing the fight with Adam in volume, yeah. uh, fixing volume six. That Philip, was great. Mm-hmm. Philip Schwartz, this moment is completely unearned. True. Uh, Adam Zelke, my favorite 100%. joke defense for this scene, as people say, Blake and Yang shouldn't be, uh, should be strong enough to beat Adam after he kicked their asses before is but they defeated him with the power of lesbianism uh of the power of lesbians so it is okay oh they shouldn't be strong enough to beat adam but they beat him with lesbianism yeah i think it makes sense um, that they beat adam well, because you know, adam is clearly not running at 100 yeah. percent. i mean my yeah oh, i was about to wow. say like i can believe them getting strong what, what I, just, I heard like someone walking through a hallway and then like closing the <laughs> door it sounded like one of those like the sound effects you would hear in a really shitty like uh uh shovelware uh horror video game oh it, oh my god metal claw metal claw my... is at the part of cyborg davis that you had to stop and do a 10 minute and watching the video of TK and Kari fucking is cringe and so edgy. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, Metal Claw, you've gotten through what? 11 chapters already? They did How? what? Ew. Oh, dude. It's bad. Dude, it's, it is so... Okay, so for those of you who don't have context, because I don't, I don't want to derail too long on this, but I, a little bit of context. In this setting, uh, TK and Kyrie are married and Davis, Davis has is always perpetually in love with Kari, and he can't possibly move on to anyone else. So, in order to torture him, an evil guy like films TK and Kari, who are married and having consensual sex. <laughs> oh, oh, it gets worse because later on they apologize for him having to have seen that, even though it is absolutely not their fault in the slightest, and yet. They're somehow apologizing for having had sex in the first place. It is, it is hilariously what? bad. Some Yo, people am, be on yes, the internet. Yes, yeah. yes, friend who has nothing to do. Dude, it's like that one, it's like that one meme where it's all like, I consent, I consent, I do not. I yes, don't. it is. It is exactly like that. It really that. is. 
terrible. That is that is all of my can's content when it comes to romance. To be honest with you, <laughs> he is is, is okay. that I I consent. I consent. I don't. He is so hard into cuckolding. Like it is <laughs> like he is so hard into NTR, but he is so angry about being a cuck. Dude. Like that yeah. is the energy you need to imagine. <laughs> this is a man that is so so like he just gets off to everything you can think about oh NTR. My God. But he just hates Dude, it. Dude, period Pete. I walked away to go to the bathroom for like five minutes. How did we get to D Digimon <laughs> NTR? Well, someone in chat is a madman and is reading through a bad fan fiction at lightning speed. Because I'm going to tell you, my can is not is not a succinct writer. That is a verbose no. man. So you getting through 11 chapters is fucking incredible. Oh. He is a verbose man who has never read a book in his life. So he writes his books like they are meant to be TV shows. Surprising, oh. this isn't the worst in selling of a main character I've seen, and I'm even planning on using the idea of Cyborg Davis in my Digimon rewrite. Oh my god, dude, I'm fucking, I, I'm doing the sign of the cross right now. You can't see it, but <laughs> I go with God, my friend, and may he protect your fucking soul. God speeds, friend. <laughs> you better watch your fucking back, man. <laughs> uh, NTR, I don't remember. Netsurare, net, netorare. That's it. Netorare. netorare. It's it's non consent. Well, it's it's uh, not non consent. It's um basically someone getting cuckolded. It's it's a it's a. Remember earlier when I said Ruby brings out the best in us? Yeah, <laughs> I was wrong. <laughs> Uh, also, I need, to, I need to um, that song. I will. I will never not hate Blake for the simple fact that her ears don't fold properly, as though the person who modeled her has never seen a cat in life. <laughs> I'm like, how I've, many, I've been... dude, If I had a nickel for every time you've complained about that, <laughs> <laughs> I am very passionate about cats. Okay, I have owned cats for all of my life, all of my I've child using... life. I've been using Vroid models, and I made a little quick animation of Blake. You guys saw it. And, like, yeah. knowing how yeah, that so. works with cat ears, I can see whatever Rooster Teeth has done to model Blake's cat ears, they did something way too complicated. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's dumb. <laughs> but no one hurt me quite like you. You didn't leave scars. You just left me alone. Like so, you did to Yang. Tell me, Blake, how does it feel to be alone? It's weird. I'm that, not like, alone. <laughs> me. It's weird you're focusing on that, Adam. It's almost like you're, you know what her character arc is supposed to be. Yeah. Also, that is never how her freaking shadows have ever worked. I'm not alone. Yeah, nowadays they're on screen for literally one frame. <laughs> Bye, Bumblebee. I'm still thinking. I'm still thinking about the freaking joke that Zell did in his video. The one yeah, really good one. That was a good joke. Yeah, with the SUV stuff. Yeah. Adam should have been like, "Wait, who are you?" <laughs> like when Cinder was like that to Jean in Volume Five. She's like, "Who are you?" Exactly. <laughs> it's okay. We have unfinished business. Adam's voice acting sucks. He kind of, yeah. And this yeah. is the best he ever got, too. Yeah. So. <laughs> I feel kind of which bad is, because he has a nice tone to his voice. It's just that the actor needs to learn how to actually act. Yeah. I think it yeah. would help if he wasn't yeah. given the most garbage script ever. Yeah. They sound like this cartoon villain of an ex-boyfriend. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, Honestly, I would like to who look. is even directing the voices in this show? Who's I like the don't know. Like Carrie, I guess? I is probably. Uh, he is director. Oh. His semblance is like yours. He absorbs energy through his sword. Oh, oh so you, you fell in love with okay. someone who's also very similar to your ex. That's strange, now isn't it, Blake? Let's just cheat. Why did she need yeah, to know totally that? Yeah, that's totally healthy. Why did is it for the audience? <laughs> also, wait, the audience didn't need to know, honestly. We could have just no. surmised. Like, <laughs> we, have, yeah. we have eyeballs, Rooster Teeth. We can understand what's going on visually in the story. It'd be fun if Blake we didn't don't think know. given how, like, you know, let Adam go, she would have told her about this sooner. 
We need also, them to overly explain Adam's semblance, but we can't really, have them actually talk to each I, other. I, they, 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 they missed the opportunity to have Yang lose her arm. Like, Leave us yes. Alone. Yeah. Yes. Why, why not? Uh, uh, like, have her stand up to the problem chance. that she had, not just give her a little bit of a scratch on her metal. The way you did it in Fixing yeah. Ruby. I was like, like yes. Damage the arm. <laughs> yes. I, I, yes. The supernova was just so much fun. And that then it's so really smart really because it's her decision and it shows how she's grown. I, I, love, yeah. I love how Adam here can hear <laughs> yeah, that Yang yeah. has trauma. It's like, Yang, unbeknownst to us, Adam has yep. a doctoral thesis in fucking psychology. <laughs> <laughs> oh like, oh, I can pick it. Yes, but Critter, that wasn't actually a good scene because women aren't supposed to struggle and and have bad things happen to them. It's just yeah. not allowed. It's illegal. It's, it's, it's oh my god, uh, okay. guys, wait. We need wait. to baby the women. The best scene ever. <laughs> best line ever. And I'm not oh protecting god. <laughs> We're protecting We're protecting each other. Each other. Lesbian. Gag me. I'm not coloring in this coloring book, and she's not coloring in this coloring book. We're coloring. That's like that means both. You've contradicted yourself twice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I'm not getting in this Starbucks, and she's not getting in this Starbucks. We're both getting in this Starbucks. It is such Damn a Raymond, line. Raymond isn't live streaming right now. Critter isn't live streaming right now. <laughs> Kaiser isn't live streaming right now. I'm not live streaming right now. We're live streaming together. We, we, we are now are your locu We are yeah. locutus of Borg. <laughs> <laughs> I am not Groot. You are not Groot. We. Are <laughs> it's so close to being a kind of cool line. And then just like yeah. Rooster Teeth, they just drop all those balls. <laughs> yep. That's like a placeholder so line bad. for insert badass one liner here. And then they just they just got left in. So they never came back yep. to actually fix it because no one yep. actually edits these scripts. It's like I they sat there and went, Oh no, yeah. He's not she Venom said either. we are it's Venom. like they sat there and went, oh yeah, she said, I'll protect you back in episode five. We should bring back yeah. that word. <laughs> it's like, you gonna do anything more? <laughs> yeah, you guys never <laughs> talked about this. You didn't know what Yang's issue was with that. Maybe she's perfectly fine with you protecting her, but given, like, the circumstances, not really, you know, a completely one-sided thing. Like, I don't need a babysitter. I need a friend that will pick me up when I'm down, and I'll be there for them, right. too. Like, like, I don't need you to be my shield. I want us to work side by side. Yeah, but they didn't convey that. Just, yeah. Like, somehow intuited Which... it. And it's like, oh, that's so romantic. She knew exactly what Which Yang so needed. so stupid. We don't even know what Yang needed because but Yang like, doesn't fucking talk about our problems. A... We don't know. Mm -hmm. She hasn't talked about this dynamic. Exactly. For all we know, she needed Which... a ham sandwich. I, I don't know how people... Yeah, exactly. Like, the, the, I'm sorry. I gotta say this. The problem, a, lot, a huge problem with this is how bad this is in terms of both of their developments as characters. People, mm -hmm. think about what Blake and Yang coming together is supposed to symbolize. It's supposed... Both characters have suffered problems in their lives with attachment and connection and most importantly communication especially towards each other this is supposed to be the moment where they are supposed to come together and push past those issues but they go they'll they go past it by completely circumventing them needing to be better at communicating with one another so mm -hmm. what is stopping this shit from happening again adam no, don't oh, so they image. can just they can just <laughs> Don't don't oh use Zell thrusting cat avatar. Oh, <laughs> shut the fuck up! Shut the fuck up. Anyways, I you... uh, so the pro in, in like the uh, what was it? The uh, yeah, they they just don't communicate with one another, and there's nothing preventing this shit from happening again because they never communicated past it. Now they psychically understand each other, which is totally realistic to how couples work, right, Raymond? Mm -hmm. Right, Twilight. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you know what's a great example of a, a developing relationship that has almost no communication? Um, the Little Mermaid. Uh, specifically, I really liked the way they did it in the live action one. I'd, my memory on the animated one is a little bit more fuzzy. But Ariel can't talk. 
that whole time. And you still watch them grow yeah. closer together. And they don't admit their feelings for each other until after they're uh, killing Ursula. That's a you can right, have these moments. That's, <laughs> that's the, the thing is there. This is something that Ruby doesn't do like ninety percent of the time. Fucking body language. Where is mm -hmm. the body language, people? Where's the different facial expressions that convey emotion on their own? This is why subtlety in this show is a is an endangered fucking species. It's but mm -hmm. the Kaiser. Kaiser, nothing. body language is a thing of the patriarchy, and that's why we need to get rid of it. And that scene in the live action Little Mermaid because oh, it yeah. is patriarchy. <laughs> And as a member of that patriarchy, I'm going to do my due diligence and neck myself. Thank you. <laughs> it's like I was saying earlier with, like, what, are they using mocap? Because at least it was, like, volume one. The way they held themselves while standing next to each other implied a personality. Now they just stand there like robots and say, I like my cat girlfriend. And uh, that it lacks personality. <laughs> yeah. I like my anime cat girl beep boop. <laughs> you knew you couldn't win two on one at Haven. What makes you so sure you can win now? What? You you didn't fight two on one at Haven. She she No yeah. no he, he you, did. You he, ran. he was fighting against Blake and Stun. Yeah, and he ran. Yeah. He ran like yeah, a he bitch. ran. In fact, <laughs> Blake, Blake handed so your ass on a platter on her own don't previously. Care about me. And I promised I'd never leave them again. So I'm not dying now. I uh, wonder. Silly Billy, but Aunt Kaiser no, animating is hard. Me. Shut the fuck up. It is wonder, hard, but you can still do it well. Writing is hard. I wonder if Blake. You know what talks. else is hard, ladies and gentlemen? Life. <laughs> I wonder if Blake talks to Adam more than she talks to Yang in this volume. Like, so just, yeah. per word. That would be an interesting you qualifier. Know, it's so that would be. Because does this scene like count as her talking to both him and your Yang? choice? And I've made mine. Despairly. Of course, we have to dilute so much of Adam's character in order for him to be the bad guy that they need to fight, which is so cringe. Yep. Like they're not a good. He's not a good foil for them. That's the big problem. That's the whole point of yeah, his he, character. If, he's supposed everything to be a foil, about him but feels he's not better. A good foil. Everything about him feels like a better foil for Weiss or Ruby, and they never yeah. see him, and it's criminal. <laughs> it it re truly is. Also, sorry, I, I got so bored. I was playing Merch Dragons. What's going on? Yeah. <laughs> this is like the opposite. I would kill for a conversation about Kingdom Hearts right now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really know how much we've already exhausted a lot of the conversation topics on this. Yeah. It's yeah. How does Adam know what to play on with, with Yang? I mean, genuinely. Yeah, I mean, yeah, oh no, Ra Raymond, don't you remember? He's supposed to be the master manipulator gaslight girl boss. That's not how that guy. works. <laughs> it's not, he, he's not fucking it, It's how it works in the Cinderella man. live action that Amazon made. In wait, what? Live oh action my what? God. The Amazon live action Cinderella. Oh, don't remind me of that. <laughs> oh, oh, that one. Yeah. Yeah, that one. <laughs> that one, yeah. This I, plan I is so dumb. Watch <laughs> Everything about this fight so is mad. really dumb. Like, so there's some good choreography here, but a lot of that's lifted away from the front. I do like this part. Uh, we this... got a super chat. Oh. Stop trying to use logic. It makes Ruby look worse. Gotcha. Yeah. Good. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ruby really is the epitome also, of logic is off. Open gaze. Yeah. I, I miss the old way Yang semblance used to look. The fire effect is goofy. <clears throat> also, why did your semblance break? Your aura break? What the fuck? Why were you hovering okay, in the so, air and then when you broke, and fell like two feet? Look at this scene. Look at this scene and check and see the fact that Yang could have shot at Adam right here, right now, and just ended the whole thing. Yeah, she could have. She could have turned his sword he against him. Like, yeah. got him. He, he looked worthless without his sword. Has he ever fought without his sword? Yeah. Like, with, just, just kill him. 
You have yeah. ranged attacks. No. He has no aura. Yeah. Or just shoot also, his legs. Like, he goes to reach for it, but then it looks like he's nowhere oh, near yeah. it. Wait, why? You just yeah, stepped why? on it. Why are you so far away from Gamble Shroud, Adam? I never saw that. <laughs> I never saw that. You're right. Oh, my God. Every time we look back at this show, it keeps getting If he had picked that up, he could have just <laughs> popped one in both of their heads and been done with us. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Also, you have a shotgun scabbard, you what dumbass. The fuck? Can't, can't, no. Um, yeah, we can't remember that because we scabbard. need to have him die in this scene. Because that is what the script tells us. Oh yeah, they kind of forgot. Yeah. Guys, uh, I kind of forgot the, the, the fleet. <laughs> bad, bad writing is when you have characters intentionally things that they can do in that would affect the story in a way that you... So you just I, have them forget. I really hate how the story dehumanizes him, too. Like, again, yeah. he's a villain, and he's an antagonist for a reason. Yeah. But, like, he's still... Right. He still lived a life. Like we don't know anything about Adam other than like what happened when he first met not even when he first met Blake. He just showed up one day and Blake was suddenly Yeah wrapped around his, his finger. What the fuck? And the, and it's... you can tell they, they telegraphed his death so hard because they gave us the Adam character short mm -hmm. in the beginning of this volume. Yeah. And that gave us any information on Adam, so it's like, oh, he's gonna die, because this is the only time we're gonna see this character, because he's gonna be gone. We're not gonna get the chance to hear this backstory at any other point in time. Yeah. yeah. And I and again, I hate it, because it, it kind of stems from this overall attitude that people have had um, on the internet for at least the last eight or so years, that you, because we are all people on humanize each other, not having to, like, fit interact with each other so you can treat other people absolute right. garbage and anybody who yeah. you don't like in, in fact that goes you can that, literally that, that dehumanize them into... it's almost as if all those stories about yeah, which don't look true. into the abyss or the abyss will look back into you do not don't it's don't real shit. be careful when you fight monsters it's for real, you might yeah. become one they no one ever like that advice has yeah. completely vanished yeah uh adam zelke yeah, uh, it's Ruby, like nobody understands that anymore. Oh, Ruby either oh, forgets uh, it has I'll, gun I'll weapons, makes them weak chat. as fuck, only or only uses them for movement. Yeah, it's true. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I don't mean to keep cutting you off. Which is stupid. But yeah, no, it's okay. I think it's like a connection iffy thingy thang thang. You uh, need anyways. to fix your um, leg. Freaking... <laughs> <laughs> no, no, how? I don't know if that's. I, I don't you have this problem at any other I've time except when we're streaming. It's his processing. No, <laughs> you need, I, you need to upgrade. Pretty, <laughs> I'm pretty sure we have pretty bad lag whenever we're in call together, too. No, I don't... I think that's kind of rare, and that's not even always on my end, either. It's, it's gotta still, be either me anyways, or off Phoenix's topic. problem. <laughs> anyway, off-topic... Anyways, point is... This, I agree that that mindset is really, really bad. Um, and that kind of feeds into not even the way that the writers killed off Adam and wanted, wanted to scrub the White Fang subplot as much as possible because they literally said in like their commentary, I forget which one, but they literally said that they dealt Adam this hand essentially because they were so uncomfortable writing the character they fucking wrote. And that is the most cowardly thing I've ever fucking heard. You mean to tell me that you wrote this shit down. You wrote it down. You gave it to a character designer. You gave it to the storyboard artist. You had these lines recorded. And you didn't think, hmm, maybe this is a little bit beyond my fucking ken. Grow some goddamn <laughs> balls, people. The, it's like, the, like, the fact of the matter is, the these people, or, or these types of characters are people at the end of the day and you have to show if you want to drag things out this much you gotta make it worth it especially since adam is a fucking foil for blake and yang by their admission well, i think make that's that worth it i think that's the problem he's a character formed by the position that he's in the story he is not a character formed by the events of his life it's one of the things i would really focus on in yeah. fixing ruby is trying to at least hash out some background for him that makes some logical how dare sense. you 
Um, How fucking dare you, you sick so bastard. You understand where he comes from by the end of the day as opposed Damn, to you're here. I don't know anything about us. Adam other than, okay, I guess, I guess he loved Blake, but why? Gross. Um, <laughs> yeah. Adam's yeah, like, Adam Zelfie. It's like they wrote the White Fang subplot, found out they weren't doing a very good job at it. And rather than consider bringing on an extra writer who might have better understanding about the topic or doing an ounce of research themselves to make themselves understand it better. They decide, never mind, we'll just ignore it and we'll give up on that plot point entirely. I wonder if maybe it was an executive decision. Like it wasn't, it you gotta understand. We have to writers. we have to have Ruby every year. I, I wonder <laughs> if, if much like time. Because like that could like, that could have been a top down decision. Now that I think about it, it could have been a. It's like the Pokemon problem. Yeah, we uh, have to have a new Pokemon every year. Yeah, and e even though that pl yeah. have a good game takes more than a year if you have a small team, but no, we gotta have a small team and also have a new Pokemon game out every year. So, we so therefore, we make shit games now. Oh, uh, okay. Imagine Who cares for Pokemon? Imagine Blake and Yang meeting Adam's mom in Atlas. She still loves her son despite how far he's gone, and Blake and Yang now need to justify killing an asshole to his mom. Dude, that would have been so fucking thing. terrifying. That would have been Adam terrifying. exists in a vacuum. There's, yeah. it's just Blake. Yeah, that's the only person he he doesn't even Gira and Kali haven't talked about Adam. You know, I think he gets mentioned yeah. once or twice early on, but afterwards, it's not like anything more than just a white mm. friend. I think. I think the two white fang foxes talked more about Adam than any other character did outside of Blake <laughs> and Yang. Mm -hmm. Outside of Blake right. and Yang. I don't think Yang And maybe Ilya, maybe. Anyway. Let's wrap up volume six. Let's, yeah, let's finish this. Last <laughs> yeah. Five minutes and that'll take us another, you know, another four hours. We'll see. <laughs> oh, look, they're hugging I'm... because they're so... Oh my God. They're hugging and they're not touching the back of each other's heads. Oh my god! What? An actual hug? Are you <laughs> kidding me? I actually want to hear what they have to say, because like, what they have to say might matter to our Sorry. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, please. Blake, you've killed plenty of people. This is true. I, I'm not going to break my promise. I swear. I know you won't. How? This hug is too romantically coded for mm. being the celebration of killing yeah, a man. Jesus Christ. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. It's, it's so... But that's... God, I don't... That's why I say that they are sexual. They get horny when they kill people. Oh Does Weiss even know if Adam is a real <laughs> person? Fuck if I know. She, she never actually sees Yeah, him, no so idea. No. Uh, I he like exists in an alternate reality where the show is edgier than it actually is. Honestly, at this point, I kind of wish because it's really hard to get worse than this. I mean, it's possible, but you have to try actively really hard to do that. My favorite point in time yep. for Ruby was the time that existed between volumes two and three. Because we had no ideas. Everything was just thoughts. It, you could just do the, whatever. The, the entire show was basically an indie production that had a very good budget. So it actually, yep. it didn't look great, but you know, it had mm -hmm. this feeling of this, this ingenuity and, and a bunch of creatives getting together to try and create something fun and whimsical. Uh, it had a, maybe a, a little small little tidbits in there for extra bite. Like, it, you're right that the period right after volume two and right before volume three right, actually right up before monty's death like there's a reason people really cling on to monty passing away um it was a magical time mm -hmm. for the fandom mm -hmm. where all things were going right it was like you know the show's not perfect but it's going to grow it's going to grow and maybe maybe the writing's going to mature we're going to see these characters develop along this long passionate journey man i miss those days those were good yep. days <laughs> that's the fan fiction boom i was never for i was never around during those days <laughs> you missed a golden Neither era was I. yeah everything I... was cool no one was angry we all just had thoughts <laughs> the only person i mean it was fat man 
<laughs> I mean, Fat okay Man is that. very hateable. It's fine, but that's why oh, I love God. him. Everybody uh, hates him, and that's yeah. why I love him. <laughs> uh, Adam Zelke, uh, my idea for uh, getting Adam out of the story is him getting over his Blake obsession and just fucking off to do White Fang stuff elsewhere with, well, let history decide who was right, while Bumblebee continues on with the main plot. I mean, potentially. There are so yeah. many directions you could go with Adam. He could have been the Char Aznable of was this show, and he wasn't. Yes. Fucking Travis. And we just ruined the only thing capable of stopping it. Because Team Ruby yeah, aren't actually dumbasses. good guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fucking assholes. Oh, I was like, who's screaming? <laughs> it was Cordo. <laughs> 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 that was Raymond la uh, when we watched our our episodes of Odaka 7 he's like I need the woman who is humming to stop and he didn't realize that it was Ray <laughs> oh my god well, it, because it was a flashback and she was humming in the present so it was like oh yeah. that makes sense but I just thought like, this lady laying in a freaking hospital bed and there's this humming in the background this like hmm hmm that is annoying. It, it's, no, no, no. It's, 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 not it's as, like it's not as, it was like a siren. It was like a siren hum. Mm. <laughs> I, I, don't, I can't replicate it because I can't remember the actual melody. But uh, I just well, read, think I, of a siren. I, I, sirens can sing a lot of different types of song. Twilight. Well, some of them like Raymond. Western. <laughs> Raymond. Like, like, Raymond, like a like a police siren. Are you like are an you ambulance having... siren? <laughs> Wee woo, wee woo. <laughs> uh, no, but I was gonna say like it, it just—it's not like there was someone like out in the courtyard like humming to themselves or like singing like very like without words. Uh, and I was just like, can the woman out in the courtyard please shut up? <laughs> anyway, I, I was just trying to be funny. It wasn't any kind of serious. Oh, issue. let me. Oh. Let me judge me for being funny. <laughs> yeah, that's that's nothing. Good. No, I need to always judge you at all times. Uh, that is that is my job. That's all that matters. Wait, but critter, she she critter's a judgmental critter. Why are you taking her job? <laughs> because that is what I do. I'm actually not nearly as judgmental as my name would imply. <laughs> no, you are incredibly soft, and I. That's why I always joke. Is like, does she have like an abusive relationship? Because she keeps talking about how oh much, God. how many problems she has with the show, and yet she keeps coming back to it. It's like, oh, Critter, Critter, you can leave him. You don't have to stay. Oh my God. Remember how fun it was in the apathy episodes? <laughs> Our top priority. Oh, uh, the the sound was. Uh... You may not get another chance like this. No way. Oh. Yeah. I can't leave. Not like yeah. This. It's like you said, a huntress is supposed to protect others to the bitter yeah, end. And now they're, they're right next to each other because yeah. they're in love. <laughs> because they're protecting each other. If y'all cared about protecting the innocent, why the fuck did y'all go through with this stupid play in the first place? Because the innocent don't count when they're in the military. <laughs> Oh, of course, of course, of course. <laughs> because the military's bad, okay? The military's I, bad. I feel like a lot of com Raymond and Twilight's off-screen conversations can be summed up with Bernie No. <laughs> it's true. It, you know, that's double funny because, like, I'm also thinking of Bernie the Mighty and uh, Satomu. Yeah. God damn it. Satomu, I'm gonna do the thing. Bernie, no! <laughs> Birdie, stop! When I Birdie! Fire, I did it at Beacon <laughs> and at the farm. Do you really think you can do it now? I don't have a choice. Manta 5 1, your ship is currently flagged as hostile. You will receive no support. Over. <laughs> In other words, uh, you would you rather be a petty than fight the giant Grim? That's threatening yeah. all the civilians. Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna be petty bitches because your flight is hostile, so we're not gonna save our. What do we do? You have to save us. So we don't die. Ah, uh, ah! Uh, you see, she followed after what yeah. Blake said. They're so in tune. Is it working? 
<laughs> Raven sounds so tired. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry you went through that nightmare, but I'm glad Yang was there for you in time. Oh. Gag. That is not what someone would say in we that. Were there for each other. Uh, no. Um, oh my god, that's just the setup that fucking Buddy, line. I'm choked it, it up. It sounds like she had a bad day going to the grocery store. Yeah. <laughs> not that she murdered a man yeah. who also, used to be her boyfriend. They're not <laughs> moving. I just realized this. The, the ship isn't moving. Oh, it is. Nope. Very slow. Oh, fuck. Is it? No. It's very slow. Oscar made a successful crash See? That you're not funny, Ruby. That was seriously impressive. Who who thinks that this is comedic? Who thinks that any of this is good? Thanks. Yeah. It's like, oh, he made a crash no. landing. Yeah, anyone can make a fucking crash landing. Does that mean he's been watching It's called this a this crash time? for a reason. <laughs> I know. That at least means he was looking out for us. This is another ship that's too big for them all to fit in. Just like the train car from the beginning. Jay had a mm -hmm. chairs. Jay has an absolute conniption about the aircraft because he's ex Air Force, um, and he talks about how like the cockpits should be standing, oh. should be absolutely minimum. Like you want to be like right up against the glass. It's not like a car. You you need your face to be able to actually see everything you can. In fixing Ruby, I had to draw a scene with Nora and uh, Minigun inside of the airship. And I was like, I'm not going to be able to draw the inside of an airship. Well, <laughs> believe it. Oh my god. Believe it! Okay. Believe it, believe it, believe it. Wow. You know, you make the trip up to Atlas over and over, but you never get used to that view. Oh, come on. Place. Yep, and they're Is all it? just in the same scene. Yep. Why couldn't you see that? Also, why are they all facing exactly one direction? Shouldn't they be yeah. like? We don't out? know if this is anything different than the normal. Expecting an attack. What? Well, yeah, I what wonder are you talking why. About? I got attacked. <laughs> Haven got attacked. Yeah, it's almost everyone like got attacked. <laughs> Some yeah. lunatic stole an airship from yeah, one of their bases. Yeah, it's almost like the, the biggest country. Oh my <laughs> god, Dederex, no! Oh god, oh, what no. now? I'm not allowed to laugh. People are going to guys, bed. Guys, so, so freaking the, the uh, uh, Dead Rex drew, uh, uh, made a drawing of the myth of consensual sex meme. You know the Takeru, Kari, and Dice don't meme. Davis. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. As it's the dub characters. <laughs> God, it's so good. <laughs> that is the one that is the one light in this dark dark fucking tunnel anyway oh no out. we lost him volume was terrible I, I'm, oh, I'm glad, I'm glad I'm, we could I'm, hear I'm, I'm, <laughs> the only thing we heard was this is volume the one light was terrible <laughs> wait, wait a minute I wanted, I wanted to at least address Adam Zelke okay. Uh, do you like Atlas being a flying city above Mantle? If not, what do you wish it was instead? I actually, I was angry because they kind of stole that from our ideas for Ruby over the seas years ago. That was, uh, you were going to have Atlas be a flying city. They did it differently than we were going to do. We were going to do some horribly immoral stuff for the characters to face, but, you know, to each their own. Uh, I like I it. I love it. I think it's cool. Also, Atlas holds the world on his shoulders and I, I like how they did that idea with the the, it in Mantle. I, li it, I, I like it. <laughs> yeah, I don't really have a problem with it inherently. It's pretty much what I expected to a certain extent. It's very common um, for sci-fi cities and stuff to be floating in the air for whatever reason. Yeah. Um, I think Rune Factory only did something 
different by having it a floating instead of a city. Because that was the plot point. A a floating whale. Because that was the plot point of Rune Factory Frontier was that there was a um, a whale that gained magical sentience floating in the air, and you had to go fig you had to go save its life. It was saying my this the energy that is causing me that is allows me to to swim through the skies is coming to an end you to to save me or else the city the town b- below will be in danger all right so Dederick, you had some thoughts uh, oh kai's emotional circuits are frying his and also did you call me Dederix? Sorry, I'm I'm tired. It's been all oh four my and a half hours. <laughs> Sorry. That's, it's you were calling fine. me defective earlier. Damn. Yeah, I knew I, volume yeah, six you were was calling gonna be a hefty one. one. I, 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 I am a flesh and blood bird. You're supposedly a perfect robot. I'm sorry. One of us is not claiming <laughs> certain things. <here. laughs> Listen, it's either you're perfect or you're not me. Anyways, now, excuse me, um, this was a rest terrible. Fill one of my biological imperatives. I'll be right back. Okay. This volume, I, I have nothing else to say. I think this volume was the worst way, probably one of the worst ways you could, I could possibly think of to get these two um, to the point where they are in some way kind of... Uh, starting to get back in each other's good grace to disgrace to both of their character arcs um individually or each other and i i i just want to i i just want to neck myself after oh <laughs> uh, and this this is where kaiser bows out of the live streams with i bro go, go in go gracefully into that sweet night <laughs> yeah, all right y'all y'all go ahead go ahead do you think? i would say volume six like they clearly wanted blake and yang to get together but it's also very obvious that they forced this to happen which was weird because they also had plenty of time to naturally have them being together and develop together but instead they do this yep. really weird choppy thing with their development. It was rushed, and all the important parts seemingly happened off screen, <laughs> or it's... never happened at all. <laughs> yep, yeah, and that's always been yep. one of my main complaints about, oh well, most of Ruby, but just especially the relationship because relationships are really difficult to get right. And that is why you, yeah, know what the hell you're doing. I... Yeah, you need to really make this work, especially when they're trying to think that oh, this shit is so revolutionary. Like, what mm-hmm. the fuck? I, I, well, I, the thing is, how often has Rooster Teeth touted about Bumblebee versus the fandom being excited about Bumblebee? Like, they've said, oh, it was. It's a very from the start. similar amount, from what I can tell. Because, like, I, I don't know. I mean, they do it in the merch and shit, but I don't know, like, how often I hear about them touting how great Bumblebee is, other than. Oh, we've been wanting to do this for a while, and finally they're together. Like they, I, I only remember PR speak, but it could just be possible that I'm forgetting things. Well, I remember that there was a lot of talk about uh, Barbara and Aaron talking about Bumblebee a lot, and it really early on, yeah, Volume Nine came. Out, it really seemed like a lot of that was them egging the fandom on in order to kind of act that way when it came to shipping. Because when oh, you wait. have, when you have official support for your ship, you get a lot bolder, and you get a lot more. When people uh, start talking about different ships that aren't the ship that you like, be- that you believe is going to be canon. Guys, guys, guys! I just remembered something. I remembered something oh. that was that's very relevant to this. So in one of the live streams, because I was looking. At the comment sections. It might have been in the Zell stream. The Zell response stream. So remember that scene. That a lot of Wasp and fans. Always use where it's like. Aaron asking about like. Oh if my character and their character. can Are going to be like a blah 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 blah. And then they like cut her off. Remember that shit. Yeah what about it. Yeah. 
apparently, mm-hmm. apparently, I, 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 I'm there was there was somebody in the comments of one of the live streams who said this. I asked for proof. They haven't given it to me yet, but the, take this with a grain of salt. Allegedly, there was a later point in time where Aaron was talking to somebody, maybe in like an interview or something, and she said that what she was asking in that clip was about Blake and Pira because apparently in in the studio, allegedly, she makes jokes about her character and other people's characters becoming couples. Okay. So she's a multi-shipper. She she is allegedly, the, the person allegedly. who wants to have her character in a harem. <laughs> that's that's allegedly. the secret. That's the secret. Aaron wants to be the harem protagonist. <laughs> oh my god. Allegedly. We need to immediately hide Blake's eyes behind her bangs. <laughs> yes, I hear you, Kaiser, oh. but I'm making jokes. Oh, she already has, I like know. with her ugly bowl cut, she already People has the bad like hair of anime hair. Yeah. <laughs> We're getting there. We're getting there. True. I was going to say, like, I, I echo a lot of what was just said here is that this is a terrible point for their relationship. This is the the unspoken truth of Bumblebee is that it's the Todd Howards of relationships. It just works. When in reality, it shouldn't. Everything yeah, it that, that builds it up is functionally broken. And they act as if yeah. nothing is wrong. It's the equivalent of like in a Bethesda game, you walking through the wilderness and it looks pretty and nice. And then you turn slightly to the left and you see an entire chain of characters clipping and walking through the ground. Um, and then you suddenly <laughs> this, you ignite on fire because there was an enemy that was invisible that was right behind you and then just kills you outright. Like that's that's <laughs> this version. We just haven't hit the point where it dies. We've hit the point where you catch on fire. No. I've said in previous live streams, and I will say it again, that this only strengthens my idea that they're in a toxic relationship and that yeah. like it's it's fine if it is meant to be a toxic relationship and the breakup is serious. But as it stands, like this speaks more to a toxic relationship that is built off of um mutual trauma and relying on each other in to get over their issues than to actually build a genuine relationship with each other. They also just feel like complete like volumes one through five, Blake and Yang feel like completely different yeah. characters from volume six onwards, Blake and Yang. Like Next. everything about their personalities, their demeanors, their interactions not only with each other but the others around them completely changes in volume six. It's it's Which really makes interesting it hard too to understand why they even like each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like we never get that. It's really interesting because like you can make an argument that like, oh, after Adam died, now Yang is or sorry, Blake is free to have an her actual personality show up because rest and all that kind of stuff. But we don't really get any of that. Like is was just her, she she used to be this way and now all of a sudden she's the other way. And there's not really a whole lot of in between there. Like she feels guilty for all the things that she does and she is the big sad. And Again, because we were watching Eureka 7, and that is current session the next month or so. Um, or possibly longer, depending on if we watch the other movie. But um, Eureka starts with basically no personality, and we see her grow throughout the series to the point where she is incredibly emotional in the episodes that we've been watching mm-hmm. like she she cries she shows all emotions um and just thinking about how much she has changed this new character and how low and now mm-hmm. felt Harrison you were cutting up something awful oh dear mm. why yeah. didn't you mention that before you made 
It, 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 only just, it just started yeah, happening. Right. Right, let's try that. All right. Hopefully that works. Uh, that said, I was going to start going through some of the fan art now. Uh, yeah. So this is from last stream. This is uh, Kaiser getting ready for the stream in his pod. He wasn't with us yet. So we were joking about how he was just going to be <laughs> sitting there. Mm -hmm. I can't get all of it on screen. For some reason, the cropping function is not working properly. Um that's weird. Maybe if I six hundred and six hundred, if I do that, will that be more what we need? I think it is. If I do this, no, come on. Say so yeah, Dedorex. No, oh, he did a great job. <laughs> I was almost called Kaiser Dedorex again. Dedorex did a great job. He uh, does. And uh, yeah, there we go. Kaiser in his pod. And then we scroll he down, does. and we have. Twy standing on her uh, rat <laughs> on my green mouse. Green mouse. <laughs> I'm I'm up on my high mouse, mm -hmm. as someone said in the chat last week. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm mouse. Absolutely adorable. I love I love how that actually became a bit of a running joke because <laughs> <laughs> Raymond got on a bit of a rant. So I said, "Are are you gonna get off your green mouse now?" <laughs> <laughs> and then we have the critter yeah. game slippers for judgmental critter and fudgemental bitter. The critter bitter <laughs> slipper. I love it. <laughs> it's so cute. It's so cute. Uh, then we have. You should uh, have that in your merch. I, should, I, I don't think they have a slipper option, but I think they do. <laughs> Kaiser rushing home using the uh, the yeah. the, the mech armor, the ride me. armor, the ride armor, uh, which is absolutely hilarious. Yeah. Just like, Gunning it the entire time, <laughs> doing that whole slide thing along the ground. It's so funny. Yep. <laughs> I don't I even actually remember the so context much. of this one. I mean, I, I can probably use this. As a... Is it the room? It was something about the room. Oh, oh yeah, we were making a joke. Yeah, we oh, were yeah. joking about um, Ruby coming back during the scene at the end of the scene where. Yang and Weiss were talking and we were just saying, hey, what if like she came back and was like, is everything okay? And some fucked up shit happened and then and I, Weiss I, was I, I said, that yeah. it's just Yang on the ground while the window is broken and, and um, sorry, not, Weiss is on the ground and the window is broken and Yang's fucking gone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also, Silly Billy is right. I am surprisingly color coordinated with Critter. We are like twinsies. <laughs> we, we, we we really do match. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, when <laughs> you're my Digimon partner. Here's Derek's depiction of Critter's shorts and me looking at them. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> It's so weird because it was like during when the stream was underway. I'm surprised that was the first thing. That yeah, I, 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 I honestly, I think you just missed maybe the earlier one. There was some funny stuff. Um, it's it's such good shorts though. Yeah, yeah. no hard for you. Uh, There's no hard for you. I <laughs> like. Uh, just it's so the scary. anger over freaking poser is real. <laughs> it's so good. Us uh, three arguing while Critter enjoys herself watching. <laughs> yeah. I think Again, that's my favorite. I, one. I love how. Say, I love how Celtic is pointing at the both of us individually, <laughs> like it's the fucking Spider-Man meme. <laughs> oh, the lane of eggs. Uh. <laughs> I knew oh, that he was going to draw that as soon as he said they I, don't even think Yeah, that. I, I knew <laughs> yeah. it too. It was, it was an uphill battle. It, it, you can't fight it. You can't. It was a foregone conclusion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're the one that shows a bird avatar. Of course, this joke is going to apply to you at some point. <laughs> uh, for the record, this is a uh, Leo... Leo, this is a Leo Valdez. This is the character that a lot of people claim Oscar's uh, art was stolen. Not art, but like idea was stolen from. Um, mm. And I had brought that up because I thought I remembered him having bandages, but no, I was wrong. 
Mm. Uh, did you show? Like Oscar, <laughs> did you show the censored Paimon? Oh, I did. I, I scrolled past it because it's a censored Paimon. Yeah, you did. <laughs> <laughs> it's still a little risky. Well, you can't show you can't show her with full nipples yeah. on. It's just, it's just <laughs> oh my god! Zero connect. Me, uh, me and Twilight. Ah, uh, screw you, Kel. Uh, screw you. And Celtics are like, nah, screw you too. Critter is like, hi, welcome to the stream. Do you have super chats on the ready? <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm gonna stop saying. I hope I'm getting monetized for that. Uh, <laughs> then we have uh, the stupid sexy Cordovan from years ago. <laughs> I, I, I'm impressed at her like I, absolutely crazy hourglass figure going on there. Like, what the yes, fuck? Yes, holy Cord shit. Cordovan was fucking packing. How did we not know this? She she has the massive back okay. issues. As that's someone with large boobs, I have she's not all actually, of the back issues. She's that's not, why she's so short now. She's not yeah. actually short, she's just hunched over real far. <laughs> and then finally, yeah. it's the myth of consensual sex. She's like a Quasimodo <laughs> from the back. I did not expect fan art for a Mike Hand story. I know. <laughs> no, I... <laughs> Dude, I am I am proud of myself for pointing this meme out in relation to that shit because it's so fucking perfect. <laughs> All right, Dedarex, uh, you have a new thing. Uh, I'm gonna request that you look up what Mykan looks like. M Y K A N. Uh, uh, die oh card king Mykan. Uh, because, dear God, if you do not have material for that man after looking him up, I will be shocked. <laughs> you will be yeah. shocked. I'm not gonna put him on screen because I think it's funnier if you go look for him yourself and discover exactly what's so magical about him. And this is why everyone should uh come into the tundra so that you could participate in bad fan fiction night. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And you get a fan art to go more. <laughs> yeah. Um, so how how long will volume seven be? Now that we've tackled the beast that is Volume Six, how long are we looking uh, at Volume Seven? Question. <laughs> uh, also, uh, dead or... why Brian? Huh? Kaiser, why is your screen? <laughs> why am I mixing you up with dead or Wait, so much? Why is my what? Your screen is your down. screen's down. What, what's wrong with my screen? Oh shit! I I, I have no idea. Hold oh on. dear. Let me just close open it again for for once critter and i aren't broken into pieces because he's not here <laughs> okay it's back oh there we go all right everyone's back to e. all right uh what was i going to what was I going to say? I spoke too soon. You were checking how long Volume 7 was. Right. Thank you. Thank you. That was what I was going to check. All right. Yeah. Volume 7. That's the wrong one. Do I not have that uploaded? I'm sorry, number one rival. Uh, you have learned about my can. Um, you can never be the same again. I, R.I.P. <laughs> you are a good one. I have the information in, in my chats with Twilight, so I need to find it. I'm in the same boat, dude. I barely knew about this guy, but that I I, I just... It's... Oh, God. Like, I, I'm sorry. I love it so much. All right. <laughs> I, I'm the one that infected Raymond by Volume starting seven. Bad Fan Fiction Night. Volume 7 surprisingly has an hour and eight minutes, so it's actually five minutes shorter than Volume 6's total time for Bumblebee. Oh. Yeah. Well, let's be honest. Well, sounds like was, we're going to be talking over a lot of it. There was a huge chunk to the middle of Volume 6 where I was just watching Ruby, and, and, <laughs> and we were just babbling about something else. <laughs> we filled it. We filled yeah. it well. Well, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all had a wonderful time. I know I did. This is I love these streams. These are so much fun, and I really hope they I, are. My biggest anxiety is like, what are we going to do after Volume Nine? Yeah. Oh, I should, mm -hmm. like I, I really want to do more of these, but I don't know what topics we should cover. We should make a list. Uh, well, yeah. In the comments, leave a comment if you have no, an idea definitely. on what you want us to do. Yeah. Tell us. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Uh, but yeah, get then. that group engagement going. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Uh, oh, also. Oh, what you're gonna say? Oh, I thought we were going to like individually like sign off and say oh. and say our thing. Yeah, I was I was leading into that. Thingies. <laughs> okay, my so bad. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. <laughs> You're fine. Oh, okay. Um, as I said, as y'all know me, I'm Kaiser Shonen. That's the name of my channel. Uh, you can check it out. We just hit 2K subs, uh, and it's going really good. Released a new video just yesterday, uh, which you guys can check out. It's about free run again and talking about the demons, but not as combative as before. Think of it as like a victory lap uh, of the first video. And I also want to direct everybody to De a, a video yes. made by Piri. Uh, what did he say? He, he asked if Mike Ann has a TV Tropes page. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. I think he has one of the <laughs> older oh my TV Tropes God. pages. What? <laughs> Not wrong. Dude, the more I <laughs> learn about this man, what the fuck? <laughs> Anyways, um, I I want. Uh, not unrelated to that cringe, I want to direct you to somebody who isn't cringe. And that's my good friend, Piri Pete. He made uh, a first part to a video series about um, comparing Fate Zero to Fate Unlimited Blade Works, specifically in terms of the characters. Uh, he released the first video today, and he's going to be pumping these out uh, every couple of weeks um, for, I think, the next month or so. Uh, he released his first part today. Really good video. He's got some really great stuff coming up very soon. And if y'all have the time, please check it out. Yeah. I'm going to yeah. hit these for you girls. Go. I'm going to hit the, the, the super chats. Adam uh, Zelda, yeah. I hope you all like all the money I've been throwing at you in these streams. I, I very much appreciate it. Uh, Turtle Duck, yo, so glad I could join my first live stream. Heart, heart, heart. I'm so glad you could join too. I'm so glad you were here. Fuck yeah. Um, Oscar Borgia, take care, everyone. Great stream. Also, Volume 6, BB is beyond awful. It makes no sense. Hate that last episode. Take care, everyone. Thanks, Oscar. All right. Uh, Yay. Uh, both of you fight to the death over who gets to go next. Critter can go. Oh, thank you. <laughs> we'll handle this like ladies and be civil. <laughs> it's like... It's like Celtic gave the both of you knives, and then Twilight's all like, she just drops the knife first. Yeah. <laughs> and then Critter's like, oh, thank you, and then stabs Twilight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my um, God. I'm, I'm George Martin Critter. I've been recently going through uh, weekly reviews for Has Been Hotel, and I'm going to do a full review for it once it's done. I've already written three segments of the full review, and it's up to ten pages long. So it's going to be a real heavy video when I get to that. Um, currently, I am working on a shorter video talking about weird Ruby fan theories, which should be done by the end of this week, hopefully. Ooh. So lots of fun stuff happening on my end. Judgmental Critter, that's my name. It's me. Thank you. <laughs> it's me, ya boy, the devil. <laughs> ya <Yeah>, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm Twilight Guardian. I am the the least prolific person in this stream. I'm sorry. Uh, I did a I did a big Digimon video two years ago, and people are still asking me where's part two. I'm getting there. I swear. Um, so if if anyone's curious about Digimon, uh, especially before the anime, you can check out my first Digimon video, Digimon Dissertation Part One, where I go through the entire history of Digimon from before the franchise uh, into the mythology that surrounds uh, Japan and into monster collection as a genre, and then go into Tamagotchi, which leads into Digimon. So if you're interested in that, you can go watch my early history for Digimon video. I also have a big unfinished Digimon fanfic. Uh, it's an alternate universe uh, with... TK or Takaru as the main character. Um, I'm I'm currently doing some big rewrites for it. So there's going to be some chapters that are missing or are a lot better than others <laughs> as I <laughs> as I fix them up. But I'm slowly going through them and then I'm going to be writing some new chapters hopefully soon. So that's exciting. Um and hopefully sometime in the future, I am going to be releasing a, uh, well, a Kingdom Hearts, a customized Kingdom Hearts uh, Union Cross video where I 
pasted on my character onto some footage that I didn't get when the game was still up. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, and also that uh, book review that I had Kaiser listen to me in on, but the the audio is messed up. You can barely hear Kaiser, so I have to figure out if I just need to cut Kaiser out of the out of the stream or not. <laughs> it's just Twilight talking oh, to herself. Oh wait, my vi my audio was messed up. You're you're uh, you were like I could uh, barely shit. hear you. I think that was my fault. If, I'm so sorry. If I could, you need to like check your, your settings it. because I think you putting your your vocal speaker up next to a, a microphone might be causing some feedback issues and problems. Oh, yeah. um, we'll have sense. worst comes to worst. We'll probably have to re-record. Uh, which I wouldn't mind because I forgot everything about that book. <laughs> <laughs> it's very forgettable, isn't it? <laughs> Technical difficulty squad. Technical <laughs> difficulty squad. Stop squad. <laughs> no, <Fuck don't>. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Never functioning when you need scuff squad. <laughs> <laughs> Everything is flammable for scuff squad. <laughs> <laughs> all right all right and of course i am the celtic phoenix raymond mcneil here on this channel all times 24 7 i never sleep i am dead inside someone please put me out of my misery um, <laughs> no i i have been working on a number of things i actually have several short stories that i will be releasing on amazon very soon look closely for an announcement uh they are like yeah. late stage almost ready to be, be released they're going to be coming oh, out yeah. weekly um, that'll be part of an announcement video that I need to plan. Uh, volume one of Fixing Ruby, the remaster, is going to be coming very soon as well. We'll get all the art in for that. So I'll be putting that together and making sure that's ready to go. Um, I have a My Hero Academia uh, video that I am currently working on. I actually did one stream of me going through the manga. I might do another stream of that sometime soon. It's it's going to be a far way out, that video. I, I thought it was going to be a quick one, but no, it's taken me forever to get through my Hero Academia because of how many notes I need to take. Uh, for yep. the record, I'm up through... Oh, how far am I? I'm up through chapter 109, or I'm up through chapter 108.5, more accurately, and um, I have 34 pages of notes. Uh, cool. Yeah. Uh, oh, <laughs> yeah. So by the end of it, I'm going to have somewhere around 120 pages of notes if it, things continue on. I only imagine it's going to get worse as things happen. So, oh golly, pray for me. Anyway, thank you all so much for joining. I'm I love praying. These oh wait. Oh. Well, I just. I'm sorry. The late. One last thing I forgot to mention because I'm tired and I'm dying too. Um, <laughs> freaking me and Pete. Uh, me and Pete actually have a very special video plan for next month. Remember when I said in the first stream that's, well, not the first stream, but in one of the previous streams that this season is going to be call-out season? We got a very special response video that we're planning on next month. So y'all stay tuned for that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all righty. Well, I'll look forward to that. Uh, anyway, thank you all so much for watching, and we'll catch you all on the flip side. Bye. See y'all around.